and kill already episode 297 we're live with wolf yes we have a few sponsors tonight squarespace movement watches dollar shave club and of course blue apron we'll talk more about each of them later on in the show there are of course right now links down in the description you can check all those wonderful sponsors out but let's get right into the show of course welcome back everyone it's been a week how's everyone been how's everyone's uh-huh. week been i've had a great week good. i haven't, really I haven't seen week. wolf since five years ago at the first paintball trip and oh, i remember gracious. going into it i didn't know anybody or how intense it would be i just remember kyle having texted me being like yeah it's gonna be like a big scenario game it'll be like a few hundred people versus another few hundred people <laughs> and i arrived that first day and i was kind of picturing it being like a bunch of casual people you know just just shooting around and having a ha 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 oh you got me and i see wolf <laughs> <laughs> just just big heavy steps across the parking lot and i'm like this guy this guy's either coming up over here for real to start something, or he just really takes this seriously. And he led the charge in a way that I felt like I was going to a real battle. My heart got beating. I was getting nervous. Like I was like, I, I thought it was just this was just for fun. Now I feel like I really got to win. Like for for my you don't want to let Wolf down. You know, I don't want to let Wolf down. You can't let Wolf you're like, down. You're, you're in that foxhole, and you're and you're like, Man, guys, I'm getting pretty hot, and I'm all out of Gatorade. You're like, are you insane? You're let Wolf- Wolf went out there and died for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got shot twice, and then he went to get some Gatorade. <laughs> no, he died. He gave his life for you and you and me. And he fixed me under right now, and little Mike. Like we gotta go forward. Like yeah, you really. Yeah, get that literally happened. Where like you're sitting in a bunker and Wolf's behind you, like forward. And I was like all out of this ammo. And I'm like, well, he, he did look at me, so he's gonna know if I puss out. I gotta run <laughs> forward anyway. You know, so I can look him in the eye when we're in that little room full of snacks in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> See, run forward there, Wolf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to get pussy in front of Wolf now, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Come on, hammer. Suicide Squad running out through there. That was fun times. I, I love those paintball events. I, I, I like them for the, uh, the camaraderie and for the teamwork much more than the actual gameplay, though. If I'm just wanting, like, the most fun I have playing paintball... It's probably rec ball, honestly, where I go out and really just run around up the side with my overpriced gun and shoot a bunch of people with rentals. Like, I'm sorry, but that's just really fun. <laughs> the 30-year-old man, I loved it when I was 15 years old and my mom had to take me there. I love it today as a 30-year-old man. Nothing has changed. It's fun. Except but now you it, can afford better shit to shoot yeah, the kids oh, without good. Oh, give it to me for free now. It's wonderful. <laughs> I don't even have to buy this shit. Now. I, there's no, like, Dad, can I please have the one where the CO2 goes on the back like a stock? I don't want to hold it straight down. No, everybody laughs at me, you know? There's no more of those talks. Guys like, yeah, we'll give you the good one. So, I, I, yeah, big difference. But I, I really enjoy those scenario games for the camaraderie and, and getting to meet the fans. Um, I don't know. I, I really like the fans at those things because I'm so often pleasantly surprised that that many of you guys out there who are listening right now or at least the ones who come to an event the ones who are like you know what I'm gonna do it I'm gonna put some money down I'm gonna get up out of the bed today I'm gonna drive out there and, and see the guys you're really cool people like like 85 90 percent of our fans who show up for shit are cool fucking people I that think I like. the fact that we're doing paintball events has the better people self-selecting, right? If we went and we're like, hey, we're gonna do a PKA meet and greet at like an anime event, we might get a whole nother batch of fans <laughs> wearing adult diapers and shit. I don't know. <laughs> Dark mom's basements. <laughs> adult babies of America. Like, like I, I understand their plight. You know, Huggies isn't wanting to make their size. It, you know, everybody's looking down on them when they go into those dress, the, the, the diaper changing rooms and stuff. Like, you don't even have a child with you. But, but you know, they, that, that's just the way, way God made them, those adults. It is certainly not. That is an upsetting little thing to see, is that whole adult baby wearing <laughs> a diaper thing. It's like, what kind of, like, I, I don't want to make fun of it because it's one of those things that, like, a psychiatrist would be like, ah, yes, do you enjoy wearing diapers and soiling yourself? Uh, how many times were you molested? And they're like, what? You're not even going to ask if I was? It's up to how many times? Like, you have to have like, something six, a little wrong six, with you. Six, six, he's like, yeah, six times. Six, sixty-six times? Yeah. Like, yeah, you got to be real fucked up to be an adult baby uh, diaper wear guy. I, although, like, I'm just thinking right now off the top of my head, like, what? What is it that gets you into that, right? And, and I could I, immediately, like, I think of two things. One would be maybe you really had, like, the best part of your life you think was when you were a child, when you were taken care of, loved, and protected, and now everything else has been shit, and you're trying to revert back to that to once again feel that comfort. 
That's one scenario I would imagine. And the other one that I've that I've definitely seen, and I know that it I know that it's true because I've seen the Stern show go and interview these motherfuckers. Oh, I was gonna is, say that too. It's sort of it's a sexual uh, sort of thing that like, sort of a domination submissive relationship that sometimes will go on between the dada and the baby. So you'll Ugh. have this grown man wearing a diaper, and the dada will decide when that di- when and if that diaper is changed, and uh, and bang the baby. Would that be the mama? And, but, yeah, no, it because be a, he's a man. It could probably be from the perspective that of I'm a guy. About, a dada and the baby, where. He the baby is submissive to him, and he decides how long you wear this diaper, and you basically role play as a two year old, an eighteen month year old, whatever he's into. Um, and the scenario that I was listening in on on the radio, he was like, "Yeah, sometimes I'm a toddler, you know, I'm like three and I can crawl around. Sometimes I'm like six months old, and I just gotta lay there and get swaddled, you know. It's whatever." Dad, you know dad what wants. I would do? Like, you know how they have to hire like actual women to come and pretend to be their mom or a guy to come and be <laughs> their dad sense. or whatever? I would be. Uh, a three-week-old child who just screamed, did nothing <laughs> but scream and shit, and and make them clean up after. That would be the, that's the fetish right there is tricking someone into thinking you're aroused by this, but really you're just creating a mess in some neutral place. That their job is clean to clean up. up. Speaking of which, like if you have a weird fetish like that, like that's fine, but don't for you guys like the other person has to be into it too for you to like it, right? Like you couldn't just show up in a diaper. And know the other person was <laughs> faking it because they're getting paid and still enjoy it, right? Like if I, I walked into my bedroom dressed as John Snow. If that were the case, then strip clubs would not be popular. Well, that there strip club is a fantasy, though. You know, it's yeah, and, and it's one that I don't understand. Like, like I, 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 I won't take a long time doing this because I've done it like three times before, and I hate retelling stories. But like, and, and points of that are general. Oh, <laughs> you do, eh? Yeah, it's <laughs> awful. Like, the thing about strip clubs is this. Where the, many times they don't want to be there. It's a job for them, pure and simple. And unfortunately, that job is to deceive you, the customer, into thinking that that girl likes you. And what your stupid man brain is going to go and do for itself, because it's chemist, it's evolutionary brain chemistry, it's going to say, oh, but I'm different. That's what's going on here. Normally, she does this little act and she does her dance to like, save a horse, ride a cowboy, and gives a wink. But <laughs> when it's to me, she's, she's into me. This could go somewhere. Yeah, I, I better keep doling them out. And it's out not just because I brought 20s tonight. You know? Yeah, it has <laughs> nothing to do with it. It's, that it's, that it's two night. That it's $2 bill night. It, it, she just likes me. That's, that's all that's going on here. So I hate that. I hate that they're literally lying. To, you're paying a woman to lie to you. Um, I, that's not what I'm looking for at all. And, and... I have. I, it is so hard to pull a stripper out of a strip club and fuck her. I have seen it done, but I don't think I've ever done it the same night. I, I think it took me like work, you know, like like texting and, and stuff like that to like get her later on. But like I've seen my cousin uh, take one right out of the strip club and 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 fuck her, which was very impressive to me. I didn't even think that was possible. Like, uh, but but I hate it. I hate this fake fantasy. Where you pretend that you're spending your money too. I don't like that. I know that another like weird, um, <clears throat> I won't call it weird, but another um, fetish is called um, financial domination, and that is when you're a pay pig for a woman, and basically she says, "Ah, oh, what are you doing sitting over there with your little baby dick that can't get hard? All you're good for is paying for me to go have fun." Give me my money, bitch. How and- do I find a gay guy with that fetish? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Because I will pretend and do whatever, and I'll, I'll be like, hey, you're a real limp dick asshole. I, you know it. <laughs> yeah, how about how about you throw a 50 this way, yeah, dick? You know, or whatever it would I be. I really what, think I'd be good at that. that. that- you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, look at that tiny little hairless penis of yours. You can hardly fill my truck with gas. You know, and then oh. it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I go- bet you couldn't go to Costco right now and buy me a whole shelf of shit. I bet you <laughs> yeah. no, and then I bet you couldn't unload it and put it away. You know? <laughs> like, and, and eat the th- like I, I hate to say this, but man, if you're a woman, an attractive woman, let's just say that, and just and your morals aren't uh, aren't aren't that rigid. There are so many weird ways to make a living on the internet exploiting that fact without having to literally whore yourself out. You don't have to fuck anybody or touch anybody. There are like 30 different ways that you can ex- that just just excre- uh, t- 
extract, remove, extract, thank you, <laughs> money from men. Like, like I see women selling their panties online. That's a thing. Like they'll post pictures of them wearing a pair of panties and then they'll mail them to you for 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks. And these guys are paying and then they'll post pictures of them like coming on the panties for the girl. Like, look, I did good. Your panties turned me on so much. And she's like, yeah, that's real great. And she like counts those 20s. <laughs> um, and well, then the financial domination is one, of course. And um, and and like the the baby doll sort of uh, relationship that exists. I think we're all f- familiar with like sugar daddies. A, the baby doll. Yeah, I'm getting it. So we're all familiar with sugar daddies and that sort of relationship. An older man who is helping a young lady out uh, financially in exchange for like hookups and sex and being his girlfriend or his date. It seems like in the 21st century, that has evolved into a situation where there's no more sex. The sex has now been removed from that whole scenario, and there are. I, I keep seeing what a examples. terrible deal. I know these There's men. men that these desperate men, though. Pay, like, 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 and I've seen them questioned on it. They're like, "Does he touch you?" She's like, "No." And he put his hand on my back as he escorted me into the party that he was throwing. Um, does he see you naked? Well, no. I don't change in front of him. Do you get in like sexy lingerie and while he masturbates? Oh, absolutely not. I've never seen him naked either. Do you make out with him really passionately? Oh no, we we kiss on the cheek and stuff. Daddy just takes me out and takes care of my bills. And I was just like mind blown. Like, was I she really, really hot? A different perspective. I I actually dated dominatrix for a while, so I've seen oh. a lot of stuff. We can talk about whole show. Go but wolf. she tells me. There's two. There's a couple things that are very funny about that whole the whole fetish world, the latex scene. I can tell you a lot of stuff. I got fans watching, so I got to be careful. Um, um, they, they're, like they're not the, here. The, uh, the paint <laughs> stuff. Latex is, stuff. It's usually mean, rubber or uh, it's rubber. The rubber outfits that they have to put on. You put on powder first. And you have to peel it on yourself, and then you lube it up. There's like a liquid latex. Did yeah, liquid get- latex too. You yeah. can get and almost, it's, but it's really expensive and a pain in the butt to take off. Sure, no it pun is. intended. <laughs> but there are guys like the dominatrix that I was hanging out with. She's never had sex with any of her customers, and it would just be different fetishes. And she would be, there'd be all rich dudes. Like these aren't guys like they're living in their mom's basement. Like this, these are CEOs of banks, and the they're. They have their own fundraisers, and they live in three million dollar mansions, and they marry trophy wives who don't want to do anything. And it's like they come to her just to clean her house, to be put in a diaper, to be spanked, to be to be degraded. And then there's a really nasty stuff where they come to get beaten, like till they're blue and black and blue, and like I can't even look at some of the pictures. To, and there's no sex involved. Yeah. So, see now. See now, I understand like I understand yeah. like a, a good firm spanking until like someone's ass is like glowing red even like but that's as far as I would ever I, I I don't want to hit your butt so hard it's bruised I don't want to like literally beat your ass I don't want to bruise your butt I don't want to hit you with like a flog or a cane maybe a flog but not a cane <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want to give someone a solid caning well let like, me get out my cat nine is it even a fetish. If your fetish is to go to some woman's house, dress up like some superhero asshole, and then get beat the shit out of you, and give her a bunch of money, and you don't have sex, is that even like a sexual fetish at that point, or is it just yeah, you? Because... Like, do they get off by not having sex? Like, they get off no, by being treated by like shit. Act. They get off by the act. They, they. Yeah, being... I think they're getting back home and they're stroking one off while that they're happens that... at while they're doing it. As oh, well. oh. Unless... The so mistress says you're not allowed to. Okay, I, I didn't want to be so presumptive with your former girlfriend. <laughs> but it, instruct them to pleasure themselves as she beat the fuck out of them. Pretty much, yeah. It's huh. it's scary, man. It I did a lot, and there's a. It, like, let me put it this way: um, she was making a high six figures. Yeah. And she's working like she only works like a few hours a day. And these guys and are it's not like, really work, is it? Where are the you're high just six hitting figures? People. Are the high Whatever. six figures just under seven figures? Uh, it's about little, well, yeah, about that. She was making half a million, a little bit over half a million. Wow. And she was, she was making, each client would pay like a thousand bucks an hour. Yeah. Cool. And, well, good for her. Well, Jesus. because, I mean, we were looking the other day. 
you can go to Backpage.com, right? And they, it's it's like Craigslist, but a little more hardcore. And they've got um, 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 dominatrixes and uh, and all kinds of fetish stuff on there. And you can see what the rates are for like a girl who you would say is like a six out of ten, especially for like the scary part of the internet. She's charging like two hundred fifty dollars an hour. I'm sure Wolf has very nice. Um, uh, <laughs> lady attached to his arm so so yeah it, it just makes sense that she would be getting paid a thousand dollars an hour to to beat the shit out of someone i think could, i would i would be like uh you gotta eat minutes <laughs> yeah, yeah, right <laughs> i'm a little i'm running a little low here could uh could, can i write you a personal check for yeah this? it's okay? like i could save six thousand dollars by until monday now by starting it you know in the parking lot before i get here <laughs> here's, the, what, here's the crazy thing hold on she would double dip, as in, while she was doing this stuff, she'd make certain customers wear a mask, and she'd live stream it for paying customers. Mm. So while she's getting paid from him a thousand dollars, these guys are paying <laughs> on the internet to watch for however amounts of sums of money. She's at the quite same the time. entrepreneur. I, it makes me wonder if Wolf has ever worn a mask and been a performer on one of these live streams. No, but I've worn a mask at certain events. Oh, I see. Very nice. That's 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 great. Well, you know what my thing is? I don't. I, I I think is try anything twice in case you didn't like it the first time. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, life is sh- listen. Life is short, man. There's a lot of guys walking around with very closed minds. Oh, I'm scared of that. Oh, that looks naughty. I don't. Listen, it's, if you don't experience stuff, you'll you're not living, man. There's a lot of guys who walk around who are very happy with average. And that's like, you live once, man. Just do it all. Just have fun. The only thing I don't do with other guys that, no, I'm straight, strictly, nah. But I've had some fun in my times. And it's like, when I, it's funny because when I, in the paintball scene, you would think that because it's an ex- extreme sport, is you know, the guys are very cool and open-minded. And sometimes at my events, I'll have booth girls come. You know, a couple of chicks wearing wolf shirts, really huge boobs and everything. And yeah. a lot of these people get offended and like, oh my gosh, it's you know, it's a family event and how can you have a bikini contest? And it's like, you serious, man? We're out here like playing in like a hundred degrees heat and the two thousand dudes and you're gonna get mad at me because I bring over a couple of girls. Yeah, like it's- you're creating jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's but- why that's what I like about uh, CPX and the way Paul runs that event is because sure there's a lot of kids there and it's not like there's nudity out there that's going to like damage some 13 year old boy who's out there playing paintball that's not that's not the case but there are girls riding around on golf carts and bikinis selling beer and i love that i, I love that they're the, the girls in bikinis selling hot dogs and hamburgers and they're just booth babes everywhere um it, it makes it a lot more fun and then of course they have the 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 wet t-shirt contest later on Bikini i remember contest, yeah <laughs> i remember oh oh is that what it is um, <laughs> uh, some of the, so what you inevitably see is there are some, some like eights and nines getting up on stage. There are some, especially if you're just counting the body, there are some bodacious, tight fucking bodies getting up there. They can dance too. Some of them look like they got experience. Um, but then I remember maybe one year, I don't remember when it was, maybe the last time I was there, this girl got thrown off the stage because she like whipped her big fat titties out and she was oh. really, she was really drunk. And yeah, not great. Like, like she, she wasn't gonna <laughs> place in this thing. She wasn't gonna make it to the top three. I mean, we'll we, we'll all look at your titties, but you know, you're not gonna win. <laughs> she, she pulled them out, and they were like, ah, throw her out, and they, you know, they, they 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 disqualified her from the contest. And of yeah. course, me and Aiden lure her over to our side, and we've got those big titties out, posing for pictures. <laughs> and stuff. They're just so big, like areolas or like that. <laughs> Yeah, that that was a great time. Like, like yeah. we almost didn't go to the, the that that part of the event, but but we came back late for it, and and we got to see her big ridiculous fat titties. <laughs> great. Well, it's funny because I'm the judge for that event too. I know. So yeah. That's like, yeah, it's really difficult. I hate that job, but it, it <laughs> the stuff that we've had. Because they're also stop. so talented. <laughs> Well, you know, you, you got to look down deep inside of people sometimes, right? So That's not how you I, judge a bikini contest. <laughs> no. No. First of all, we got to let the people know this happens at nighttime, like after 9 o'clock. So all the kidlets are gone. All the yeah. young ones should be gone. Uh, you know, if, if yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The kids should be gone. So it's all the big boys having fun. And honestly, after a sausage fest that is paintball of 3,000 3, guys running around shooting each other every day, it's really nice to have that visual thing happen at night you know what i mean and just let loose and 
Yeah, sure. It's it's almost like we're re recreating what like ancient versions of ourselves would have done. You know, it's yeah. like we go out and we have a battle all day, and that yes. night we've got our captured women up dancing on the stage the for us. Home and frolic with festivities. Or even yeah. World War Two, right? Doesn't it seem like they'd battle during the day, and then at night they'd have. I don't know. Betty they cower Cage in or... their foxholes and hope the mortars didn't no, come. No, they, 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 the <laughs> women would come and, and dance on stage and stuff. This is how is no one else familiar oh, with it? Very no, few no. big-breasted women on the, the front lines of Bastogne. Not the front lines, the French but front. Kyle, back yeah, me up that... here. You know what I'm talking about. There's a comedian. Who the fuck is it? Uh... That Marilyn Monroe would go out. They still Marilyn do it. Marilyn Monroe the, would go. Yeah, USL that's, tour. That's when you got R and R or whatever. When they were like right. back in like the the back in like they would have those in like um, in England and stuff. You know where, but the guys who were out there fighting. They just fought during the day and cried at night. I'm sure or fought at night. Well, but, yeah, obviously the guys who were literally in foxholes didn't get to do that. But we're not literally in foxholes in paintball either. Sometimes we are. Uh, sometimes. sometimes you're literally in a foxhole. There's no <laughs> actual threat. I've crawled through yeah. some nasty stuff in my day, brother. Trust me. <laughs> Especially when we've done like 24 hour straight games and you just uh, keep playing I... and you're like play through the night with night vision goggles. And it's, 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 it really tests a person though. It's fun. The thing about paintball is that you've got, everyone likes to talk the talk in life, but when you go to a paintball game, you got to walk the walk. And it's always the guys who talk tough and stuff who go to a game. And it's like, they'll be the ones hiding in the bunker where you see the, the quiet guys running over the hill and destroying everything, you know what I mean? And when I'm, sometimes I do like corporate training events, corporate teamwork events. So you'll have a company like IBM or something, if they still, like, still exist. And they'll come, they'll bring, you know, 50 people down. And you'll have, have the CEO honchos talking big and, oh, I want Jones on this team. I don't want this and this, and we're going to do this and this. And then the paintballs start flying and you see the real personalities come out. And I remember this one time there was this secretary named Monica. She's very quiet, little five foot five, ninety nine pounds, and she, you know, taking orders from her boss. Boss said, "Oh, this is a call for me." I remember her getting out in the field, and she's just going, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> like this, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, is she okay?" I mean, she scared me, and it was like, <laughs> and all of the, the all the big head honchos. We're like, you know, hiding behind the bunkers and trying to this. And she's running over a hill. She goes, hey, wolf guy, can I get can I get one of your paint grenades and one of those smoke bomb things? I go, yeah, sure, sure. She's like, fire bomb, go, go, go. And, she, and just, yeah, that's how it is. It just brings out. That, that makes sense because like a CEO have. would be standing there like on the back like a general like accounting forward. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> You know, HR flank. Oh, you're useless to this too. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, that's and that's a cool thing. Like when I went to the PKA meeting with you guys one time, and uh, we met fans, and it, it's interesting because you get guys who play a lot of online games and Call of Duty and Battlefield, and they get to actually feel like what it's like to actually carry a loadout and have to run, aim, and shoot, and how taxing that is on the body. And scary. It can be scary, actually. Even though it's just paintballs, you it don't hurts. want to get hit. Oh, I mean, Woody, don't want I can still hit. see where Woody yeah, got I'm shot. Yeah, I'm permanently at. scarred on my <laughs> face from that. I remember when that thing. happened, man. It's it's one of those scars that takes like three or four years to fully yeah. heal. If that, it's I apologize. Be a while. <laughs> I remember that happened, Woody. I apologize. That was me, but damn. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. Yeah. It, although I bet, I, correct me if I'm wrong here, but didn't you feel a lot better about your wound? Like an hour later, when that kid took all that glass to the face. Oh well, that kid was dumb. He well, took he was his dumb. mask off. Now the kid is in the mask. car, right? Yeah. yeah. In the car was, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, broke, like Matt, few rules that it wants to get hurt. Which I, is what you have to get hurt playing paper. Granted, he was worse. Than, I was thinking about like where I am and Wolf talking about like the different levels of bravery. I, I, I'm reluctantly brave. I want, like, my heart wants to be way right. the fuck in the back, right? It, 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 if possible, with an umbrella drink of some sort. But <laughs> because there's so many fans and so many cameras there, I'm obligated to leave. People come up to me and say, Woody, what are we going to do? And, and no one's really on board with the umbrella drink idea, you know? Like, it, it's not a thing. So I was like, all right, we're going to flank to the right. This map, we have to own bumper cars or whatever the hell it is. And, and uh, we make a plan and we go. But I, it's not what I want to do. I want to be a coward. That's right. Yeah, the only time that, like, I like I know what you mean where you get, like, into that battle mode and you feel like the stakes are really high, even though it's just a paintball game and you're, like, planning your run between bunkers. The only thing that really snaps me out of that 
in paintball is, you know, I could be running and dodging and my adrenaline's so high, but then if I see that there's only one path and I have to get wet or muddy or, like, <laughs> disgusting, I immediately am like, no, no, my, I don't care if we lose. I'm not ruining my whole day by getting in there. No, I'm not doing that. I don't care. This isn't real war. That, I, I draw the line there. Like, that's the only thing that really yeah. takes me out of it is I knowing, like, Oh, if I sludge through that muck, maybe I get two guys out and people high five me once, and six hours from now I've got gangrene. Yeah, I, I refuse to. <laughs> I refuse to get my feet wet. That's where I draw the line. I won't get my feet wet. There, there's no water going in my boots. If that's what it takes, then I'm going around. Um, I like the aspect of kind of running it and doing something stupid, and knowing that like most of the time, four out of five times, this is going to go badly for me, and I'm going to pay for it with a lot of pain. But that one out of five times, it's going to be so glorious. It's going to be like, it's gonna be fucking die-hard mode where I just come in and yippee ki yay motherfucker, and just like take out <laughs> six guys that are looking the wrong way. And uh, that's the whole reason I play is for that one time, and it's the same reason I used to play Call of Duty. It's for that moment when you walk in the room and everybody's looking the wrong way, and you just get to take your time. I, that's why see, everybody I, plays. The thing is... I don't really care, right? I don't care if I win. I don't care if I lose. I just feel obligated to do this shit, right? So, so Kyle's like, yeah, that like one time out of five, it'll work out. Zero times, motherfucker. It'll never work. If I charge in there, take over a building and get four kills, and then it hurts and I get shot a lot, that's a loss because I really didn't care about the four or five people I got. No. Yeah. No, dude, you're totally wrong. No. You get that little... It's the same thing as like when you get a really good kill in Call of Duty, except it's a million times better where you get that hit and if they're actually a good person and they leave unlike me a lot of times where they actually leave <laughs> like you get that little you get a rush you're like oh yeah like this game is impacted because of me maybe i maybe that guy got like a welt or something like it kind of it gets you revved up a little bit like it's exciting you know it's you don't exciting. feel that way I, I must be in the minority but i don't feel that way at all if i get you out or something like, i don't care i don't care that's the fun thing about paintball though is that it's i don't like think you up. like paintball <laughs> I, yeah, yeah well, see, that's the problem. Well, don't pretend like you like paint. It's like, wait a minute, what do you like about paintball? You're like, well, that shower afterwards is very refreshing. <laughs> I like meeting the fans. Uh, the lunch is second to none, especially at the last place we went to. It's got those burgers. Um, I like, I like, you know, before the game starts when everyone's talking and stuff. I enjoy that. Um, Dear God. After well, I get I'm shot. You get to do that more, so I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like all those things, but I'm definitely most passionate about the rush that I get from like fucking facing off against somebody on an equal playing field. It's it's literally like real life Call of Duty. You know, they've got this pretty much the same equipment I've got, and it's I love that, and I love the I love the reward that my bot that my brain gives my body every time that I win. You know, if I do flank around and I do something that helps take a portion of the map, it, it feels really good. And I, it's, it's a, I love that. I really do. The, the thing that I, on my show uh, is called uh, Wolf's Top 5 Kills. And it's literally the top best paintball. <laughs> yeah, from they're all great. Over the world. And I literally, I just posted one like an hour ago. And there's one shot where this guy, there's a tank coming to a guy. And the guy says, okay, you guys cover me. This dude runs to the tank jumps on top of the hood, climbs up it, stands up, and starts shooting down inside of the tank. And I was, awesome. like, I was like, oh, it's probably the most illegal thing you could do in paintball. But <laughs> would have made you top five plays anyway. I was freaking out just watching this thing. And I'm like, and there's another one where uh, there's a guy with a sniper, uh, sniper paintball gun, which is now a realistic thing because we have these things called first strike rounds. And the paintball just fins on him. And this guy has a bolt action sniper rifle. And he's aiming from a building through a hole in a cement wall and getting dudes like 80 feet away. Like he's using his scope and everything. And I was like, that feeling right there, that will bring you back every freaking time. It's like the ping you hear when you hit a golf ball really well, straight down. That, that, that's like this deep down man cave thing that like wow i want to do that again no matter audio what it re takes. you probably audio rewards are really important for me like in call of duty there's this paper tearing uh oh. sound you get when you hit someone with bullets as they're hitting yeah, yeah, them hit marker sounds yeah hit marker i, love, sound. I yeah. love that and those exist in paintball too and at distance you can't hear them but if you're in a room and you can hear those oh that's a really rewarding sound and some of them sound different than others really yeah. solid hits <laughs> 
You hear Remember those? That just sounds so good. You shoot an extra three, you know. Where it's like, <laughs> and it's just, <laughs> I love the sound of my own music. <laughs> There's an airsoft YouTuber that, that works a sniper rifle, and it's yeah. have you guys? He's amazing. I've it, seen that guy's channel. Yeah, yeah. He, he puts hit markers like the visual and audio thing when he hits. It's like and the bullet travel time. It's like I don't exaggerate, but it's like a second. So you hear it shoot, and then it's, and he slows it down. <laughs> oh, you yeah. think? I, I thought it was just travel time. Maybe Wolf is uh, inside well, baseball Well, sometimes here. he does. No, sometimes he, he does actual time, and then he, uh, he does a slow motion shot after the, of the same shot after that. Okay. So you can see where he hits people. He does, and that dude is insane. He edits it up. It's really cool. I like it yeah. a lot. And it, it, makes it, it makes it look like snipers are the most important people on the field. It's probably not true. But it's, well, like on. real combat, they all have their purposes, right? Like... Yeah, it's funny. Like, yeah, and I'm not comparing paintball to real combat before all those sensitive people can start acting up. But everyone has like when I'm a general and I'm organizing a thousand guys, I've literally got snipers and headsets in their ghillie suits, you know, a hundred yards from the enemy's base, and they're not even killing people. They're just reporting enemy positions, and if they see the general pop up, then they'll go, boom, that's a thousand points, sir. It just took the general out, like that. And it's like snipers are just important as infantry when you have 50 guys running trying to take over a base or if you have grenaders running around with rocket launchers to take out tanks and blow up buildings and stuff they all serve their purpose and it's amazing it seems like one of those things that just like call of duty like the reason that guy's videos are so good is because he is the team sniper and you know there's obviously people on the front line holding those people back at sniper range but if you put a sniper in everybody's hand it's just like those call of duty 4 lobbies where it, it, you just <laughs> you get a couple of cool kills but you just get butt fucked and well you that's lose. the thing but the thing about paintball is that not everyone can be a sniper everyone can yeah. say they're a sniper but just like the real military again you have to be in extra better shape than everybody else because you've got to be able to run around the flank like twice the speed of everybody else for like you know three, four hundred or yards or a few acres before everybody else gets there. Then you get down in your hide and you shoot from that position. So you got to move, 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 move with a big ass gun, hot ass ghillie suit, and you've got to be in better shape than everybody else. So it's like you got a lot of kids who come to play paintball and they're like, oh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. I'm gonna... Then they realize how hard it actually is to do it. It's not like the video game. You can't just put a perk on your character and be able to run <laughs> You know, without slowing down, like it's it's test. You gotta be fit. If if you want to play all day, you've got to be fit. Uh, we were talking about that um, earlier this week. I was saying I uh, I was in pretty good shape at the last event. I feel like I'm in shitty shape now, so I, I just started working out again. But you gotta be in good shape. Like if I thought that there were a pain, if there were a big scenario game coming up, I would start working out six weeks in advance at least, running every day and doing like fucking army carries and shit, like getting ready to haul that big ass pack all day and like have my arms above my shoulders all day carrying 15 pounds you're serious about it there is conditioning that you have to do because like when i played i just played this in a, a game in wasega beach canada and i was like uh 80 degrees now i'm gonna be playing in los angeles in three weeks last time i played in los angeles it was 110 for two days straight and i kept my entire full gear on kit everything <sighs> jeez oh that's Every awful that's the worst it's like G. Gordon Liddy has this thing. He's like, you want to be a lawyer, you go to law school. You want to be a doctor, you go to med school. You want to be a soldier, you hit the gym. There's a thing to that. Just like paintball. And it's, it's you know, it's, but it also depends on how serious you take it. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of guys who would just go out and shoot for 10 minutes and walk back, have that umbrella drink at their desk, and then go back out again later. What I'll go out there, stay out there for like an hour and a half straight. I've got my aqua pack on my back, and I'm in the bush drinking it you know what i mean so it's what you put into it you know what i mean it, it's like sex it's there are guys who can have crappy sex but that's usually them you know and with paintball is how much you put into it like like i said there's a lot of guys who can go play and say hey paintball wasn't that hard but you'll find out they were just in the back just shooting and then <laughs> oh that's like, so frustrating running up was uh you know kyle and woody and trying to destroy bases and tyler's trying to take the right flank you know what i mean so it's all what you put into it, man. It's like you gotta you gotta work. And don't don't, don't slack around me. I'll tell you that much because I'll call you out. No, don't because you'll. I saw you call a few people out, and I was like, oh man, am I gonna get in trouble? Like, <laughs> is, is there is there a grade? Is like I remember from one of those games, it was so fucking. 
Yeah. <laughs> he just comes over and snips it. <laughs> yeah, you know, get out of here! He, like, he grabs your lanyard around your neck and just <laughs> tears it off like in the movies. Get out of here, soldier! Dishonorable discharge! <laughs> Parking lot with you! No hot This dogs. isn't a battalion for losers! <laughs> <laughs> No, I remember one of those days, it was so fucking hot, like, I just decided to go out and play in a t-shirt and, like, athletic shorts, and I almost felt, like, bad about it, because when I got back out there, I kind of saw 95% of everybody else is wearing, like, full, like, they just got back from war, or they're going hunting attire, <laughs> and a couple of them, they were, at every single game... You know, there's the big first push of, like, the really fast people. And then there's the average people, like, in the big horde spreading out. And then there is always three to seven morbidly obese men standing in the back, leaning backwards, dressed to the to the rafters, <laughs> and then just so firing bugs. up into the air. And like, it's, it's as though, like, no one has told them throughout their ten grand they've spent on paintball, hey, you know you're not hitting anybody there, right? And he's like, I know, I'm just too fat to be of use in the middle of the game. <laughs> it's just like, it's just... It was weird because I noticed the same guy because he would always lean back because his center of gravity was so off. Um, <laughs> the worst thing anyway. about those guys is when they hit you in the back when you're trying to move up. Mm, oh, That's the final battle is insane. so goddamn much. That drives it's, me insane oh, because you're not expecting it. it it's like when you're in when you're in a like a, a gunfight in paintball you're, yeah. and you're leaning out and shooting. You're like you know in that moment. It could come any moment. It could come any moment. It could come any moment. Like yeah. you know, you're in danger. You're preparing yourself for pain, and it's not even that bad, if I'm being honest. What the ones that hurt are the ones I don't expect. When I get shot in like the the kidneys from behind while I'm jogging somewhere, or yeah. or, or like you just said, you know, when when somebody shoots you in the back of the head on your Friendly team, fire. like, and you can't do anything. Like like I I don't want to curse at children. I don't want to curse. And I, you can't tell in paintball how old someone is. You can just. <laughs> <statue>. <laughs> Could be a guy who's five foot five, and that could either be a really like, like a thirteen year old kid or like a, a forty year old woman. You don't know. And your my first reaction is, "What the fuck is your problem? Come on, that hurts like hell." Like, that's everybody's reaction, bro. That's what I want to say. But instead, I'm, I'm sorry, like, Mister. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> instead, I go, Argh! and that's that's all I do. Yeah. And 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 like most nine times out of ten. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> I, 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 I think the is that it's always, unless it's a really bad hit, like what he took to his forehead, the pain is never like a tenth as bad as just the fucking frustration of being eliminated and knowing you have to like sprint back and then run oh. back again. Oh, and it's like, oh, okay. Have you like, ever done I, that, Taylor? You don't I did sprint it, back. I did, I did <laughs> the first two times. The first two okay. times that I got shot in that scenario event, I did go back and then I was like, this is bananas because I'm spent. I, this isn't a conditioning camp. I want to play some paintball. You must and have been so close just, to the insertion because I've never sprinted back. Yeah. It's too damn far to be sprinting back after getting hit for me. Sometimes you ride a bus back. Well, yeah. you never know. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta stay sprinting. You know? Yeah, when I get shot in the back, so at the final event, right? You gotta understand, there's like a 500 versus 500, or maybe 750 versus 750, and in the middle, there's a hump, right? So everyone's like pushed together. There are of the 750, there's probably like 700 in the buildings, cowardly back there, and then 50 on the hill, and I'm like one of those 50. I get shot in the back of the head. For five seconds, I am furious. I am so... It hurts, and I couldn't be more angry at my own team shooting me. There's refs all over the place, so you're out. You know, you got to walk back and take a lap. Uh, and your own teammate got you out. It, it is... I don't play that anymore. Um, what you're talking about is the final battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the final battle at CPX at Living Legends. I, I don't do um, it anymore. I, I, like, I'll do the initial rush, because um, I like running up there and hitting one. But I'm not. I don't hang out on that hill anymore, and I won't ever again. Because, like you said, there's just there oh. are hundreds of people behind you of Blind varying firing. skill level, yeah. and some of them don't understand the trajectory. And because there's so many paintballs in the air, it's hard to find your paintball sometime and and understand your trajectory if you're a noob. Oh. So, I, you kind of can't blame them because they're not being directed to do anything else. Yeah, I do. Nobody, it's <laughs> like somebody's coming up and like tapping on the shoulder and saying, "Hey." Get it 45 degrees here so you don't hit Woody. They're just like, yeah, die, enemy scum, and shooting you in the ass, you know? Oh, I so wish. I just don't want to play. Back in the head, that. it hurts a lot. It hurts a lot. It's yeah. Very painful. If they're hitting me in the butt or the leg or something, then that's all tolerable. But back of the head, it's a smack. It's a Jesus, you feel that. Yeah. Oh, guys, yeah. is this something I can do today? Can I give away a paintball gun in your show? If you'd like to. I mean, I'm happy to take it. <laughs> <laughs> 
want to give it away to one of your fans, though. How will we do this? I, I, sure, I'm down for that. Yeah, how do we do it? I was gonna how say maybe one? Uh, one of your if they like maybe subscribe on my channel and watch one of my videos, and they could say I saw a wolf on PKA. Okay. Then I could choose someone from the comments or something like that. All yeah, right. Some so culture. go over to yeah, yeah, yeah wolf to, top five totally kills. What is it called? Top, yeah, wolf top five kills. Yeah, released wolf's on August twenty fifth. Go yes. there, say I saw Wolf on PKA, and you'll be eligible to win. Uh, win the what am I looking at? Proto Max Die Paintball Marker. Oh, wrong thing. Brand oh. new. And I was gonna give it to to in a way another way, but I'd like you know what? I I'm so honored to be here that I wanted to do something cool for you guys. <laughs> so it's like this is a brand new Speedball Marker beginner marker. Straight up box, still got plastic on it and everything on it. Nice. Very nice. That is really so nice. It's 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 a legit thing, and I'm like, you know what? Let me. I, I'm so honored to be here that I, I was like, let me hook the guys up and it's like, yeah, just go on the Wolf Den on YouTube, go on the top five kills and say I saw Wolf, and and Tyler and Kyle and Woody on PKA or anything I saw PKA and put you in a draw and I'll send it out to you if you win. Awesome. Uh, you can tell it's a good one because it's uh, like a metallic blue for those of you who are listening. Like they don't <laughs> rent out the. the oh yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is uh, this is legit. Like you can. And that uh, one, you probably don't have to like shake and go shuka 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 <laughs> to try and get the the balls to come out because that is enraging when you just because me and Team Art the first time we went we're playing with Titmans for a while and we'd both just be trying to compete as Kyle and Wolf and Woody just tear through with their centuries ahead technology and oh. we're just in the back just foom, foom, hoo, hoo, hoo. are you shooting anything on, Trevor work. I don't know are you shooting anything Taylor. Dude, it was so because you guys had that terrible gun, right? And I had a good, like, legit one in the same class that Wolf has given away. You guys were saying how much you were struggling with it, but in my head, in my heart, I felt like the real difference was the skill gap between. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, I get I'm you shooting know. a little faster, but what difference does that make? <laughs> And then I tried it. Look, it's all curvy. You can't hit anything. And if the curve was it's consistent, just... you could work with it. But no, they just go anywhere. Yeah, it's the accuracy as well as uh, the, the uh, you know the rate, the, the, the rate of fire and reliability. It's just not a great marker in comparison with what else is on the field. If everyone had Tipmans, then it would be a ball. I would prefer mm -hmm. that. I would rather have everyone play Tipmans than everyone have electronic markers. It, it's it, it it would. Better players would do better. That's just what would happen. It's interesting um, but because one, one of the main things I always say is that it's not the marker, it's the man behind the marker. And it's, it's a very legit thing where I, I, like sometimes in a game, I will let a kid use my gun and I'll use his rental. And I'll still go out and destroy. So that skill thing has a very valid point to it. But at the same time, if you're if you all skilled guys and you have varying ranges of markers, then... The marker will make a difference. I, yeah, you know, I hate to disagree I, with you. Like, you know, you know, honestly, like, it was just so inconsistent. Like he's saying, like for one of them will go three feet to the left, one three feet to the right. It's like ah, well, so where do I hold? And some right? of them it, do that thing where you shoot, and it just goes, Foo. Yeah. and like it doesn't even land. It just goes up and, and continues <laughs> into oblivion. And like, just it's orbit. Just gone. gone. <laughs> like it, it's the it's the man behind the marker, but it's bad, also bad the paintball. marker in a way because it's kind of like. Like, you know when the Polish rode out on horses in World War One to fight the Germans? Yeah. I'm sure oh, yeah, the best there. horseman there, I'm sure the best horseman there got a couple kills, you know? Maybe. But 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 it, he couldn't compete. Even the, the dumbass idiot German in the worst ta tank was tearing through horses, you know? So it's a little bit of the marker. In my it's opinion, a very apt analogy. I think Wolf is right once you get to a certain level of marker. Once you get to a marker that shoots straight, like where you point it, then it's probably about the guy. Yeah, that's a critical yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And it's, again, you have different ranges of Titmans, right? Like you have that's true, the dude. beginner um, ones that you rent, and then you get like before I got my other my die deal and stuff like that. I use a Titman, and it has it had a thing on it called a uh, flatline, which spun the ball to make it go fast, farther, and straighter. So my Titman was badass, even though it wasn't electronic. So you can mod your own mark and all that. I had yeah, that exact but... same thing on my Titman A5 when I was like. 13 and yeah. that barrel on there it looked kind of like a silencer yeah like a silencer kind of or like a big machine gun kind of barrel like it was neat i yeah. 
I never did that well with it, but, but I believe. <laughs> I liked those. I remember when they first came out. It was a cool little uh, innovation. You know, it puts backspin on the ball. Yeah. And uh, it gives you quite a bit more range. It, there, I remember there was um, there was a scenario game in Florida somewhere where there's like a river separating the field in half, and there's a couple of bridges that are really big to control. But what you inevitably have, because you couldn't shoot over the river, was people would just be walking alongside the river single file to get to the bridges where the fight was going on. But these guys had flat lines, and they were just, not today, and just, just really wailing on everybody who would normally take their casual walk because they could and reach now, across the river. Oh, we have the first strike sniper rounds with the fins on them. And those guys, they'll go like three times the distance of a regular paintball. It's a whole different ball game now. Literally. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the first strike stuff. The, the, both the, um, the the Tiberius pistols, I like those a lot. Um, they're actually accurate. And like when I pull that thing out, I'm like, all right, I'm treating it like it's a pistol. I'm like, all right, let's aim yes. and squeeze. Um, and then, you know, the um, what's that gun we've got? The uh, what's the gun that uh, has the uh, the big square hopper? It's my gun. I can't think of the name of it. It's the the die dam. The die dam, yeah, yeah. And that, That's you know, what that we both use. Yeah, that thing's yeah. wonderful with the first You shot day. us with some first strike like, a few years ago, Kyle. Yeah, when yeah. You, uh, you had that really legit, like, actual, like, AR-15 like looking gun. Yeah, that was a Tiberius rifle, I think. Yeah, oh, I remember yeah. that. That was really funny. Um, uh, it, it, those things stung, right? That I remember one, one kid, kid I shot in the collarbone. Yeah. You cut my hand open. Yeah, yeah those little hand... fins will get you. I was you, there you, when you did that. And it's funny. I called. I called it out. Before, I called my shot before I made it. I was like, I was like, what's this? I'm going to shoot Murka Duck in the hand. And I go, <laughs> and you go, ow! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, got him. Like, that was well, great. it's funny because I came. I was off. The, I was on the field and I came off, and people are going, Wolf. Did you hear what FPS Russia did to some guy? For the first strike round. I go, oh, Jesus Murphy. Someone gave him first strikes. <laughs> I was yeah, like, yep. Kids. But their design. You know, we have this. We're trying to do this thing in paintball where that you only shoot them from long distances, not close quarters, because they will hurt if you're close to another person. So we're trying to, yeah, we're, it, it, they're meant to shoot from like 100 yards or more. You know what I mean? So it's like, but the thing is about paintball is that any, it, it, it's about the dre- adrenaline, right? Any paintball gun, like when you see people stand up and shoot, oh, I'm going to shoot my friend with a paintball gun. It's going to hurt. Ha, 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 ha. It's gonna hurt a hundred times more than when you're actually playing, because when you're playing, you got the gear on, you got the adrenaline running, you're rushing everywhere. Yeah. You know you're expe- you're expecting it. You know what? It's flying over the air. So when you get hit, it does not hurt nearly as much as just standing there and have having your friend shoot you. So it's like two completely different things. We used to play this shitty game, my cousin and I, where we would uh, we would. Stand about I don't know how far apart. We'd start at like 25 yards facing each other. Oh, Jesus. We'd each put one ball in each of our guns and then poop, poop. You know? <laughs> and we kept score. And then, you, and then you take a step forward. And then you, we, we would just keep going. And yeah. uh, after a while, like we just didn't give a shit about getting shot anymore. We kind of mastered our fear of that pain. And uh, I always felt like that was a real intimidation factor when we would get to these tournaments because we were 15 or 16. And some of those guys would be 14 or so, and they were legitimately afraid of getting shot. You would hear them out in the parking lot, how bad does it hurt? Oh, it's real bad. Well, well what if you get shot in the mask? Will it be okay? And we would start playing our game over there, just at, just off to the <laughs> side. <laughs> and then the, and eventually they'd notice this and be like, who the fuck are those people? And why is that, why does, what does that guy's shirt say? I shoot children for fun? Dear God! <laughs> Those are the iron on letters, Frank. Yeah. Who are Put the kids in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Mythbusters did that. They shot each other to see. I don't know what their myth busting was, but they were like pain tolerance or something. But uh, who's the one that looks like a walrus? Is that Adam? Uh, or? Jamie. Jamie, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jamie <laughs> a- was accurate, and he was able to hit Adam in the same spot every time. And eventually, he just like quit. He's like, God. He's like, you know, not, not in the, th- not right here, right there. <laughs> you know, no, no. And he's just not this spot again. That spot again. It was great. The game that Kyle said they were playing. You want to show me? Uh, let me show you a little toy we used to do that with. This is called. This was a double barrel goblin. It uh, takes shells. Like that, you put one paintball in, and then we would like you know you get one shot, which is two is double barrel, so you get that, and you do that. We walk a couple paces, boom, let go one, boom, let go the other, or you could do both shells at once. So it's up to the guy 
if you wanted to take a chance and do the double shell or have one shot then another shot. So little suckers like these, a lot of fun for stuff like that. That's awesome. I've never <laughs> seen paintball like that. That's yeah. really cool. I, I wish more people would cosplay in paintball. I see it a little bit. It seems like the only place where it's it's really effective to be a cosplayer because I feel like you could have, you know, it, it's it's going to be practical and fulfill whatever cosplay. It makes sense. Like, they, they don't want to ruin their outfit with paint, though. Like, mm. yeah, they I suppose do put that's a true. bunch of time. Or I guess it washes out, right? Well, they like could dress as something else, like Wild West, <laughs> that's kind of ready for it. Oh, well, there are guys who do that. Kid, I love that kid at our last thing that was wearing the, the swimsuit. He was about 100 pounds overweight, and he had... <laughs> A bikini top, and I've still got the picture somewhere of me and Woody posing with him, and I'm yeah. grabbing his titty. It, it, I mean, this guy's got like B cups for sure, and I'm, I'm giving him a good honk. It was ridiculous. He's wearing like this uh, tie dye bikini top, and then he's wearing bikini bottoms too, but he had like underwear under them, and he's just hanging out, muffin tops everywhere, big rolls of fat. Like, he was a very overweight guy, but he just didn't give a shit. He was well, just completely. <laughs> There's a guy named Andrew that I play with, and he only plays in a Deadpool costume. Oh, that's and funny. his mask is colored like Deadpool, like it looks like a dead. I and like he has it. two swords on the back that are like Nerf swords that he actually uses in the games and stuff. And he wa- runs his two pistols, and he's like, that's that's the only way he plays is in, as Deadpool. And to, <laughs> he's like legitimately good. That's one of the it's reasons unfair. I like... like- so there's this paintball airsoft battle, like you know, they, each guy you know is a proponent of their own sport. One of the yeah. cool things about paintball is people's willingness to dress up like a girl in a bikini, Deadpool, court gestures with the jingle bells on the hat, like like, <laughs> yeah. like it doesn't matter what. Like they, I, I, the, the paintball guys just don't take themselves so seriously, and, I, and that's a notch in their favor to me. Yeah, it's like Some I have do. an actual question about paintball that I remember this being like the horror story when i was like 14 of like oh man some people like freeze their paintballs and then they <laughs> shoot them at you and i silly enough i never actually googled it or looked it up is that an actual thing that people used to do maybe that um like i actually not to plug my show but i actually did a specific episode on freezing a paintball and shooting it and what happens and i froze uh like five paintballs and i did them in different and by, like I did one, in, I froze it inside of water, I froze them on their own. Did it. And what happens when you freeze paintballs is that it makes the shell more brittle. So by the time you get it, if it, even if it's solid frozen, after doing it for like two days straight, by the time you get it in your gun, go out to a field, try to shoot it, A, the shell has been messed up bad enough that it's not going to fly right, and it's just... It's not water. It's water-based paint inside of paintballs. So they're not freezing hard completely. They're not going to freeze them all. They're just going to be gelatinous still. So it's going to break. The same. It's not even going to break as hard as a regular paintball. So it's a complete myth. If you really wanted uh, to be a dick, you would get some reballs. You know, th- those are paintballs for indoor play that aren't paintballs at all. They're just sort of like hard foam or yeah. soft rubber, whichever, however you want to look at it. And, uh, you know, they bounce. They j- yeah. I shot my wall in the other room and it dented the sheetrock. Yeah. So don't worry about frozen paintballs is a myth. There's a lot of nonsense out there. It's yeah. like, what if we shot that. pinballs at each other? You know, the steel balls? Yeah, those are... <laughs> we just shoot ball bearings at one another <laughs> yeah. and kill each other? Yeah, that would, that's not well, good. Well, you can buy pepper balls, pepper spray paintballs for home defense now, right? Yeah, I've got some. Ah. Uh, they actually sell them as a whole different product. Like, it's a gun, but you can use pepper balls, even though regular paintball is, no, it's one of these, TPX. And you can get uh, pepper balls, put them inside, you shoot them out at someone's chest, a couple of them, they'll be, they'll be crying in no time. Nice. And I, I got the pepper balls just for like my that, Walter, too. shoots 9mm. Sorry, say again? Nothing. No, I was <laughs> No. So are you a city, Kyle? About uh, I've Walter? got that Walther like twenty five millimeter paintball gun and it shoots pepper balls too. I think it's twenty five millimeter. Yeah, those Have are you ever sick. been shot by one? Um, no, I haven't been shot by a pepper ball. But I would. Uh, my my thought process is it can't be nearly as effective as a paintball unless you really deliver it on target perfectly. Like you've got to hit me, I feel like, in this region with that thing for because if you hit me in the ass, like it's not like it a, a sixty eight caliber ball has that much pepper that's gonna just poof. And you got like, this in our mask, I think, for it to work properly. Mm. Like, right up here. 
Yeah, yeah. I agree. This yeah. requires testing in a video. I, I've seen what they do. It's it's, it's pretty lame. It's um, it, 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 I, I, I would rather get pet. I would rather get shot with that than pepper spray. Pepper spray is 10,000 times more. You got pepper spray in your video. Like that. He wasn't a fan. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts real bad. It hurts real bad. Um, and it's, it feels hot, like heat. Like, like it feels like there's flames on your face. You can feel the heat radiating off. Um, definitely good self defense stuff. I mean, it's funny how different burns feel different. Like, you get toothpaste in your eye, and you're like, huh, this is a minty burn. <laughs> <laughs> how are you getting toothpaste in your eye? It's never happened to you? No, I've never been that excited to get. To I'm an aggressive teeth. brusher, and sometimes the toothpaste gets in your eyes. <laughs> Maybe he's doing that that motion like this, like the up and like down, up and down. down. All right, yeah, yeah. I guess on the mirror in the bathroom. It doesn't happen. You don't much. use a sonic uh, air or anything. Maybe it, maybe it was a uh, electronic toothbrush. I forget, but I've had toothpaste in my eye, and uh, it's a minty burn. Try it. Kids. You know what burns is sweat in the eye when you get intimate. Anytime yeah, you get sweat in your eye, actually, it's a... that's a painful thing for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. But... It seems like bad design. You know, cops <laughs> <laughs> out there putting together people. They like he wouldn't be like, all right. Let's make the only things they can use to see really sensitive to the only thing that they excrete when they're working. Well, he gave us eyebrows, like right? A... Yeah, so well, is... I get my eyebrows do a great job keeping my eyes clean. It's like uh, this is the kind of wall Trump wants to build. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is thick and girthy, you know, this absorbs a lot of sweat, but yes. I don't know how I'm, I'm even talking about this. I like it, though. Unibra, yeah, all in ultimate power. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness uh, gracious. So, Kyle, you've been watching. Kyle was saying he was really depressed by Oz after, like, two episodes. And I told uh, him to keep watching. You get hooked. And are you at the point where you're hooked because you're interested in the story? Or you just want to see if it could conceivably get any better for any of these people? I know it's not going to get better for anyone. <clears throat> I am at season three. Uh, so I've watched, um, I think I've watched three seasons of it. I'm not positive that I have. Um Maybe just two seasons, something like that. Uh, I'm in the third Can you season. Explain for sure. to the people what Oz is. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a maximum, fed, uh, maximum uh, security federal penitentiary, and it the show the it's HBO show, so it holds you know, blood, guts, rape, language, anything Penises. you can imagine. I saw a man shit on another man's face after beating him senseless, and then rub the shit into his face. Um, and, and that wasn't even, that, that didn't even raise my heart. That was a down point on that episode. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's just Wolf's ex-girlfriend. I saw a man file file his fingernails into Catwoman claws and murder another man with said cat claws. Um, it is so dark and depressing and, and what keeps happening and it's, it's getting a little repetitive for me, but I'll, I'll get over it is like. You know, one guy does does something to guy. They're constantly overreacting because none of them can can handle any sort of stress or disrespect. They'll blow up and literally murder a man, cut his eyeballs out of his head, something like that. And then the next day, they're like, "Well, I was just mad about my mom's. You know, I heard she wasn't gonna be come seeing me anymore, so I cut his eyes out. I'm so sorry." And and he really is sorry. And you're just like, "Wow, these people really do need to be locked up forever." That's the yeah. thing. <laughs> Like, you can't let these fuckers out. And every now and then they will let one out. He's right back the back fuck in. in. He'll go out and do some stupid shit and just gun a man down and be right back the fuck in there. But the violence is just so much that, like, I would want to be in protective custody. Like, I, that's where yeah. I'd want to be. If, if, it, like, like the, the, if the option is protective custody and you're sitting across the street from, like, that woman on death row who wants to show you her pussy every day, or... Hanging out with Schillinger and the fucking white supremacists who, it's I mean, they're Schillinger. the worst. Yeah. Schillinger. It's Schillinger, <laughs> asshole. You know, hanging out with that guy, he's the worst. He's probably the most evil uh, guy in the, in the show. But all of them, every Schillinger character is the leader in of the there. the Aryan Brotherhood. Pardon? He's explaining to the guests. Explain, yeah, to people. Yeah, he's Aryan Brotherhood. Not so he's guests, just. Listeners. And, and it's not You're like. You're lucky. I'd have to fight off Adabisi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's Adabisi? <laughs> I think you'd have had uh, your Ed, own boy. I, 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 I you know, I, is, you know. I think the three of us, me, Taylor, and, and Woody here, like when we when we think about Oz, we're like, ah, oh, we'd be somebody's bitch. But <laughs> I, I think if we're being honest, Wolf's like, ah, oh, I'd get me a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> real quick, right? I, I think Wolf would hey, lead man, something. Hold my pocket. 
Hold my pocket, homie. Hold my pocket. <laughs> I'm, a, like a, I'm a, like an educated guy. I went to university and stuff. I probably go there for tax evasion. And, but I, as soon as I get through those doors, I'd be like, sup, son? Sup, what you got, homie? I'd be like, what you in here for, wolf? Man, come on, man. I like killed 50 people for the heck of it. It's all yeah. good. They see my mail come from my little kid. I see my little girl's drawings. And no, that's, that show is scary. <laughs> Dude, it's so sick. The thing is, I always put myself in the position of like, how would I handle this, right? Like, yeah. like you know, all right. So now you're now you're in Oz. What are you gonna do? And it's just like, oh my god, it's so terrible. I, 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 I would be in a terrible spot. I'd be fucked. I, I wouldn't lead the Aryan race. I, I would. I, I, I don't have any ideas. But you have to join somebody, right? Like that's the thing in that place. Like, I, I join like the the black Muslims, I guess. You know, I like think the, I would too. They seem like the best group. I think they would have us, Woody. Honestly, I think if you went to that uh, that black Muslim guy and were like, "Hey, I'm down for the cause," um, you know, despite my pa- Lincoln, brother, my Allah heart, Akbar. heart beats dark and true. You know, if you yeah, said, "There you go," you know, <laughs> somehow Lincoln, brother. You know, I think I think maybe you could squeeze on in there, get yourself a kefi, get yourself a prayer mat, and just mm-hmm. blend right on in. And and when you're on the outside, fucking tan up, brother. Like like. <laughs> <laughs> You're laying out there with one of those mirrors on your chest, it's like so you're hopeless. Your old retiree <laughs> Look at me. in Florida. <laughs> you want to get steal, a dark steal skin. one of the, the tin foil covers from the commissary and have it in the yard like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would get you beat up alone, bro. Fifteen days into my incarceration, floor. they're gonna be like, "Motherfucker's white." Feel <laughs> 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 it? He's white under there. What the hell? No, oh, man, I'm Hispanic, man. I'm from East LA, of me. <laughs> yeah, you might have to pull that one off. Yeah, it, it, maybe. <laughs> no, because I don't want to fall in with the Aryan Brotherhood because I feel like their whole message is hate. It's not like, hey, guys, let's band together and protect ourselves. Otherwise, that group of black guys who's non inclusive and that group of Latino guys who's non inclusive is just going to kill us all one by one. That's not what they're saying. They're saying white power, Sig Heil, let's get it done. Let's kill some, uh, what do they call it? A roadkill. And it's fucking awful when they killed that Jew and hung him upside down. Oh, and there's a scene where they, um, one of the characters looks like he's proficient in wrestling and maybe jujitsu too. And he gets a guy and puts him in two arm bars, breaks both of his arms or ligaments yeah. or whatever happens, arm bar, snaps him. And then they break his legs, arms yeah. and legs, break them all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the he decides to, like, on... stand up for himself. He's going to, like, you know what? I'm going to see where I rank in this, right? Is, do I have the scene right? It's been a while since I've yeah, watched it. Yeah, it was on, like, the bathroom floor or something like that, wasn't no. it? Or, or the no, gym was, floor? I don't want to spoil it. Basically, it was... Um, you this, can't spoil it. Everyone's seen Oz. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, uh, the, the Nazi guard set it up so that um, he would go into a room where Schillinger and um, the guy who was honey-dicking him uh, would whip his ass together and break all of his limbs. Schillinger had the guy from Law and Order SVU, um, yeah. had him like pretend like he was in love with this other man, gain his love. They yeah. become lovers, and then at the last minute, he's like, "Just fucking with you. I never cared about you, you piece of shit. Come on, wrestle me like we used to." And then this time, he goes full speed with his wrestling and breaks all this guy's bones and yeah. leaves him crippled for Crip. uh, you know months. I remember now. Rough, rough show. So much violence that sometimes it'll leave me feeling kind of sick to my stomach. It's not that I'm, I can't look at It's not from looking at too much gore. It's more like the depressing On that scene, that, do you think he never loved him and it was set up from the start or he changed allegiances? Because I could oh, never he, quite oh, tell. Oh, no, they was, planned the whole thing. Yeah, it's clear from the start. So, so mm. what, what happened was Schillinger tells him, hey, go honey dick this guy for me. That'll be the way to tear his world apart because, you know, he has set me up and gave, given me like 10 more years. I can't go to my sons. It kind of ruined Schillinger's life. Um, you know, they go back and forth with ruining each other's lives. And uh, but, but he do. had to honey dick him. But what happened was, while honey dicking him, Law & Order SVU actually fell in love with that guy. And despite yeah. the fact that he betrays him and breaks all of his bones, after the guy heals up and comes back, he's like, you know, I legitimately feel bad about this. I do love you. So that, that's kind of how that thing went down. And and where I'm at right now, they we're about to see what's going to happen to Law & Order SVU because he's out of protect, protective custody. I, I predict something bloody. Uh, so, uh, one, one of the worst things about that show and one of the best things about that show is the one character, the guy who went to jail for uh, drunk driving. 
he was like the most innocent guy. He's the guy who sharpened his nails. Yeah, yeah. His name. But his, what he goes through is like just to see the beginning to end of his character and what he has to go through is insane. Like, and he's like the most innocent guy, innocent guy because, you know, it's a drunk driving thing. Horrible. He killed a kid or something like that. But it was and a- he's this accountant and went to like hardcore jail and like, wow. I think his story is, is probably the Yeah, you see, I, I, it, the whole show is meant to show you the failures of the prison system in different ways and how it fails different people in different ways, from the child who's brought in when he's 16 years old and how it ruins his life to that guy you just discussed who comes in as a, a drunk-driving lawyer who killed a little girl. He goes from someone who committed a terrible crime but is a relatively clean, morally speaking, individual otherwise to doing um, heroin and cocaine and, and marijuana and having and being raped and becoming a rapist and becoming a, an uber violent psychopath who will shit on a man's face, beat you bloody, cut your throat, you know, just a wild man. He loses his soul. You know, that, that yeah. place is that that shows a little depressing. I'm telling you, I'm going to watch it. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. And I have a hard time <laughs> watching it. But that's the thing, though. It makes you want to go back for more. Like, it was like, Jesus. And, and then we were speak. We, you have a show like that, and then you have a show like Orange is the New Black, which <laughs> is like the complete opposite. Do you guys and watch like, Orange is the New Black, though? I don't, but I know the premise. Oh, you don't watch it? Oh, okay. I don't want to give anything away then. I, I don't feel like Wolf is on target with this. I mean, there's, like, legit women worried about getting murdered. There's murders in there. There's... Um, like what happened yeah, to but Piper? I mean, and no, just, there's not. It's not murders like Oz. There's like maybe one or two per season. Yeah, like, that's true. I mean, like, they, they, they killed chop, like 15 people that they first season. Chop, chop up them. a body and hide it in the garden as fertilizer, and so I mean that's. Did yeah, they feed it, anyone like, glass for an entire season yeah, until but, they but, started excreting That's the most blood surprising <laughs> thing about uh, the most surprising. <laughs> the yeah. most surprising thing about Oz is how little like deliberation goes into the murders like i feel like yes. if you were in a gang like if you're the sicilians or whatever they'd be like hey fucking they're the beast he's ruining our business here they'd be like well we can't kill him because of this and but really that's just shit like you know he looked at me funny <laughs> fucking kill him and it's like that that's it it's there's no deliberation no thought process you know if the aryans think that they they just see like a mexican guy they don't like they're like uh, yeah that's a that's one of those mouthy beaners, and then they go and just murder him. Like it's there's. But there is all some in politics to it, though. There, there is. is some politics. There is because just, they're like, we can't kill this guy because he's this guy's wife, and he's got the connection outside to this, and you know what I mean. So there is some politics to it. So, but you you know that if they bring in a new character, that he's going to be gone pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like sometimes they'll bring in like a, a someone from the outside world, like a celebrity. You know, from like LL Cool J or something. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's gonna die pretty soon. Like, jeez. But it's yeah. it's brutal, bro. Yeah, I've I've definitely been enjoying it. Uh, I, I, are there six seasons or so, something like that? So I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing ends. In the end, I'm sure that it's not. It's gonna be depressing. Like maybe the white guy gets free, but he realizes that life on the outside is just worthless at this point. Like, who fucking cares? I liked it better on the inside, and he probably goes and reoffends in some stupid way. You know, I, I, it's not gonna be a, a happy ending to this this little show. I'm if watching. anybody didn't want to stay on the inside, it would be that guy though. Like he was there for all of 15 minutes before he was having a swastika branded on his asshole and being claimed as J.K. Simmons. Well, it wasn't was right on the no. asshole though. Just to be clear, it's on the cheek. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, 15 minutes it was on that's, the that's hyperbolic yeah. right he was he was there for days before that stuff happened right maybe no three it was cops it, it was like it immediate. Was as soon as he got in yeah. it was like day one day two something yeah, like that because he comes in and, and at a bc is like i am gonna be taking all of your shit and he's like he's like, he's like your shit is my shit and he's yeah. like fuck and then schillinger comes over and he's like at a bc giving you shit yeah he tried that with me too you should ask to get moved. And he and, and he's like, oh, yeah, I will. He, he goes and asks to get moved. They move him right in with Schillinger, who's like, you're going to need a swastika on your ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> right away. Frankly, I don't rate people without swastikas on their asses, and it's a <laughs> real selling point for me. So I'm going to have to ask you to lay down. And, it's like, oh, it was it was just horrible to watch. Because, like, 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 the way Oz is, 
is you're in em- Emerald City, they call it, where it's nicer than Gen-, uh, Gen Pop, and everybody's in like a fish tank looking thing where it's all glass, no bars. And I was like, oh, okay, nobody's going to be getting raped in, in their fish tank. Like, you can see through that. They'll be like, hey, get that out of there. Like, that's what they're going to be doing. But no, no, those guards really are not on point. The guards are scarier than the inmates to me. Because at least with the inmates, they're in known quantity. And you know that, like, this guy will fuck me over at at a moment's notice. But as long as we're on equal footing and he has as much to gain from me as I do from him, we're going to be cool together. Like, he won't kill me. He just won't. But with a guard... You, you don't know what their motivations are. They could just be cruel and unusual and want to beat somebody down that day. They could be giving you a reprisal for something that happened in another fucking jail somewhere else or something that happened you know, on another side of the prison. When, uh, whenever that, um, after the riot, like everybody gets a beating. Even the people who were just cowering the whole time, they get handcuffed behind their backs and they walk a gauntlet of correctional officers with sticks and just pounding them to death. It's, it's, it's rough. Meanwhile, um, on Orange is the New Black, you get a whole bunch of freaking supermodels, like four fat chicks, and it's like <laughs> they're not all. That's not true. Oh, and, and come on! Chicks, like Piper gets there, she immediately—I forget she stands up for herself or asserts herself or something—but the the Russian lady doesn't like her, so she starves oh, her for Jane weeks. Wing. Janeway? Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Janeway. Yeah, Captain yeah. Janeway, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, she goes weeks, and they, they don't give her any food. They give her buns with nothing in between them. They put a maxi pad instead of a chicken patty in the uh, in her food. Oh, and... yeah, that's so bad. Oh, man. <laughs> how many... How many uh, wow. how they many starved the Latino guy until he went insane and hung himself. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Oz wins. I, I, you're right. One they took his medication his... away because it was too expensive. Yes, <laughs> that reminds me of the time in Oz where they wanted to teach a guy not to say anything else to the uh the block leader and so they cut his arm off <laughs> the dude the feeding the and guy then glass they just until he left died. him in the same cell block with That's the people bad. who cut his arm off and they just leave him in there he's just now one arm ted walking around there was like hey fucking stumpy like making fun of him i don't it's think like, feeding guy glass would this. work you cut my arm off the feeding guy glass like if there's a tiny bit of sand in my food then i instantly notice yeah i thought the same yeah. Uh, when I was watching that, I was thinking like you would have to get that glass much finer consistency than could be achieved with a large tomato sauce can on a metal like a stainless steel table, which is what they were doing. They were they would take and where they keep getting all this glass, like they need to be smashing glass and crushing it up all day every day to feed this guy. But they crush <laughs> it up by rolling this metal can over shards of glass and they put the fine powder in his food and he dies like after months of this. And it seemed like a terrible way to die, but I'm with you, Woody. I would detect that. And, and hey, if you're in prison, you're going to be like, this can't be good. Someone is trying to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who are, yeah, but at like, the same that's, time, it's, hey, it's not it's... like, oh, shit. The Lay's Corporation is really going to pay up. You know it was out of BC. <laughs> it was that guy over there looking at you through the crack because he wants you to die. <laughs> like, like, it's that guy. It's that motherfucker right there grinding the glass up. It's not hey, a big to, mystery. To play devil's advocate, advocate, first of all, it's prison food, so it's your mashed potatoes aren't going to be nice and creamy. But he's the Don. He's getting the special meal. I guess so. But And when you're and usually if they're in prison, they're like eating and they're like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like... It's not like I did, I can't remember specific scenes. I don't know if he had a nice wine glass at Chianti and you know knife and fork taking his time, but maybe he just you know he's old. Maybe he just didn't know. You know what I mean? So, well, they gave they gave his son rat poison. So they did. He was he was easier it's to very, get rid of. You know what they didn't do that I thought would be a good idea is way too many people get killed by free weights. I think they would have moved over to machines in that gym by now. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't you think so? Because you can't be leaving giant cudgels around for convicted violent felons to use on one another, because that's all it is. It's just, like, some jacked Nazi, like, bench pressing, and then some other guy, like, from the, the homeboy gang will come over and start talking shit, and then they're in a big duel with 10-pound dumbbells with each other, when it could have just been a chest press machine, and then they could have had a fist fight on the basketball court. That's all I'm saying. Oh, uh, they would have figured out how to kill someone with a stair climber somehow. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah, they would. in the machine and start stair uh, climbing. Wait a minute. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> the awful slow death of the treadmill. Is, is, the other, is it like sandpapers your body Brandy away? Damn. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that was a time. That shows like that always make you think what you would do in prison and I was my thought was always like, all right, if I was like going there for life, I'd have to 
somehow get in with the Nazis and just go in like, oh man, like, like I'm so glad all you guys are here. Like, just some more white people to hang out with. Like, we're the best, I am I right? Like, but like, if you're only there for like five years or three years or something, you wouldn't yeah. want to join a gang or anything. But how would you survive? Couldn't you no. get in with that the Italians? That didn't work out so well for Ed Norton on uh, American History X. No, it didn't. But he uh, turned on the Brotherhood, though. So, he, no, no, no. Yeah, he turned on them after he was attacked. No, he was raped because he was getting buddy buddy with that black guy in the laundry, right? No, he didn't. He got raped just because he was there. Yeah. Uh-uh. I'm telling you, watch it again. Just, that's oh, was, why he oh, was so upset about it. Wolf is right. Yeah. That's why he was so. Uh, that's why he felt so. Uh, that's why he was so mad because he thought he was one with his people, yeah. and they turned on him. That's how they didn't know any that none of that. Him and that guy knew in the laundry room on their own. They didn't know about him. He was mad because he was like, he was one of them, and they turned on him in the shower. I thought they raped him because he was turning away from the Aryan Brotherhood. No, he was just new me. Trust me, I love that movie. I've seen it a lot of times. See, watch yeah, it again. It's a great movie. I, okay. But yeah, that's kind of the feeling I got from that movie. Is like that's why he was so distraught. Is like he thought it was like this one big team of white guys. And then he goes in there and he realizes, oh, this, I'm just kind of a part of a big group of shitty people. And yeah, this yeah. is eye-opening now. Like, I don't know. It, but let me a, uh, let me put the Squarespace ad in here. I think this is a good time. Probably all, right. all done with that. Squarespace, that's what the Prisoner's Nas stay in. It's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, everyone to remember that this episode of Painkiller Already is being brought to you by Squarespace. Their sites look professionally designed regardless of your skill level. There's no coding required. They use uh, intuitive and easy to use tools. Squarespace has state of the art technology powering your website to ensure security and stability. They're trusted by millions of people and some of the most respected, brand, respected brands in the world. So you can start your free trial today with no credit card required at squarespace.com. When you sign, when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code PKA to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Very cool. Build it beautiful. You know what I was, I was thinking about the, uh, the gang thing, Kyle, and I was picturing you more as like the Ryan O'Reilly, like the guy who's really not in a gang that's huge, but he's just very manipulative and tries to tries to slither his way around. And he plays a game that I would kill. be afraid to play. I really would. Like, 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 he walks such a fine line. He's always just thinking a couple moves ahead, and he's always just like, he's like, hey, me and you are tight now, but that other guy. He's got to go. Meanwhile, he's trying to kill both of you. <laughs> like, like, like he's yeah. poisoning you and framing you for the poisoning. Like, like, like it's he's such a, a a manipulative guy, and he does some outrageous, outlandish shit yeah. both in and out of the prison. Um, adding his brother to the show is an interesting dynamic. Are you um, talking about the guy who's now on the insurance companies commercials? Yeah, mayhem. Now he's yeah. mayhem. Yeah, he's yeah. mayhem. Yeah, he's awesome, bro. I yeah, I liked guy. him in that show. He just he, the way he would just go and like man- manipulate and fuck with people, and not even like small timers. He'd go up to Adebisi and like try and trick him, and then he'd go straight from that cell and just brazenly walk down to Pancamo, that gigantic Italian cell, and trick him too, knowing that that guy could literally eat him. Like, <laughs> and that guy, he was the exception to the world because he was on his own and didn't need any gangs or anything. Which guy? Yeah. He was. He, what we right. were talking about, he wasn't in a gang or anything. He was oh, yeah. on his own. Like, he survived yeah, really, really, by his willpower, right? So Yeah, he was, like, the Ital- or the uh, the Irish leader. But, like, through the entire show, there was never, like, an Irish gang. It was, like, it was like oh, him maybe, and his maybe, like, five Irish guys. Yeah, it, it was, like, yeah. him and his mentally handicapped brother. Like, yeah. that's the Irish. Whenever was they have the boxing Cyril? match. Yeah, Cyril, yeah, yeah. Yep. So whenever they have the boxing so match, he's, like... Luckily, his brother fought Golden Gloves, you know. And, but wouldn't his boxing skills be diminished? You know, like 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 he get conked, he got conked over the head, and now suddenly he seems to have an IQ of you know sixty. But but he's yeah, still but fucking throwing memory. He's still, those combos are clean. <laughs> like, like his footwork is good. Like like he didn't lose any of that. It was, Literally it just muscle didn't make memory sense. though, right? So it's like. Some of it is, but it not just seems like it would stuff. take the edge off his skill set, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, was, I'll admit was, his form might be good, but there's a lot of ring craftsmanship that's going on there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I didn't know about that. There's an AMA uh, question here. What is one yeah, thing you want to do before you die? Just one thing we want to do? Uh, what is the one thing you want to do before you die? We talking sexual or what? That's all it, it says. <laughs> I want to do that thing where they 
it's not it's not hand gliding. They wear that flying bodysuit thing. Wingsuit. Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, that I might be the thing you do right right before you die. <laughs> right? <laughs> Is it seconds <laughs> before thing. you? <laughs> But yeah, that's one thing I, I've, I've seen some amazing video on that. I want to try that. Yeah, our our friend Richard Ryan does that. Apparently, you've got to do two hundred um, like regular, regular jumps, jumps before, you before you're allowed get to do that. The, yeah, yeah. But he said like if you're serious about it, you can get those two hundred knocked out in like a week. You know, just yeah. going up and do going up and down over and over. Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. Um, it sounds. Sh- I sound like an asshole saying it, but like I've done a lot of stuff that I wanted to do, um, and, and I'm trying. I'm kind of. I guess there's maybe some travel that I would like to do, but I only want to do it because it's not really on my list. I don't want to necessarily go to this place or that place. I just think that I should, and that um, I, I know I'm not gonna like get some huge amount of enjoyment out of it. I just want to say that I have more than anything. I, I, I'm having a hard time thinking of some little it like might sexual. Broaden who you are if you left the country more? Have you left the country yet? Not yet. You, wait, you've never left the country? We went hunting one time, but we didn't do anything. Where'd you go? Tina. We Where? were Tina. You land, you drive to a thing, you shoot, and then you're back at the airport and then you're back out again. So we didn't get to do anything. Wait, well, you've never gone to like the UK or Australia or She goes to the UK all the time. She's got family there, she's got a place to stay there, and I've wanted to go a lot. But every time I see how much those flights cost, it's like Ah, Jesus, we're really jumping in with a lot of money here right off the start. I, I think you can get to Europe cheap if you're really flexible on the dates. Like, you can find a trip. The other thing is she flies in this really fancy schmancy, like, sweet thing. And I wouldn't uh-huh. want to fly alone, like, all by myself right. when she's up in her, like, capsule or whatever. But um, now, as an adult, I haven't really I haven't done any of that. I, I have never gone to Hawaii, an island somewhere? No. Um, Seriously. I've Stop knocking him, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the no. man alone. <laughs> I went to I went to Texas one time. Um, oh, now, I've been all over, I've been all over like the contiguous United States. Um, I think me and Chiz added it up the other day, and I had been to like forty four states or yeah, something like that. A lot of driving That's racks up the numbers. Yeah. So, you know like what? That. We gotta do a road trip. You guys gotta come with me to like Jamaica. I'll take you into the mountains. I'll take you down to the yeah. beaches. Go down to hedonism, hang out. Yeah. We gotta, you gotta, we got you gotta change that, brother. That's you. Come on now. That'd be that's, fun. That's Road just, trip to Jamaica. Yeah. Telling you, we <laughs> take care of it. Works. You. <laughs> you know what's on my list? It's it, it's like as far as the one thing you want to do before you die. I, don't, I I can't think of a great one either. But I would like to paramotor. It's a thing people do by that Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil in Rio. You know oh, the big thing yeah. with the arms out. People fly around that thing all the time. I'm like that seems like a cool thing. Yeah. Like bucket list item. I could do that. That's that would cool. be pretty neat. I get that. Uh, do you think they would take? They'd be timely in coming to help you if you got tangled on the redeemer. <laughs> because I, I don't know. feel like they're on point fucked. with that. I think you need to yeah. reserve. <laughs> Find some way to jump and toss that thing. There are some things you don't do in third world countries. Like you don't go bungee cord- cording. You don't. Right. You know what I mean? Like this particular thing is a thing people like. I mean, there's a Facebook paramotor group, and people are all the time fucking flying around that statue. It's uh yeah. There were times like that's something you realize at like when I was younger we went to like um we've been to Jamaica. And so you go there and you do all the little like activities out in the ocean where they're like, Hey, you wanna go snorkeling, you wanna go scuba diving, you wanna look at sharks or whatever and I was young enough at the time to be like, Okay, this is just like being off the coast of Florida or something where these are all trained professionals who are gonna walk me through this and everything will be safe. Looking back now, like and even then looking at them, I'm like, these don't quite look like the people that would be on like the dock in California or Florida. Like these just look like a few gentlemen who hopped on a shitty boat and and picked us up off the beach. And that's really <laughs> what it is. They just they like they come to you and they're like, yeah, you're safe to just hop on in right there, man. You are safe. It's like, are you sure? Oh, I I've jumped in many times. I've been fine every time. It's like, oh, that's not that's not convincing or helpful. <laughs> uh, like, uh, but lack of regulation, cheaper, fun things to do if you're a risk taker. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's it's uh, it's funny because let me tell you, I went to Bali once, and um, this was on my honeymoon many many moons ago. I'm not married anymore, but I went to Bali. I'm one of those guys. I can't stay on the reservation. I like to explore cultures. I like to experience real stuff. And I was at Bali. I was staying at the Ritz, kind of expensive place to stay. So I was like, the ex-wife was asleep, and I was saying, you know what? 
I'm really cool with the the concierge. I said, you know what? Let me go to him, see what's up. And so he goes, hey, sir, let me, how are you doing? What did I get for you? I go, yeah, I want to go out. I want to go to a local party. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, on the resort, we have this. I go, I go, brah, listen to me, all right? I want to see real Bali. I want to see, let me get in with the locals. And he was like, he dropped the axe and he goes, let me tell you, brother. Let me go. I call my friend and he'll come pick you up. Give him $100. Give him $100 American. You go anywhere you want. So I go, let's hook it up. You know, I do the high on pants. We're good. We're good. You know what I mean? And so he calls this guy. Dude comes up in this little car, little van thing. I hook him up with some cash. He goes, all right, man, I take you to a good spot. Okay, you come with me. But don't leave my side, okay? And, um. He takes me down to this party, and I go, I go into this. He goes, okay, I'll be out here waiting for you. I go in, I see a couple of Australians party, as in it. I come out, I go, dude, what's this touristy crap? I go, what are you, what are you talking about? No, 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 there's like there's white people in there. I just not, that's not real. <laughs> and I go, okay, okay, you come with me and everything. I go, all right, let's go. Takes so he tried to, to drop you off at a white place first. You're so racist. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> It's a touristy place, right? So I was like, Vim. he kept driving, drove for like 45 minutes, went to this little seedy neighborhood, okay? We went from like, wow, no, I go to this party. I thought it was a party. So I'm walking down there. I, I, there's something lost in the translation translation, because I'm walking. He goes, okay, he goes, here you go. Don't show them your watch. I just keep walking that way. You'll see I pictured the opening in. scene, like the scene from Dirty Dancing. Wolf is barely able to hold two watermelons as he enters <laughs> his party. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, listen, listen. I, gotta, I get out and um, I'm walking down this party and it's like a wooden fence and there's women lined up along both sides of the fences. They're leaning on the fence, looking at me and... Hey, 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 they're speaking the language, and I was like that. And then, cha 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 cha, twenty dollars, twenty dollars. Go, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. And then I go and I go knock on the door. The guy opens the slider thing and straight out of a movie. He goes, well, "Who sent you?" I go, "Oh, so and so from the cap." He opens the door. I walk into the party, and uh, there's this uh, underground house music playing, <laughs> lights, and I see a whole bunch of girls, ridiculously hot girls. Like like tens, twelves. This is L.A. ten, twelves. All right, and this guy is dancing, and I'm the only not I'm not only the nor, only North American. I'm like the only black guy. You probably these guys have ever seen, and um, the the you know I'm just walking around. I'm kind of like dancing with a couple of girls who want to dance and stuff like that, and then I just see these guys in the wall looking at me like this. <laughs> Like that. And then this one guy, little guy, comes up to me. Little guy, a couple tattoos ago. He goes, ah, Mister, that's a that that's nice watch you have. Nice watch you have. And I was wearing a uh, my Omega Seamaster at the time. And I go, thank you, thank you. And I had on uh, I had on dog tags, my paintball dog tags, and they're just the fake ones. And then and then another guy comes up, hey hey hey, you soldier, you soldier. And I go, yeah yeah, I am, <laughs> I am a soldier. And he goes, okay, okay, we leave you alone then. Like that. <laughs> that point, I'm like, okay, it's time to go. And I, was like, I just tried, I just did, I just thought, I did the Olympic walk run thing. And he walked out. Hey, good to see you. Have a good night. I turned into a white guy really fast. I'm like, hey, you have a great night. It's good seeing you guys. Have a, have a good life. I'm good to go. And I got in the cab and I go, what the hell did you put me into? And he goes, they didn't rob you? <laughs> I was like, dude, take me back. It's like, I got take me back bad. to the Australians. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, just take me back to the hotel. This is my experience for the day. I'm good to go. And I, I, I was like, dollars back. I was like, <laughs> you know what? He got me out of there alive. I'm good. I'm like, I, I, I was cake at that point. But it was something. It was, woo. I, it's funny some of the stuff you walk out of that you have no idea what you walk into. I'm what? the exact opposite. You could not have fucking paid me to leave <laughs> the uh, resort we were on in Jamaica. Because from like our room up there, I could look over and be like, wow, you can see abject poverty as far as the eye can see. Yeah, and then yeah. you can see those same people having to serve some millionaires down there, some watered down rum and cokes. And so you know there's quite a bit of resentment there. And I do not want to be asking one of those guys to, you know, hook me up with a party out there where I walk around as like some, you know, the one white goober trying to 
<laughs> fill myself with culture and like, oh, you know, they'll like me. I just have to go in with an open mind and they'll like know that I'm on Scott. their team when really it'd be just robbed immediately. Like, 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 look Scott, at this dumbass. You got that one braid in your hair with like three beads long. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you got the bongos, you're walking around. Yeah. I read, I read. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're getting shanked like you're in Oz. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna air. They're gonna. What do they call it? Like air, air holing you or something? Where they yeah, like oh trick you out of me with a fucking shiv. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, see, you're not making me want to travel much at all. Uh, 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 like, like, you know, like, like when you go around people who are that poor, it can be dangerous to of even course. have you know fifty dollars in your pocket. I don't want to yeah. get beaten up over fifty dollars, much less killed. Wolf, I don't know why you had your watch on you. You didn't at least slip it in your pocket? This is before you had smartphones. I actually needed to know the time. Okay. Yeah, this you know like what I think? 90s, I, I bet you would have taken that watch. I bet the guy who was driving you who said, like, don't wear your watch, I bet he was hoping you would take your watch off, leave it in the cab, and then he would just leave. Gone. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Well, you know what? I don't think he could because it was like... <laughs> a, I think it was the relative... I know, right? It was the relative of the guy who worked at the hotel, so I would have had to, you know, found someone, right? So I was like... But yeah, it, but it's. I go to Jamaica. I go off reservation. I went to Cuba. I went off reservation. I was fine. Um, like all over the wherever I've traveled, I've done that. That was the first time I was like legitimately. This is a question for William Taylor. Do you think it's easier for Wolf as a black man to mm. do these things he's talking about than us as a Caucasian North American? I feel like a white American is. It's much. We really stick out if we're in a Bali a, a Balizian nightclub. You know, and the unk, 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 unk music is going on, and like like Woody's over there breaking it down. Yeah, like, the running man. <laughs> they're not gonna ask him if he's a soldier. They're they're just gonna take his shoes, and that's gonna be the end of it. You know. Yeah. What I, would I do? I'd be sitting by the bar. Anybody a hockey fan? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to talk about the Blues? You know. How yeah. You, how's that, how's your team season going? I, like, I feel like Wolf can easily wear the disguise of a local. You know, all he has to do is not talk and act like he belongs. Uh, well, here's, this, here's the funny part, though. It depends where you are. Because First of all, uh, black guys are scarier looking. Except Russians. Uh, well, it depends. Well, what I'm saying is... is <laughs> track suits are intimidating. Russians are their own category. Or yeah. Track, yeah, yeah, that's a whole different thing. But black guys are... I would feel more comfortable doing that there than I would... Like, I would never go backpacking in Europe. Like a lot of my... Uh, Caucasian counterparts have done. What's scary you know what about saying? that? You know what I'm saying? Cause that they can no, that does make a lot sense. of things. Okay, so the, it depends on where and when the situation. I don't right? know what so he's saying. How come I don't no, get this? If I, he, what he's saying is like, if we go, if he goes to Jamaica as a black guy, he's gonna have it easier there. We'd have it harder there. If he goes, if we all take a Russian vacation. It's going to be way easier for us three to wander around than it's going to be for Wolf to wander out. If we go to the, anywhere in like Eastern Europe or something, like it just depends on where you're going. I think is what you're saying, right? Yeah, if you're if it like, like one of my some of my friends in college went backpacking through uh, Germany and Sweden and Latvia and whatever. I'm like, okay, you do that because you know I can't do that as a solo black guy and do that over there because you know what I mean. Yeah. But if I'm in a place, yeah. if I'm in Puerto Rico. Woody, really? You don't get that? You, you don't, don't. You get what he means? Seriously, no one's gonna fuck with you because of the implication. I wouldn't be at all scared as a black guy you know, hiking yeah, around. I and... see that from a black guy. I think that you think that being a black guy is like a superpower. Like, like you know that Wolf <laughs> can't fly or anything, right? Like, like he can't bend steel bars. I mean, he's a he's little. Did you know guy, he can't do those things? But, too, but I yeah. think that Wolf and all of us know that if like three Latvian dudes who don't like black people at all see him somewhere. Talking to some white girl at a cafe, they're going. They might follow him out to the alley and gut him. Exactly. Yeah, yeah if I don't think that actually happens. The streets of Moscow and Ew, a bunch of guys in track suits, hammered with shattered vodka bottles, are in their hands. They can look at him and go, "Ah, that guy does not have a lot of friends around here, and he's Eastern clearly just looking guys, around." Eastern Bloc guys, Polish guys, those guys are hardcore, man. They don't, you know, mess around. It's like, and I know a lot of guys from different sides of the street, but there's serious stuff that happens that I would not test. You if know you what go I'm full saying? on Eastern Bloc, I'm starting to appreciate the danger. But we said Germany, which I picture like, you know, the West Germany side. Yeah, where they it. had, where that and, woman and where the that UK. Was, was shetty to death last week. A nice yeah, place maybe, like Germany. I, I wouldn't want to go to Germany right now. <laughs> it happens as, everywhere, anyway. man. Yeah, now is not the best time to be visiting Germany. I'm sure their tourism numbers are down. 
Because not saying, a lot of I great people are coming general, to see the show. I'm saying in general, as a black dude, it's easier to go to certain places than other because, you know, um, when I went to China, I'd be more intimidating there than I would be in one of the European places I was talking about. Yeah, Does that I, make sense? Yeah, yeah we, I still people would like to go somewhere racist, where I'm. Apparently. I'd like to go somewhere where I'm much taller than everyone else. I feel like 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 maybe Japan or, or Taiwan or, or somewhere like that would be cool. North Korea. Um, where do they have the lady boys at? Much. Like like maybe Thailand. Thailand. Yeah, yeah. You, you get get some lady boys, get some stuff like that going on. Maybe I like, legitimately think it would be funny walking through the crowds and being like a head above everyone else. <laughs> I, I, you see that in like there was that old uh, movie, Mr. Baseball, I think, where they send Tom, they trade Tom Selleck yeah. to like the Japanese shit baseball team and he's like wearing his cowboy hat or something like walking down the street and he's literally head and shoulders above every other human being in, in sight and uh, I don't know I think that might be fun it's not like I'm 6'4 or something but still I, I think it's 6'1 I'm, I'm a lot taller than the average Japanese man maybe yeah I'm sure you are but even then like Japanese people they got the, like the Yakuza right they got some dangerous fuckers you don't want to be like some like, gangly white fucker okay. just traipsing around Tokyo you know, no, but Yakuza by, does not go oh. after random people like that. Like, that's the same as the Italian mob. They're not just going to go after random people. I mean, Russian mob guys are crazy. That's I've got a Yakuza thing, but... story. So we're in um, uh, Tokyo, and uh, I'm with Joe Lozon and like, his camp, right? So all of Joe's friends, aside from me, are, like, professional fighters or guys who've just been training for decades and stuff. And um, I don't know. We're out, like, just whatever living it up in tokyo and they decide that they want to get into a fight with yakuza people apparently this is something they arrange like twice a week <laughs> yeah jesus yeah so um you know jo joe's like fuck it yeah this will be great you know because he fought pettis and it didn't go his way he's like i'm gonna leave here on a fucking win you know one way or another and uh uh, there's a guy named Chris Palm, Chris, like Brandon, all those guys. They just they they want to fucking fight people, and I'm like sheepishly also pretending that I want to fight a Japanese. Yeah, me too, guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'll be great. Maybe there's a little yeah, one. Yeah, bring me a jack. <laughs> <laughs> this is for Pearl Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and uh, professional right. fighter Roxanne Matafari is is giving us this tour. I think it was her. We had two guys on two different days, and um. Uh, she, by the way, is fighting for a title, like, this weekend. But, um, uh, so she's, like, calling people, like, trying to arrange Yakuza to, like, come and fight with us. And, like, it, it, it lasted for, like, an hour and a half. Like, it was, it was up in the air as to whether or not we could find gangsters that wanted to fight, like, you know, UFC fighters and training partners and shit. And, uh, thankfully, they were unable to find anyone who wanted to throw down. Did you act really bummed out? Like, oh, dude, oh, yeah, come all the way to yeah. Japan. Can't like, really? Fight mobsters really? To fight. No one to fight? Gosh <laughs> darn it to heck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> do you think he would do that at most? Like, if he had a fight in Russia, would he want to go like, hey, let's find some Russian mobsters and, and start a fight? Or is it just like, a, it's Japan. Maybe they, you know, you got to bank on that honorable thing. And hope that they don't bring a knife. <laughs> that martial arts tradition that these people supposedly have based on our <sighs> kung fu movies. I really would have <laughs> fought. I, if they had an appropriate opponent for me, like, all right, this guy, he's like, whatever, 18 or something. You know, he's not some, like, I would have been like, all right, I'll take my chances. You know, I wouldn't go first. I would go I first. Imagine you know? that Yakuza, like, literally the guys responsible for organized crime and drug trafficking, weapon trafficking in, in China, like the biggest criminals, are, are sitting around like, 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 how much heroin did you move in? 60 kilos. Good. Oh, by the way, Joe Lozon wants to rumble. Should we go? Mm, I don't yes. know. Maybe. Like, it just seems so <laughs> they, they made it sound like they did a fight club, like, twice a week. And it, it was just oh, yeah. the wrong night. Uh, maybe they organize a fight club. That makes more sense, right? Like, that, that some organized criminals are organizing a fight club so that they can profit off the betting or, or something like you. that. Yeah. I don't know. Enough. That's my Yakuza story. I didn't fight. No one did. Yeah. Lord forbid one of you guys take one of them down and he loses his face in front of his friends. Yeah, that would be great. Then, right? then, then the shirt yeah. can start flying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just, like, you're just standing there watching Kyle and suddenly you get that ridiculous 80s movies kung fu look of... <gasps> and then your head just falls off. Like, because you got fucking... Nice and clean-like. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't want any part of that either. Um, honestly, I think I would like to go to Amsterdam because I'd like to see all the like prostitutes and the naked ladies in the windows and, and see all the crazy drug use and stuff and see what that's like. Um, I, and, and I've seen pictures of the place and it's absolutely beautiful. I think, the, I think Amsterdam would be fun. Um, I've always wanted to see Australia, um, but there's too much shit there that wants to bite you, so I'll just skip out on that one. <laughs> just too much poisonous shit there. They, need, they, they really need a can of Raid down there. Uh, below the uh, in the southern hemisphere, I don't know what the fuck their problem is. It's an island. Why can't they exterminate some of that awful shit they've got on it? Kill it all. Yeah, there's some animals that like are just Time so horrible. Can't we just capture like three or four and then get rid of the rest? Like, <laughs> you know? it would, be, would it be bad to do genocide on wasps? Because they're be like down for that. useless creature on the planet. Yeah. It's... Be... What do they do? Like, what's their benefit? Do they do anything other than uh, annoy you? Kill spiders and stuff. Pollinate or anything. They don't pollinate. They they eat meat. Wasps eat meat. They're they're winged ants basically, and you know especially the ones that make those uh you know the honeycomb looking nests out of chewed up wood pulp. We I don't know what the different kinds are called, but we got like five different kinds here. Some look like yellow jackets. Some are red. Some are some are uh, bright red. Isn't there a zombie wasp that goes inside of dead prey's bodies and animates them? Um, so there's, like there definitely That's are parasitic, cool. uh, uh, like like insects that do that. Um, I know that there's this one kind of wasp. We call them dirt da- daubers. I don't know what the they're actually called, but they're black, and they captured small spiders and sting them and paralyze them and then entomb them inside these uh, inside their nest and leave them there for their larvae to eat alive. Um, and it's so those things are pretty awful. Whenever you break apart their nests. You can see like tons and tons of little bitty baby spiders in there, just like <laughs> let me out. Like they have to see <laughs> oh, or whatever. Straight from the fly. They're just waiting on the next maggot to come along and liquefy their eyeballs or whatever <laughs> happens to them. It's it's it, it, being a human being is so fucking nice, man. Until like, Ant like, Man could be a real horror movie. Ah, oh, existence yeah. could be a real horror movie. You know, if we were anything but us, anything yeah. but us, and life is fucking not even one percent as good. Yeah. Uh, like, like maybe a dog, maybe a, like being a dog. I think is the next best thing to being a human. Cause in North like, America, in North America, for sure. You go over to Vietnam or Korea or something yeah, like that. Me. They'll be chowing down on your ass. But over here, I think dog is is the best. I bet being uh being a cow in India is a pretty good animal existence. Yeah, because they're not. They like they. If you're like in the middle of the road, they think that you have like a spirit of their ancestor in it or something, and so they won't run you they'll over. Drive around. They'll kill a. They'll drive over a dog instead of driving over hitting a cow. Yeah, which is just crazy. Like take one look at a dog and one at a cow. One's a lot of fun. The other one's just food. Um, well, depends where you come from, right? It's all in perspective, I suppose. I think if you're ISIS, cows are a lot of fun. Goats. <laughs> goats. <laughs> yeah, goats. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, really, anything but us in the animal kingdom would suck to be. Even the next echelon. Harambi got killed just because there was a bad parent nearby. Yeah, it's true. You know? That's yeah, all that's that true. I wish that yeah. meme would die just like that gorilla did. It's uh, it's just silly. And yeah, like um, I don't care about the gorilla. I don't care about the meme. Um, you know, and, and do it as long as you want. But it just did you see the silly. recent story on that? Yeah. I think that they had to close down all their... People are crazy. What's with the internet, man? I don't get it. Ah, uh, the internet's wonderful. You, but when you try to silence it or try to gag it, it really hates that and it spits it up immediately and gives you twice what you had before. Yeah. Yeah. If Tell they everyone a little bit about stop. movement watches. Oh, go ahead. The past few months, we've been working a lot with movement watches. We love them. You guys love them, so I asked myself, why do I only have one? You see, Movement offers different color bands, different faces, and different styles for each of their watches. Movement watches start at just $95. Do some quick math. You could have a couple of Movement watches, and it would still be a better deal than having just one department store watch. Get a blue one, a white one, maybe sandstone is your thing. Whatever your style, Movement has watches and bands to match for every outfit in your arsenal. There's no hassles. Just order online with free shipping, free returns, and a 24-month warranty. So join their more than 1 million social media followers and get a movement watch today. That's mvmtwatches.com slash pka, and they'll give you 15% off your entire purchase. That's mvmtwatches.com slash pka. I have two of them. Check them all. You should, too. I I'm also looking up their site now because I need a new watch. They're good-looking good looking watches. They're heavy. Like, they, they, like, by Jurassic Park standards, they're expensive, but they're not. Do you know if any of our waterproof? <laughs> I don't um, know, actually. I'm sure some of them are. 
<laughs> you have mean, to check them out. I'll take, I a look, sure. I'll take a proper look. I wouldn't go swimming or anything, but you know. <laughs> the ones I looked <laughs> yeah. at were more in the dress. If anything, because the quality, they're so heavy, it would just weigh you down. In the- <laughs> <laughs> You'd there never you make it. Alrighty then. There you go. Um, me, and, uh, me and Taylor and Chiz finally played our first game of Civilization uh, last night. What did you think of it, Taylor? Because I, I didn't even ask you. We got off so late. What were your impressions of playing uh, What Civ? times did you play? So we played from we played for about four hours. We finished at like two in the morning. Uh, didn't even finish. We just quit out of the game because it was nowhere fucking near over. It was getting close. We had we had we had we. It was clear that we were going to be the winners and. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't doing bad. I was doing pretty well, actually. Just based on like the score that doesn't matter on the side, I was winning. But that could change at any point, like wildly. But it's so. It reminds me a lot of Settlers of Catan, uh, the board game, because it's got that same hex, uh, hexagon layout, and it's just like a wildly more complicated Settlers of Catan. I, I liked it. It's just it takes so fucking long to do anything. Like, to get, like, oh, do you want this building? Well, it's going to take you 14 turns. And if you get upgrades, it'll only take 10. And that's still, like, a lot of time, I feel. But for the most part, um, I liked it. It's a lot of strategy. Once you get, like, a few cities placed, you find yourself, like, you know, really trying to connect your roads and get, like, a cohesive empire going. And maybe you start thinking about defenses and walls. And, and I liked uh, do like, – Chiz got frustrated at me because apparently I was wonder whoring, which I didn't know was a, a bad thing to do. Because, like, every time I would go to a, a city, it would show, like, the wonders you could build. And I'm like, oh, I want some hanging gardens. That will give me a lot of this. And so I was doing that. And Chiz, I guess, was running a strategy where there's – what was it? You explained Petra. it, Kyle. Yeah, there's only one that could be built in the world, and, and you built Chiz's Petra. He got very bent out of shape about that. He did. Um, he, and he would have just said, because I, I bought it, and he goes, oh, oh, you, have to, you bought Petra? God damn it. Like, I've been working towards this for so long. And I was, if he just would have said, hey, I, I, don't, I know you don't know this, but I was really, that's part of my strategy. Could you pick something else? I would have been like, oh, okay, my bad. I don't know how to play this, so I picked what sounded <laughs> best. But because he got frustrated, I did not, and I kept no. it. You just yeah. kept it. That was funny. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Up that. I thought you did really well for your first game, um, and and you figured things up out really fast. Like it, like you said, you were winning in the score, so, and 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 that does the, mean um, something, I guess. This, uh, people in history. The I, score is greatly smile. influenced by wonders. It's like a, some of the things. How many cities you have, and how many wonders you have, play a big role into that score. So. Yeah, I, got, I had quite a few wonders, and my happiness was off like the charts. Like I had like thirty. Oh. Smiley faces. Everybody was. They, they were loving me. It was just a, like a, a consistent golden age. How many for that cities little, like, did you have? Uh, three. Huh. Well, you. It's pretty good. Who did you? Yeah, we had as? a good time. I thought you played really well. Um, and, and I love that game. I. You're right. It does take a long time. One thing that you should keep in mind is we had the turn timer turned off, which gives you an infinite amount of time between turns. Normally, it's like, oh, oh, hurry up, get your turn ended, and it it flows much faster. Yeah, one thing that I'm confused about is figuring out when I'm supposed to start building military units because I tried playing on my own and I built, I think, too many military units too fast because, like, little notifications are popping up like, we're undefended, we're undefended! And I guess that was just the computer trying to, you know, trick me into making something I didn't need, which I did. But I also, like, last night, I feel like the only reason that I didn't get shit on was because you and chiz were keeping an oppressing like force on them for part of the time like they unless they just didn't attack me at all because that's it what was like going on like, so it, it's a trial it's a trial and error thing but on the higher difficulty the higher the difficulty the more mean the ai is we were playing on king which is like average and they kind of they try to expand but they won't attack you unless you get in their way or un- until like later in the game when they have a, 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 a big advantage and they want to or they or when they want to expand more so it was going to be a while before they actually came and bugged you. But if we played on the harder dif- difficulties, immediately out of the gate, they'd be threatening you, telling you not to settle near them. If you did, they'd start... You would see them, like, all of a sudden they got three units, and then four, and then five. And now there's five headed your way. And you're like, oh, what are they doing? Maybe they're just uh, passing through. And the next thing you know, they're, just, they're destroying you. Um, but I don't build any military units um, for the most part until, like, I'm ready to attack. And that's... That's a risky strategy because if they attack you, you're kind of left defenseless. But it it pl- it works really well because most human players won't attack early because it it cripples you and the guy oh, you attack. How do you, how do you destroy? Because I was trying to play and I got a 
I unlocked the trebuchets, like the really good uh, catapult. I don't know if they're really good. They were the best thing I had. They were pretty good catapults, and I, I would get the city down to like where it said zero health. Like if yeah. I was destroying, you've you got know, to send a melee unit in to yeah. actually capture the city, like a um, uh, a swordsman or a musketman or a horseman or a knight. He's got to go in there and actually ride into the city and yeah. So take the range it. units like sort of batter the city and make it easy, and then you can send any like soldier in there and he'll take it over. Okay. Yeah. And so like one of them, uh, the game that I saved single player just on like next to easy uh, mode, I conquered Vancouver. And made it part of my the Babylonian Empire. Uh, I annexed it, which it said would make people very unhappy, but they didn't get that unhappy. I built them a circus, and they were fine. Uh, th is that like a bad move, annexing or? Well, it, usually I don't take the city states because they're better as allies than they are just taking one of their cities from them and, and making it your own. You're usually better building your own cities, but. It, it's really situational. If you can afford the happiness, it's better. It's better to annex them because then you have full control over what's built in that city, um, and it's it's just like any of your other cities. But if you puppet them, then they give you their resources, but they're controlled by AI. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, really it's I, just happiness. If you if you have a lot of happiness, may as well annex it and then take over their means totally. of production. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can raise it to the ground if it's a shitty city. Like if like if some dumb human player built built a city in a dumb place, you can just be like, "Fuck this, burn the city down," and it'll just burn away. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to playing some like this weekend. I, yeah, I'm uh, down to play more this weekend. Like as long as as long if we could like get a game like like a five hour game, like a real quick one. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because um, this like I, it, this game takes so long because it's so complicated and it was I, I was like barely talking at all during the call. It was like a four hour call and I bet I said five sentences the whole time that weren't questions just because I was trying to figure out like okay I got my research I got a good hold on this and then Kyle would be like oh you also can't forget that uh, your team of whittlers back at your base are making spears so you need to turn those off because you're no longer in the bronze age also remember to research uh, currency because otherwise you'll just be bartering with loaves of bread with other cities or whatever it is <laughs> and it's just it's so much to keep track of yeah, I, that's why I like it. I like the investment that it takes to 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 to, to play. I, I like that, um, and then I like beating people. I, I love beating people in that game. It's great. So yeah, this weekend I think we'll make. Uh, I'm gonna make a video of it of some kind. I might record our whole play session and then edit down to like 20 minutes or something. But uh, I, I, we'll do a gaming video this weekend of some kind. I think that'll be fun. Makes yeah, me, that will makes me miss Command and Conquer. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll that, that, that sounds. Minute. Yeah, we've played a little bit of Command and Conquer. We we we've played a lot of RTS over the last year, year and a half, or something like that. I used to play nothing but FPS, you know, Call of Duty and Battlefield and stuff like that, mainly Call of Duty. Um, but le recently, it's I've play, been playing mostly on my PC and mostly R RTS and uh, strategy games in general. I'm, I've really enjoyed those. I wonder. I think because about it's the more RTS. Relaxing. I can't. I want to play it, but with kids and everything like that, it's hard to sit down and play straight through. You know what I mean? Like I. I First person shooters are good if I can if I get a fifteen half an hour hour to myself, I can play some battlefield or maybe even the division or something like that, and then get up and leave. But to invest that time into an RTS is hard right now. I wonder if we asked like, our uh, viewers if they're still into games. Like I, I like I, I think almost everyone who starts on Painkiller already was into games when they first started. I wonder how many of them are still like, oh yeah, you know, I'm I'm just as passionate as I was or like. I bet a ton of them. Yeah, I bet there's a ton of them that still really are just as into gaming as they were. Maybe just different games. Yeah, I wonder. Like, is it different games or out of games or? Because uh, I, I bet it's different games. I bet they're not all into COD like they used to be. But yeah. uh, did they did they migrate from? And in our, how's how are they on the hardcore level, right? Because I bet a lot of them were hardcore when they started on Painkiller already. Have they moved to filthy casual? Have they moved to ooh, less gaming in general? Uh, I wonder where they are. We should Sometimes make it's probably something like that. Yeah, let us know in the comment box. Like, what are you playing right now? What what games did you start with? Did, was were you, did you used to be a COD fan? Did you used to be Battlefield? And now you're playing a lot of uh, Stratego or something something lame like that. Or like, what's what's no been Man's your trans guy or just oh, real, don't real even. What is that? I've heard bad no things about it. Here's um, so I, no I haven't. Oh, go ahead. Maybe you know better than me, Kyle. So No Man's Sky was promised to be this this 
the, the biggest open world that there can be. It's like the entire universe with a quadrillion stars with planet systems around them that you can actually visit in your starship. And the idea was that no two players will ever even meet each other because the universe is so vast and we're all just exploring. And uh, in, in these previews, you see these lush planets you land on with fucking dinosaurs. It looks like that scene in Jurassic Park when the dinos are first revealed. No, 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 no. And everybody's yeah. all blown away. It's like that. And then the game launches and it's full of, of just little issues that ruin the experience. It's repetitive, repetitive it's monotonous. No, I don't think anybody's found any dinosaurs. And one thing that really bugs people is in this vast universe, there's only like 150,000 players initially, two of them found each other. And, but, but they can't communicate or do anything with each other because the game's not written that way. And, and that really upset everybody. They're like, they're like, look, we made the impossible happen. We found each other in the vast universe. And you're telling me that we can't communicate or, or, or like do anything with each other? And those are just a couple of little problems that, that have led like, uh, a lot of backlash for that. They game. couldn't even see each other, and they were in the Can't same spot. Yeah. Uh, so the yeah. world is procedurally generated, right? Which, like, a, a world that's, like, regular generated would be, like, Call of Duty or even Grand Theft Auto. Um, Minecraft is procedurally generated. There's just different biomes, and it goes, and it's gigantic. So this is a universe that's, like, as big as a real universe. And uh, people just find that, like, for a game that encourages you to explore, there's nothing to find. Um I guess you're supposed to go to the middle of the universe, and they, they say it's unfinished. It didn't live up to the trailer. It's Sixty dollars. It's a triple A title, supposedly. Like like this isn't like my VR stuff. There will be games that, the way we just described No Man's Land, many of those things will be true for some of my VR games. But I, some of those games are eight dollars. Some are three dollars. Some are five dollars. So you play it, and you're like, okay, you get an hour into it, two hours into it. Maybe you play it a second time. But you're not coming back to it a third time, and you don't even mind because it was four dollars or eight dollars or something. This game is sixty fucking dollars. Wow. What are you supposed to do in the game, though? Like, what? I, I know it's, it's a bunch of planets. Like, you just fly around and and look at things. So there's an aspect of of improving your ship and your loadout and its slots and stuff. So that that's part of it. But I, I think it's mainly exploration. Um, I, I haven't been totally plugged into the thing, but I've definitely had my finger on the pulse of the backlash. That's been interesting. And and what was there's so much backlash now against it, and it's funny because prior to the game's release, there were so, so many people who were praising it and, and were so excited for it. Um, it, 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 was, it was pretty big on Reddit with people just, oh, this is going to be amazing. When we can, we'll be, you know, the developers are promising this. The developers are promising that. He was and, playing live on talk shows and stuff, too. Yeah. And, and I've, see, I've seen pictures of that guy, like a GIF of that developer guy who was making all the promises, and he's like... <laughs> driving away in like a fake flying machine with bundles of money <laughs> or something like that like getting away <laughs> uh, it, it seems like and I think he's all but prior to the game's release he was like you pay $60 for No Man's Land and then all the DLC from there for it is yours for free and now he's like well maybe we'll charge for some stuff you know he's really cashing in um, 60 bucks times a couple hundred thousand sales that's quite a bit of money and I that's a retirement it, yeah yeah, and I don't think the game. It doesn't seem the game. It doesn't seem like the game costs that much to make based on uh, the, the the players' experiences in the game. But I haven't played it. I've been stuck playing the VR stuff a lot and trying to man my way through um, raw data, which still horrifies me. I uh, I let a girl play the other day, and she just threw. She was like, Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> uh, you didn't tell me they were just going to be coming at me like that. I thought that guy was on me. Like that's fucked. Like, it's it's. <laughs> that, that's what I'm doing now. Hey, you want to hear something cool? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm being put in a video game. Are you? Which one? Yeah, Greg Hastings Paintball uh, 3. They just finished rendering my whole body, my gear and everything, and you can play as Wolf in the video game. So, I, nice. And you can... They, they took a whole bunch of my voice samples and all this stuff, and I, you know, I'm going to be yelling at people online to move up and stuff and teach them how to play and shoot and all that stuff, so... I think it's, I'm doing that too. They uh, cool. they took a bunch of pictures of me. I think I'm supposed to do some voice work. Um, they they went on and on about it, but I haven't heard anything lately. Oh, for Greg's game? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's yeah, that's gonna be cool. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm excited about it. Like I've seen some. I saw myself rendered, and cool. um, I looked a little chubby. I wasn't happy about it, <laughs> but <laughs> it's did kind you of exciting. Uh, like what what is your special ability like as a character? Like do you know like what your perk is? Well, My guy gonna... sneaks in a 9mm in case things get a little rough. <laughs> that would be interesting. Well, the, uh, I, I can't say too much, but it's 
Yeah, it's going to involve like my my box mag and having extra ammo and being able to uh, move on woods ball fields a little and like hide with camo and stuff. It's supposed to be pretty cool. So it's you a sound lot OP. Of, nice. It's a, it's a lot of work that goes into these games, man. Like, oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, it, it's cool because I remember playing that game on Xbox, not Xbox One, but the first generation the old of one. Xbox. Yeah, I remember yeah. like I would go to my cousin's house and we'd rent video games and we rented Greg Hastings Paintball and I just remember playing that game and, and, and really enjoying it because um, we loved Paintball any, anyway. We played every video game that rental store had. Um, yeah, but it, it's I'm very honored and it's like, you know, it's supposed to be coming out 2017 hopefully, so we'll see. It's, you know, yeah. They was, asked me to, had to turn them down prior conflicts. You know? Well, oh, you they know, were like, begging me. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got a lot of yard to mow. I just, I just can't make it into your video game. <laughs> <laughs> My special ability is you wear shorts and a t-shirt and you overheat and then give up. <laughs> <laughs> that could be me too. <laughs> yeah, you, have to, you have to keep my morale up. Otherwise, I, I run back to the safety room with the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were that talking safety about room me. With snacks is a real godsend. Like, like <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. If we hadn't had that room with all the, you know, the ice down drinks and the and, and the AC wasn't that great, but it was better than being outside. Green mm-hmm. mm-hmm. room, yeah. Those fans were melting out there. Yeah, yeah, but nice. If you want to make Kitty that. angry, just take half a water bottle, drink it, and then leave it around. Oh. And then repeat the process fifty times. <laughs> She'll flip out. <laughs> There were so many wounded soldiers sitting around that room. Just, you know, three ounces left in the bottle, you know, half a can of soda. But you get in that mindset, you know, like, it, like it's kind of like when you go to a party or something and, you know, there's like unlimited drinks. You're way more likely to like pick up a beer or a soda, I want a fresh drink one. like two drinks, put it down. And then 10 minutes later, you're like, oh, I'm not going to drink that one. It's been sitting here for 10 minutes. And then you just go grab another cold. one. Like, you remember in National Lampoon's vacation, Cousin Eddie's like, He's drinking a Miller Lite, and he's got another one, like, hanging from the six-pack. Yeah. He's, he's like, you want a cold beer, Clark? And he's like, sure, Eddie. And he hands him the one he's been drinking and cracks himself <laughs> a fresh one. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh. oh. He looks at that, like, warm, dr- half-drunk beer, like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <sighs> Classic movie. Have you seen the remake? Anyone seen a remake of that? I didn't want to see I it. I, I really liked the the original a lot, um, yeah, but uh, no, I didn't watch the new one. I, I don't really like any of those actors enough to go pay for their movie. Ties into uh, this AMA mystery. question. What's the best sequel ever? Godfather hey, 2. Aliens. Oh, oh, you guys came up with great ones. Two but, Towers. No, Return of the King. That's a sequel, right? Yes. I guess trequel. I don't, I don't know. know if they, uh, If it doesn't, then a two sequel is a continuation of a story and uh, another volume continue continuing a yeah, story. Yeah. So. Okay, then Return of the King would be my answer. Well, I like Aliens too. That's an inc- <clears throat> an incredible choice. I yeah. had Matrix two, <laughs> but your <laughs> answers were also that's, so, that's the wor- that's a horrible. <laughs> wow, answer. that's Yours just, so uh, much better than mine. Good answer. Okay, so wait. Hated that. I got I think. like Matrix two. <laughs> so I'm not terrible. one of those guys. But. So Was look, that the one I watched two Matrix. albino dreadlocked guys. <laughs> yes, and that CGI scene where he fights like all those Agent <clears throat> Smiths, and he's Listen, basically like an Xbox 360 cartoon character spinning well, around. When it came out, it looked cool. All right, it did. I oh, watched when it Matrix. Came out, when it came out, it looked cool. And I thought when it, it came was out, good. I was 16 years old, and mm-hmm. I still remember sitting in that theater like this. My date's next to me, and I'm just like, <laughs> like staring, <laughs> staring at the screen because I couldn't believe the special effects. But yeah. I thought but Matrix aliens. was good. And then I read the analysis on it and all this like deep, super like prediction and ties into the Bible and who knows what. And then I thought it was great. I appreciated it on a level that I didn't know was possible. <laughs> and then Matrix 2 came out. I thought it was really good. And then I read the analysis on that, and it was like, oh, my God, we live in a time of amazing movies. Like, like, th- like this is better than movies that have ever been made in the history of, of storytelling. And then Matrix 3 came out and validated all that cool off-screen shit that I saw and made all three of them not as good as they used to be. That's that was my Matrix experience. I messed it up for you. The second one's shit, too. I watched it the other day. Did you? I, yeah, I, I, I got to say. enjoy it. It, it, I still enjoy it, but it, it's just – it's not in the same class as the first one. It doesn't have the same tone, the same feel. Um, the, the stakes aren't as high. I'm, all of a sudden, Neo is Superman. You, you know, know what I watched recently? Top Gun. Top Gun. I was in, 
it, it got in my head because we were talking about bad paramotor landings. And uh, my friend Brad, if you guys know him from the vlogs, he described like I was coming in like cougar into the into the you know, you know at the beginning when cougars yeah. all like wobbly and everything. When he got shake got shaken up. Yeah, he got shaken up because he had an, uh, an encounter with the MIGs, and I was like, oh, and I saw it, and I'm like, I'm gonna watch Top Gun. I haven't seen that forever. Oh my god, I never watched it as like a gay man's fantasy until this viewing. Like it, when Val Kilmer does that. Yeah, Val Kilmer does the bite thing. There's the 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 volleyball scene is just sweaty men posing a lot. Grr. It's just like the volleyball <laughs> scene like, in Leap the Weapon Six in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where they literally had those gay guys playing volleyball and being all sweaty. <laughs> Dude, they're oiled up. They're oiled they're up oiled playing up. volleyball and and you know the, like I don't know the just flight a couple suits. Of guys palling around. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Top Gun is such <laughs> a gay friendly blood, movie. Yeah. Oh, I don't play recreational sports. I'll lube up with my friends. Get you on your pillar. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I've never done anything that wasn't sexual that required like oiling up, right? Like, yeah. like, like I, maybe I'm alone in this. Maybe like if you're a wrestler, like oiling up is real important. And and, and I, I guess I'm a professional wrestler. Or maybe if you're fucking uh, George uh, uh, GSP, you know, maybe right, maybe, right. Maybe yeah, oiling you have up to fight is PJ Penn. <laughs> oh, it's time to fight. Better oil up. Yeah, yeah, get it in deep. But uh, I've never oiled up for anything. Uh, I would feel a little <laughs> weird getting oiled up. I think if you get oiled up and you're massage. out of shape, it's, it's just ten times worse. Have you ever had up a, a, a real thing. masseuse? Like, like a everybody's massage? like, oh, people look so sexy when they're oiled up. And like hot women and like muscled up guys, of course you look better when you're oiled up. You ever see a fat per person oiled up? Look like they're ready a for, sexy for person baking. Is oiled up. A fat person is greasy. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what it is. Like you never see a big fat guy like on the beach, like in the in his speedo that he's way too proud to be wearing, and walking around being like, "Man, that's a real competent guy." You think like, "God, that's just that's honestly inconsiderate." Like you're on you're in my line of view, and I'm at the beach. Like, come on, I wouldn't do that to you. Bro, there's no they're all speedos. Would you go to a nude beach or a, or, a, or a nude resort or anything like that? I, I yeah, know. Yeah, sure. But, I definitely would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, are you allowed? I don't. The thing about nude beaches is just the sand. Like, I feel like it's you wouldn't be able to fully enjoy yourself because you're just always going to be worried. Like, it's so unpleasant when you get sand everywhere. When you're wearing a swimsuit, it has to be a million times worse with no barrier. Uh, I know? disagree. I, I, I kind of feel it's like it's not like you're in Navy Seal Buds training where you have to roll around in the sand on purpose. You go in the water, you walk out, you go on your towel. If like, you're naked, easy come, easy go, right? Like it's really the swimsuit, the especially if you're up. one of those faggot children who doesn't know any better, and you've got the liner in there. You're a tourist, bitch. If you got the liner, all that thing does is hold sand, right? People who live I at the beach, cut those out. yeah, cut them out or buy board shorts like you're supposed to, and and then you don't have that problem at all. But I like pockets. <laughs> Board shorts have pockets. No, like shorts have pockets. My, my oh, shorts come with but, pockets I mean, and with wax combs in them. Wolf is yeah, yeah. My, the beach the I, way I that like, like, adults go to the my, beach. I, threw the, I tore that wax comb right out. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to let somebody see me with my wax comb and be like, oh, boy, you skimboard too, bro. And I'm just like, skimboarding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I do. No, oh, shoot. Hold shorts on. shorts on vacation. These mean nothing. <laughs> I thought of another one. I thought of another Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, God, you guys are so much better at this than I am. <laughs> I, I don't like Star Wars. Matrix. You don't um, like Star Wars, really? No, I, I don't like. Any, I like the new Star Wars, but everything else that's ever been made is is kind of a subpar movie, if you ask me. Um, they're they're so slow and poorly made. I mean, it's a, it's a low budget movie that just happened to catch on in the seventies. That's all Star Wars is. Good yeah. story. Well, Terribly insult a lot of nerds out. There. The Batman's oh, are very good. Oh, There's kind of sequels. I, I don't care. Avengers. What's very good? The Batman movies, like since the reboot, all the Christian the Nolan Bale. ones are amazing. The Nolan ones are amazing. I even like the Man Affleck one. I'm going backwards on the Nolan ones. Um, really? Go back and watch a fight scene in in one of those movies and tell me it's not retardedly lame. Jump cuts, it's, my right? Scenes aren't good, but the acting is it Heath Ledger as Joker? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's ah. yeah, dude. That's Christian Bale. I mean, um, no, who, who's the guy with the? He talk, talks like he's in a coffee cup. Bane. Bane was good. Oh, he was yeah, awesome. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy was amazing. I didn't. Yeah, I yeah. like him as an actor a lot. That character was great. Like I said, the Nolan, I, they were really good that way. 
Yeah. I mean, the first Batman was awesome, but then they got really corny after the first. To me, what's great about the Nolan Batmans is all the IMAX camera work he does, all those gimbals and those car, those uh, high-speed chases and stuff. I, I think that's what separated him from some of the other Batmans. And Christian Bale does a good job. He doesn't do a great job, but he does a good job and a convincing job as Batman. I didn't mind his silly voice either, um, but there were some holes in the Nolan Batmans I don't care for. Um, yeah, but I, the, 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 the Nolan movies, Batman was what he was supposed to be, which is a dark knight. You know what I mean? The other movies, except for the one with um, Joker with Jack Nicholson, those they got corny. They got like the old 60s TV show. The Nolan ones got dark and it was like they were intense. And one of the best lines I remember from the first one was when uh, uh, Bruce was being trained and um, the, his trainer, I can't remember his name. Liam now. Neeson. Yeah. Liam Neeson. And Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul wants to get to Bruce, and he goes, um, you did not fail your parents, Bruce. Your father failed. And I was mm. like, wow, bro, you just hit him. Like, that was, like, deep. That was, like, gave me goosebumps when I saw him. Yeah, game. that was the fight on the icy lake. Or on the like. ice, yeah. And that's just before he fell. That, he wanted to get him mad. And I was like, boom, we just hit him right in the fields. And, like, that, the Nolan movies just just hit it for me. I like the I like the um I like the new uh I like the newest version of Batman. I, I really ben do. Affleck I, I like Ben Affleck Batman. Uh, I think if you go and if you watch that fight that he has when he's saving Superman's mother, that was um, well done. That is how I want Superman to fight. When he hits someone, he clobbers them. His is the, Christian mean. Bale. Christian Bale would have to like boom 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 like like hit you five times to really incapacitate you. Yeah. Ben Affleck comes in there and you're lucky if all he does is knock you unconscious. He might shoot his bat gun thing yeah. through your flesh and then swing you over his shoulder into another like through a window or something. He kills he's, like multiple people in that movie beating them to death. He's also a bigger bru- he's also a bigger Batman. I, the, and in his in his suit looks more like the original suit. You know, there's been lots of writers for for Batman, but I like that one best. That hardcore, I, I you know, the old grizzled Batman. I don't need to see him like jumping rope and Going like out with puffing and puffing. Yeah, I don't I don't care about any of that shit. I don't I don't care about Bruce Wayne, and that's Nolan's problem. He kept making these these Bruce Wayne movies. I want Batman. Batman is a tortured guy who is a fucking broken. He's he doesn't work. He doesn't work in normal society. The only time that he's who he wants to be and he feels right is when he's out beating criminals senseless. And the beating should be like Oz. They should be brutal and gory like they are in real life. This is a guy who does nothing 24-7 but invest billions of dollars and all of his time, energy, and effort into being a badass, ass-whooping machine who fights crime and is merciless yeah. toward criminals because they murdered his family and ruined his city. Of course Batman he's going to be Batman throws a few like, public rapes around of criminals and... Crime is going to plummet. You know what hero Gotham threw a City. public... Like, you, you want to talk about public rapes from heroes in movies. He, I, I watched... Um, a, a Clint Eastwood discussion right yes, there. Yes, now right? I do want to. <laughs> where is this headed? So, so I watched a Clint Eastwood movie the other day. It's, um, it's the one where... It's one of the Man With No Name movies. It's where he, he rides into the town where they had whipped his brother to death, who was the former sheriff, and uh, he kind of takes over the town. They, there are some guys coming. Uh, there are bad guys coming back to the town, and he's going to defend the town from them. Um, and he, as soon as he gets into town, this woman kind of like clearly is like into him a little bit, but the way that she flirts with him is by walking into his path and, and like literally running into him. And she's like, watch where you're going with that stinky cigar and your foul mood, you ignorant wretch. Or whatever, and he's like, "If you wanted to get acquainted, all you had to do was say so." And she's like, <laughs> "Acquainted," and like she insults him some other way, and he's just like, "Someone needs to teach you some manners." So he drags her into a barn and rapes her. Did like, she right learn her lesson? The of the- no, I was going to Yeah, he learned her, but good. <laughs> and that's not the only <laughs> one. Later on, he fucks the hotel owner's wife. Fucks her too. And, uh, but he honey dicks her. The first one that he rapes, is that the end of their relationship, or do they eventually get along? Oh, they, they, oh, they, they don't get along. Like, like there's just, he just rapes her, and then everybody, and she's she's looking around like nobody's gonna do anything, and everybody's just like, eh. <laughs> that's it. Well, I don't want to get raped either. You know, you, <laughs> you were a little mouthy. <laughs> you were a little mouthy, and she <laughs> was. But yeah, he just take there like right at the beginning of this Clint Eastwood movie. You know, he kills three guys, and then he takes this woman to a barn and rapes her, and then he goes and takes a nap. That's how the movie and what's starts. What's Man with No Name? I'll find it. Um, 
See, that's why, but that's the thing is, because when you, you threw me off earlier when you said you don't like slow moving movies. And those old school, me? yeah, you said when you were talking like about Star Wars and stuff. Oh, Star Wars is bad for like eight. Star Wars has oh, all okay, kinds right. of things wrong. The, the slowness of it is, it, is, is just what makes it intolerable. I could sit through a bad movie if it oh, was I fast paced, but Star it's called High Plains Drifter. That's the name of that movie. High that's Plains what it was. Drifter. I, I love it. I now. love I love Clint's movies. You should also see uh, Outlaw Josie Wales too. That's his. That's that's my yeah. favorite of his westerns. Um, I also yeah. like um, Unforgiven. The Unforgiven is is Newer so one, fucking yeah. good. What's yeah. the newest? He bought movie the rights made? to that. Um, Gran is Torino. It Gran Tur- still. Jesus, that was a good movie though. Yeah, he's old as right. fuck, man. He should be, should probably tone it down with the movie what, stuff. What about Gran Torino? Uh, is that uh, his that's his latest movie? movie, right? I think it is. I don't think he's made what anything since Grand Torino. Didn't uh, Billion Dollar Baby come out after that? Before. Or, oh, okay. Then maybe it was Grand Torino. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's done. His son's coming up, though. His son looks just like him. That's I, I like that. He's even got the hair. like like. He got the whole thing. Yeah. He's not freaking banging up, yeah. those the rest of his life. What's Trouble with the Curve? <laughs> Do you guys know this movie? Baseball ah, movie. yeah. So that's that's a baseball movie where his yeah. daughter do- has his daughter into it. Yeah, that, you're right. That that is his most recent one. Well, I'm cheating. I'm on IMDb. Don't get don't get it all tri- <laughs> twisted. Watch, uh, 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 the good, the bad, and the ugly. The whole yeah. thing. You need to watch uh, Fistful of Dollars. Like his old school westerns are what made men want to be men. Old school type. Oh of stuff. man, like, I can quote the Unforgiven. So so like so many scenes. Out. What, isn't there a popular western either out or about to come out? Yeah, Mag- uh, Magnificent Seven with um, uh, Denzel Washington, the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, and a few others. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to be good. Have you seen the uh, original Magnificent Seven? Oh, heck yeah. That's that was a, a good movie. What was, uh, and then Seven Samurai is what that was based on, and that's yeah. a really good movie, too. Akira Kurosawa. That's what all of those are based on. Uh, it comes guys. out it's... September 23rd. I just looked it up. So I'm it's not out buff, yet. So I'm weird about Seven Samurai was one of those movies I watched in like a film, like throwaway bullshit class. Dude, and I still was, have it on VHS. Yeah, it, it was good. Like it was, it it's from two. like uh, the '40s or something, maybe even earlier than that. And so, of course, being like 15 when I watched, I'm like, this is gonna be such bullshit. Just like every movie from that time, where there's just bad acting, and you can tell everybody just doesn't really know what they're doing. But no, it's it was actually compelling and really good. And Akira, if you guys haven't seen that, you'll feel more cultured afterward. Seven Samurai by it's beautiful, yeah, you know, whatever the guy's name is. Akira Kurosawa, and it takes up two VH, VHS tapes, and it, at the end of the first tape it says intermission. Then you got to put in the second tape. Yeah, <laughs> it's what, a yeah. long. Yeah. Yeah. Is what's the movie? It takes place in World War Two. The actor from Lost Boys' dad is in it. They drive a tank. Oh, Donald Sutherland. In yeah, and after to find the gold. Mm-hmm. Um. Jesus, the Dirty Dozen. I thought it was that. I should have just said it. Dirty Dirty Dozen. It's a classic. That movie, was a bro. great movie. My, I watched it with my father, and I thought, like every other stupid old movie, I would just hate it. I loved it. I was totally sucked in. I wonder if I'd still like it today. You want to go? You want to see a cool movie? It's not old like that. Uh, you got to see the old Chow Yun Fat movies, like Hard Boiled, and it's he's the guy who created. <laughs> Holding two pistols and shooting at the same time in a movie. And go and see any Chow Yun Fat movie from like the, the 70s and 80s. They're the most brutal uh, shooter up movies that you will ever experience. And they're and they're good storylines. There's one called Bed of Tomorrow and, and uh, Hard Boiled. And like there's this classic scene. He's in a restaurant and he's on the banister and he's going down the banister shooting two revolvers like this. Killing off Triad. And it's like, <laughs> the the most amazing movies you will ever experience is his old school. That's like, Chow Yun Fat is a guy who was in the um, Kung Fu movie uh, Hidden Dragon. Crouching yeah. Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Have you but, seen John Wick? Oh, yeah. You know <laughs> oh, they're making part two right now, right? Part, yeah, yeah. I, I bet we've all seen uh, him training for part two with his yeah. shooting and his jujitsu. I, I appreciate that a lot. It looks very good. His, his shooting looked top notch, and his jujitsu looked very good too. That's a movie that I went into with such low expectations that I was really impressed. And uh, it, yeah, yeah, it was good. I mean, I mean, Keanu strong. had had like loser after loser for like three or four years. He did this, uh, <laughs> this. 
Oh, what was it called? It was called like 150 Warriors or some bullshit. Oh, something stupid. 47 Ronin. 47 Ronin, yeah, and that bombed big Sorrible. time. Lost like $100 million, and he hadn't been getting roles for a while. And I think Woody brought up maybe last year how there was an interview with Keanu, and, he, and they were like, well, how, how have things changed in your career? What, what's it like uh, right now? And he was like, well, I don't get the roles I want. You know, I, I, I put in for this role, and Matt Damon gets it. I put in for that one, and Ben Affleck gets it. I put in for this one, Leonardo DiCaprio gets it. I, I don't get to act in the movies that I want to act in anymore, so I kind of just got to take what I can get. It kind of sucks. And uh, so with the success of John Wick, you see a movie that costs whatever, 30, 40 million, making 180 million. 100, you know, yeah. he's back in the he's back in the game again. But he's a Good dedicated actor. Like the training he did for Matrix was insane. It's terrible. He's a terrible actor. He's, he, no, but he's, you're he's, absolutely he's, right. he's dedicated, the, I said. He's, he's like, dedicated to training. like getting the physical stuff down because, man, his, his kung fu was, was on point. His jujitsu was. still is on point. His gun skill is on point. But he can't fucking act. I, 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 it's still this surfer dude from California who should be in a phone booth going back in time. We're the same guy. Doing, <laughs> you know, but they're doing another I, Bill you know, Ted. I yeah. could say no, that about not. Matthew McConaughey. Another excellent adventure, bro. <clears throat> I feel like every yeah. Matthew three, McConaughey, right? Like, all right, all right, all right. It, it was right, pretty right, cool right, at first. Right. And now Matthew's I feel an like. amazing actor. To me, he plays the same guy in just different situations. Oh, no, you, no, you haven't seen Lincoln Lawyer? No, I'm sorry? Lincoln Lawyer was good, yeah. That's a good oh, movie. I didn't yeah. see that. Really Maybe good, it changed my mind. Really good actor. <clears throat> yeah, every time the I see you didn't like him. You didn't like him in True Detective, <clears throat> though, did you? I thought it was this like same guy. Like I don't know. Like I could tell you, he's he's what? gonna do. You a... did not like True Detective. I thought it was okay. Like I, uh, yeah, I'm gonna just run out, man. That was a... Woody was amazing. I thought they made a great team together. Second season of True Detective, I was not happy with, but uh, so the second season I didn't watch. Everyone seemed to hate it. The first it wasn't one, very good. I liked the acting in it. I thought the acting was super powerful. But it, look, I can appreciate a slow burn. I liked um, what was that Tomahawk movie we watched with Kurt Russell? Bone Tomahawk. Bone Tomahawk. Bone Tomahawk. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. That's a slow burn, and I enjoyed every second of it. But very um, good. Uh, True Detective horror rest western. Like I. Saw, it just moved too slow for me. Like, I don't know, a whole episode would go by, and the only, like, significant plot movement was they found a bunch of sticks or something. It's a build-up, man. It's I, in the case. You gotta, you gotta go somewhere. I don't know. I, uh, it, but McConaughey himself, like, I just feel like when he acts, it's always that same guy. You know, I don't feel that way about Matt Damon. I don't feel like it's I'm Goodwill Dallas Hunting Myers on Mars. Club. Mm. Oh, Dallas Dallas, Club for I really sure, liked yeah. that movie. Jesus, that, and I liked uh, Jared Leto the guy's was so good at that. Who, uh, the transsexual. The, yeah, yeah, who plays that? Jared Leto, Jared Leto. New Joker. Yeah. He was very good. How'd you like uh, yeah. the new Joker? Uh, the Suicide Squad. It. it was it was very bad. No, but how'd you like the Joker? Oh, it wasn't good. I didn't care for it. You um, saw it, I, Kyle. I, I could appreciate. Yeah, I, I finally went and saw it. it I, I didn't care for it at all. Um, I, I just didn't. I, it, it wasn't my cup of tea. It's not what I'm looking for from from a superhero movie. And, and I just did, this, the the biggest thing is, I, I'm sitting there like three quarters of the way through it when we finally figured out what we're gonna do and everybody's actually doing shit. And I'm just like, if everybody went home right now, who would fucking care? If everybody <laughs> on screen just went home and drank a beer, would the world end? Because if 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 Iron Man says, you know what, fuck it, I'm going home and drinking a beer and fucking pepper pots. The world ends. That's yeah. what happens then. <laughs> the world ends. Like, like if Thor just figures, fuck it, I'm gonna go, you know, fuck some. <clears throat> I don't know what check. Thor fucks, but I bet he's got some bad ice ass giants or something. On. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't. He hates the ice giants. Yeah, but he's that's why he some, fucks some them. Fine, it's, it's not a happy stuff. day. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe he's raping some ice giants. Maybe go. he'd prefer that. But if he goes <laughs> home, my point is, if he goes home, the world ends. It's all over. So yeah. you know if. But if Will Smith doesn't show up, then it's like, ah, maybe we should just get a Marine who can shoot, because that's pretty much the same thing, right? Uh, and then the, who's, what's, what's the fucking Croc guy? What's he there for? The like, Croc guy uh, is actually played by, I looked it up, uh, the guy who played Adebisi played the Croc guy. Uh, okay. Adebisi from Oz. But then you know he, what? Adebisi he was so needlessly fucking, he was so needlessly difficult to understand. He was a mumbler to the nth degree. Every t single time that you saw the the killer croc on screen, you just just you, put ear put fingers in your ears because it doesn't fucking matter. You won't be able to understand. It's just little Joe Melanie go you do get him. It's like what? Who are you more afraid of, Killer Croc or Abadisi? 
Adebisi, yeah. Adebisi. Right? <laughs> Adebisi will butt fuck you in the kitchen, even if you are the Don's son. He just don't <laughs> give a fuck. The croc is on some leash from the federal government. They, they control his moves. Like, Will Smith bitch, bitches the croc out. Adebisi yeah. would rape Will Smith. I'd rather fight, like, <laughs> eight out of ten of the prisoners in Oz. That's a new scale. You'd be like, <laughs> like <laughs> sing the theme to Fresh Prince while I kiss on your hair. Like, you <laughs> crying. West Philadelphia, born and raised. I'm going to say that. That's what I'd say. Adebisi, like, yes, keep singing. Sigourney Weaver is a, Ripley the badass bitch, but would Adebisi fuck her? <laughs> that's our <laughs> new scale. <laughs> might be, I think that's my my favorite female heroine, female hero, female action star from any movie is fucking Ripley. 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 Dude, so hardcore. Aliens too, yeah. when they started coming from the walls, it, it was <laughs> one of the like I don't know how it, if a young Woody saw that you know when the movie was new, and yeah. it was one of the most frightening scenes I had ever seen in my it life. And again, though. I put myself there. Like. It, Whatever. Nine-year-old Woody in his head thought war was easy. You just hold a machine gun, you can kill hundreds of people, you know? It, it, this, g -g 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 as they all line up. But when they started coming from the walls and out the vents and all that stuff, it's like, oh no, they're in a terrible situation. So would nine-year-old Woody go and save that little girl when she disappears through the vent and the water, or would nine-year-old Woody take off in the jet? Because oh. there's a lot of people who tell you when she when, when she went back for the little girl. I would have taken off in that jet as the person I am right now. And nuke it. <laughs> just just nuke fuck him. It. Fuck it. I, I love it though. I, that's my. That's when the movie gets good for me. When she's like, gets a duct tape out and she's like, starts so putting the flamethrower. She's on like, the I, gun. she's like, one gun just won't be enough for this mission. What I really need is a pulse rifle with an underbarrel grenade launcher duct taped to a goddamn flamethrower. Then God I could do some work. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's great. Just get away, and, and then later on, get away from her, you bitch. bitch. <laughs> And like, there's a reason classic. for her to be good with the loader. Like, like movies back then, it made sense. You're like, oh yeah, Ridley's great with the loader. That's what she used to do. That alien queen is fucked. Um, seeing the difference between the, the movie that Ridley Scott made, which is a horror movie, if you ask me, and then the movie that James Cameron made, which is just this badass alien shoot 'em up action movie, and they're both equally good, if you ask me. I, I don't know which one's better. To me, they're they're just dead even at like 9.0s out of 10. And they're completely different as as far as the theme and the tone of the movie, really. Yeah, totally agree. Totally. And Alien Three is a real shit show. And you know that you know that you've heard this story that the actors in the first Alien movie did not see the costume until that scene happened for them. So they were oh, authentically first out of his chest. That those are authentic reactions with the first chest burster screen uh, yes. scene. Go back and watch that. You can see their yep. face. They're just like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Another scene that's like that, where like some shit went down and one of the actors wasn't prepared. In the new uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, The Hateful Eight, Jennifer Jason Lee is sitting oh there playing, my gosh. playing the guitar as Dahmer Goo, and that guitar is a wait, priceless. Wait, wait, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you seen this movie, Hateful yeah. Eight, Taylor? Yeah, we've yeah. all seen it. Okay, this is a uh, give him a spoiler alert just in case, because yeah, yeah, mild spoiler here. Um, mild spoiler. Yeah, yeah the, this chick is sitting there playing the guitar, and she's singing a, a song that is very mocking of Kurt Russell's character. And so he walks over there, snatches up the guitar, and bang, smashes it into the wall like it's Animal House. The only thing was that it wasn't the prop guitar. It was the priceless, one-of-a-kind guitar that was loaned to them from a museum yeah. worth many tens of thousands of dollars. And you get to see Jennifer Jason's, Jason Lee's honest real reaction to another actor taking a priceless heirloom and smashing it. <laughs> whoa! Whoa! And she's not looking at Kurt. She's looking off camera. Why yeah. would she look at the other people in the cab? And she's looking at the director like, he fucked up! Look what he did! Holy shit! <laughs> did everybody and, see that I didn't do this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, she, she's like, I didn't throw it or anything. Kurt yeah. smashed it. So and, did Kirk, or Kurt know? No, not until afterwards. Oh, he didn't know until later. He thought he had a prop. And yeah. the museum was... Ever again will we loan things out to a movie company? That's the yeah. end of that shit. Because like you can't get it back. Smash they shouldn't have done it in the first place. Like if it's a small enough prop that everyone in there can misconstrue a prop guitar from this priceless one, just just use the prop. Just use the prop. Tarantino's weird like that, right? Like he wants everything authentic and he's very particular like that. So he's got to have it just so. But yeah, I guess he it really let me down with that movie. I was I had such high hopes for Hateful Eight, and then it just it was like I don't want to read 
again because I guarantee I'm going to know how bad it is. Like, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt the whole first watch through, and it's just not very good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I, I, I did a lot too. I and enjoyed I it. I really, I, the, the thing I liked the most, I really enjoyed the 70 millimeter aspect, aspect of it. I went and watched like the Roadshow edition on a legit yes. 70 millimeter screen. And that definitely had an effect on me. I liked it much more because of that than if I'd seen it on a regular screen. I rewatched it the other day. I didn't like it as much as the first time I'd seen it. But it was because I kind of, you know, this, some things don't hold up on a second viewing. And it's not because they're poor. It's just because the way the story is shaped, it just doesn't lend itself to that. I also <laughs> saw the Roadshow Edition, but mine wasn't good. And that's one of my issues with showing actual film. Like, it was out of focus. It was jumpy. It was all the bullshit that happened with film when I was a little kid. I was in the uh, minority in that I didn't love The Revenant, but I liked Hateful Eight. Really? You didn't like The Revenant? I didn't. Why, not, why so? It's too slow I, or? Too simple. Like, I, I don't mind it. It just seemed like, I, to me, there, there wasn't really much plot twist in that. Like, all right, he gets separated. He wants revenge. There it is. Three hours worth of crawling through the woods to get revenge. And I think a lot of people were just enamored with the story around the filming of it, how they, he really did have chapped lips, how they really were cold when they did it, and, and stuff like that. But to me, like that, that's irrelevant. It's it just... took me because, A, I put myself in that position and what it would take to drag your broken ass around the woods for that long in the freezing cold. Mm -hmm. And then, in addition to that, I, I read the real story of how what really happened and how the actual wounds were even worse than what was portrayed in the movie. Hmm. And like, like in those days, like how you know you're not even guaranteed to, that you'd be safe in a hospital after that. Right. You know what I mean? And like he dragged us through through all that to make it to the camp, and then he wants to go back out after again. You know what I mean? I'm like the the human spirit that that took was like. Just blew me away for some reason. I, I I put myself into these movies. I was like, could I do that? Type of I really thing. appreciated the camera work. There were there were several scenes where I was just like, I, really blown away by the camera work and the cinematography from that guy. That's his third Oscar in a row. He's won for that cinematography. That guy. Um, he won for Birdman, and uh, I can't think of the, the 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 third film that he won an Oscar for. But there were several scenes where the camera starts low to the ground. And it, it spins to like do this long cut shot, and and then it follows Leo up on his horse through a field. And I know these aren't legitimate no cut shots. He's doing a bit of trickery there, Birdman but the too. trickery it's but yeah. the trickery itself is is better that is better uh, makes the product better. You know, it doesn't matter to me that they actually didn't do a a long shot. It looks like a real shot, and it feels like a a real long one no cut shot, and it's beautiful. Um, best, I like the Revenant a lot. The best no cut scene was when the Indians attacked in the beginning. Yeah, that's what I'm referring that to. That was insane. Like the 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 arrows going and killing people, and the, just the, the constant movement of the the and the flow was. Body. Yeah, it was just perfect, and mm -hmm. it was like, like that. Just I was I, I was stuck to the screen, and that, it was like, that to me was the peak screen. of the movie. I don't know, man. That bear attack was pretty wicked. Oh. <laughs> that bear I will say real, you, man. the thing. Yeah, it did look real. Like I, I remember talking about it now that now that you say it, like it did whatever fifty PKs ago. I was like, I don't know how they got a real bear to do that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, like, yeah. that was a well trained remember bear. The edge. I, I watched the edge a while back. With, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I just watched that. Yeah, they used Bart the bear in that one, and that that's a real bear, but he's just acting, you know, and it, it's yeah. nowhere Faker. near as real. Is that the wolf movie? <laughs> what one no, man can do, another can do. Gray. Um, wow. The edge is what the is what the gray should have been, but with a bear. And the it's, edge uh, had Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins and, and Alec Baldwin. Baldwin and and, the, and the guy in the wheelchair from Oz. From Oz, yes, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and spoiler alert: he is the black guy, so you know what happens. Uh, to him. Yeah. <laughs> he lasted pretty long. First, so he doesn't die first, though. He was you know, the first one. <laughs> that, that pilot takes a goose to the face, going like 120, and yeah, so, that's a messed up way to go. Good movie. Okay, it's it. better than what happened to the black guy, though. Wouldn't you rather take that goose to the face and then go down the plane? Yeah. The, like, like the black guy is literally screaming. He's like, he's got me. He's got. And the bear's got him like by the thigh, and he's just yeah. swinging him around back and forth. Like and Alec Baldwin and Anthony Hopkins are just like, eh. 
fuck! <laughs> and they just leave. They just leave, and you can hear his screams. And I, yeah. I well, you like, have to leave. What else are you gonna? Oh, if I had my own bear, I would help out. Like, <laughs> but no, I'm not gonna jump into a bear fight because you. I could have ten. I could have the Nick Diaz, you know, uh, groupie around me and <laughs> charge towards bear, and we're gonna lose. You know, I can't throw up monster yeah. cans at that thing. <laughs> It's the whole tripping the fat guy while the zombies are attacking our theory, right? And what would yeah. you do? Let's say that you were whatever it took to properly motivate you to fight a bear. Like, bear. would you just bring a rock? I'm thinking a big, you know. Uh, like, sharpened spear. Have one right half handy and you get in yeah. there, right? Uh, like, like if, if you have to, if it's a family member or someone you love in there, like start start yeah, trying to get make this a eyeball stick oh, knife. At least you get about a guy the other day that killed a bear with his bare hands that he, he shoved his this down the bear's throat and while the bear was biting onto his arm trying to do something with like a mouthful of arm he chewed through the bear's jugular vein and killed the bear and this wasn't a baby he didn't like rough up a cub okay mm -hmm. he, he was like come here you little fucker like it wasn't like that like a big fucking bear attacked this guy and he killed it with his bare hands and then there, there was, was like, no way there's a medical examiner's report where they validated his claims of how he killed the bear oh, I, fuck. I yeah <laughs> i know Mark, a bear story are you a dad no no Okay, Woody, what would you have... I can't imagine the pain those people went through in Florida oh, when that dad the had to try and fight off that gator. Wait, did the dad try to fight off the gator? Yes. Oh, I yes. thought he. I thought the kid just, like, vanished and they no, went looking. No, the when, dad when, tried when to fight this? it and couldn't beat it. So he Can you give a quick rundown of this story? Oh, you don't know the story? A uh, family was staying at Walt Disney World at one of the resorts... And they were watching a movie on one of the beaches at night, and the kids were playing around the wire, the edge of the water, and a crocodile or alligator came up and grabbed a two-year-old, pulled it underwater. Dad heard the screaming, went, tried wrestling the child from the gator, and uh, couldn't do it, and the gator took him under, and the, the search parties found the kid dead later, a few day, couple days later. Jeez, and so like, the gator didn't even eat the kid? See, alligators will drown their prey and leave it underwater leave to, it to, to get soften it up. Yeah. To, to, to rotten a little bit because they can't chew. They have to just swallow hunks. So he was savoring uh, that, that, that little fellow for later. I, I was just, when you when you mentioned fighting off a bear or whatever, I'd like, I could not stop fighting for my kid. Like, I would have to go down with the gator or something. You know what I mean? Like. Well, but maybe gonna, the gator just I, I took off. I always picture my fingers getting worked into eye sockets, like like getting on in there. You see how small those eyes are? Like yeah, that thing is, and they have like a lid. Big. Well, I mean to find it in the darkness in the water. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in its oh, that's a fair and, point. And it'll just like, close its eyes with its iron-clad eyelids. Yeah, and that's like like just just kind of sit there because it's nah, made I'm of getting armor. In there. And we Dude. we're we're just woefully outmatched by Listen every me, other as animal. A, as a animal dad. Animal. Like, Woody's dog is about the same size as my husky. Just wrestling with the dog, you can feel the strength. Imagine, and that was a, imagine a freaking full-grown alligator, man. Like, that would just, jeez, how do you live after that, something like that? It may like, just be a, a, a conscious suicide. Like, all right, I'm going down with the ship. Fuck it. You know? It, might, it would have to be, because, like, Jesus, Murphy. I'd have to lift my daughter, but at the same time, just, I, I, I I don't know, man. To try and have to fight off something like that. And there's one thing fighting for your own life. That's a whole different story, but fighting for the life of your kid I and wonder, having to, you know what I mean? Live with that? Jesus how much is Murphy. Disney paying out for that? Anything? Lots? I honestly don't know. I heard they put a fence up. Like, there's, you can't, it's not, that beachhead is not accessible. Uh, they've admitted I heard they guilt. gave the family free passes for, for all the Epcot That's what they do. Disney yeah. Park. You know, my daughter was attacked by an animal at Disney World. A horse. Was it a bird? It was like a bird. It was a horse. It bit her. We were going to really? the um, like Mickey's backyard barbecue, and uh, there were horses there. Me, being an idiot, thought the horses would like they're Disney horses, right? They like people. <laughs> no, yeah. turns out Disney horses are regular horses. And uh, she, she, <laughs> the Louis C.K. pony story. I don't know this. I don't even know this story. Not too fun, buddy. But anyway, yeah, there's not much to it. We, we like we went up. We wanted to like pet the horse's nose. And uh, the horse, like, bit her arm hard, and she still hates horses. That That's was, like, fucked. ten years ago. Like, was there, like, blood or anything, or a mark, or what? There were definitely teeth marks, but yeah, horse, it, it wasn't, like, blood. strong, man. It was wasn't, it a like, pony it, or a horse? It was a horse. I think it might yeah. have been used in the show, like, people rode ponies, it and stuff. Ponies are especially, like... Ornery? 
No, ornery is too kind. They're, they're really jerks. Like, like, like they'll often like bite people just because they enjoy it. They're like, hey, there's a person. Fuck you. It's like, like, like ponies are complex just, type of thing. Yeah, ponies are assholes. Yeah, hmm. I, 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 we were watching the other day. We were watching. Um, I watched the Fail Army uh, videos on YouTube. I watch every single one of them. I, I really get a kick out of them. And uh, <laughs> they, they had they they have this uh, kind of fail video where someone's riding like a a barrel racing horse or a jumping horse or whatever and the horse doesn't jump the boundary it just stops and the person falls off or whatever or maybe the horse stumbles as it jumps because it's being a shithead and the person falls off in every circumstance i'm like you know what i do i get up blow that fucking horse's <laughs> brains out it just i get up with a 44 mad and just boom dead <laughs> horse right there and i'd have every other fucking horse lined up in the stable watching and be like, all right next <laughs> next come here come here that was going to the glue factory let's see if you can jump alpo let's fucking jump. <laughs> like, you're gonna be fucking dog food tomorrow if you don't <laughs> oh, oh no boom and i, was fucking, that, I, I hate that because that horse is smart enough to know what he did to you and 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 the rest of them should be smart enough to know that you know an example has been set. What you got, dog child? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Please, Set dude, precedence. Yeah. <laughs> after you, after you waste a whole stable, I bet you you end up with like one horse who's like down for your cause. He's like, I jump. He says jump. And, like, and like you're, re you're removing assholes from the gene pool. You're really doing humanity a favor. Yeah. It's just that to make sure that all those dead horse bodies are still there when you bring the next truckload in. So they see what happened to dissidents. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, all about samples. You know Sorry, you know what the most satisfying fail army I've ever seen was the parkour one. I like. Have those. you seen that one? Like oh, all one. Oh, there's one where like it's the most vicious parkour fails you ever see. Like guys trying to jump from one roof to the other roof. He doesn't only just miss a roof, but he clips it with his face <laughs> and it falls down on a dumpster. Oh. I mean, it's like if any kid wants to try parkour, you show them this video and they'll never do it because. I don't know. Maybe I'm evil for being happy to see this, but wow. No, I'm happy to see that the same way I'm happy to see those guys in India who fuck with alligators and like slap them in the eyes and everybody's like, oh, look at this. He's got such rapport with the creature. And then it just whoop, just whacks <laughs> on their own, yeah. or whacks down on their head. It's like, you I asked for this. That is a that is an ancient being sitting in there that doesn't know why this bipedal ape is fucking with it. It just knows it gets its fish periodically. Like, that's, I want that's to it. See, I want to see you. Have you been seeing those guys with the GoPros going into high rise buildings and they'll put a foot over the ledge and everything? Oh, they'll just, like, hang by, they'll just hang by fingers. They hang by, fingers. Yeah, exactly. On Dude, the I sweat on my palms in the bottom, like whatever a foot palm is. It, just watching so, that stuff. So, honestly, yeah. and I, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but as soon as we get video of one of those guys falling away down, I'll be like, serves the right asshole. That's what you <laughs> yeah. You know what the worst part is? I bet it breaks the GoPro. Like, like, but I would love to recover that footage of the guy falling and screaming all the way to the bottom. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I, I, didn't even I would think love about that. that. I would. I would love that. It can, to, come on, take, you can like, save a memory stick. Breath. It'll be fine. I hope he thinks about Like, as he's falling a, a thousand time. feet, he grabs the <laughs> GoPro and goes... I want to edit that video together. Like, like it's just silence, and then you see him trip and fall, and then and then it goes to like 0.7 speed, and you just hear, "I believe I can fly," <laughs> 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 and you just you cut to maybe another angle of him, just like his eyes, just like, ah! and then it's, "I believe I can touch the sky," and you get oh, mauling blanks. story after story. Oh, we're yeah. going. To Those guys this. are really. Just saying to the world, I don't really care about my life very much. I, I don't care to get dick. Uh, you were talking about Fail Army, or I was maybe. I watched the other day and I saw Pussy on Fail Army on YouTube. I, there was a girl who like jumps and falls over a chair, and her just her vagina comes out. And I went frame by frame, but that was definite vagina on Fail Army. I was very Did happy. She get hurt or? He was fine. I don't mind the Fail oh. Army ones where it's. I thought you said you got impaled or something. Jesus. I, okay. That's all. I really don't like watching the bones, the bone breaking ones. Oh. Where you can tell that it was just, just like some 14 year old out on like a day of BMXing with his friends, and then 15 seconds later he's just, my arm! Like, about that gymnast little... on the Olympics, bro. Ooh, his I leg was like, yeah. Yeah. Was a good one. Bad. His leg was, you know, broken. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> on the, it's, it was just right was like in the middle con... of his chin. Uh, uh, his femur was just broken half. That was, or was it, would it be a tibula? Where, which one are you talking about? Looked to me bone. like it was the one from your between your knee and your ankle. Yes, it was his shin. Is it well, it, it, it's the shin bone, but I don't know what that's called. Like, 
It was death gone. Tibia, maybe? Oh, tibular or fibular or something. Maybe there's two bones there. I don't know. Yeah, there could be any number of bones in here. You know? Yeah, Isn't that crazy? Cracks. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Think about that. Like, like, as I look at my arm here, I'm not quite exactly sure what the skeletal structure underneath would look like. <laughs> and, and that... that I should know, right? Because There's I know what two primary bones. bones: the ulna and the radii. Yeah, yeah I know radii. that one, but yeah. but I can't picture them perfectly. I don't know if they're round or if they're sort of oval shaped. I don't know their shape and color. I don't really know what's inside of me. I when become I think of a localized expert as I injure different shit. Like, like I think I could be a, a nurse for a knee, um, a forearm, <laughs> broken noses. Like, it, like, there's a couple little things here and there where I really understand what's going on. Decent with hands. Thanks, Joe Lozon. Knock on wood. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I injured my knee once, but I was no bones, so. What's the most you... painful injury you've ever had, Wolf? That's an um, three years right. ago, I, I uh, tore my MCL, jumping off a car in paintball. Where, oh. Where's your MCL? Is that your knee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my knee. Yeah, and I tore that. And uh, thank the Lord. Like, I do martial arts and also do hot yoga, so I'm flexible. So Doc said that's what saved me from not needing surgery that I was already flexible and I, I tore a few things, but now I'm a hundred percent knock on wood. So which one's worse, the MCL or the ACL? I, I hear I always... ACL injuries more than MCL, but they're both equally bad if you tear them. Huh. So I don't know if one's worse than the other, but that, uh, I was out. It's funny cause I got my biggest sponsorship that year and like January. And I, I heard it up at, at uh, that paintball game and, uh, I was out for like six months. I think breaking my ankle was probably the most painful thing. Um, not when I broke it, but um, they 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 didn't recognize that it was broken right away. So I was walking around on it for a few days. And then I woke up one night and just I woke up from the pain and I, I was like screaming out from the I wasn't crying or sobbing, but I was just yelling. Oh, it hurts so much. Oh, God. Oh, God. Just like that. Just like. It was just every time my heart would beat, I would feel so goddamn much pain in my ankle that I, I really was struggling with just handling it. Like, nothing else mattered but that pain. It was so bad. That's how that's tooth pain is. Tooth oh, pain, that's up there for me. For it, man. Like, yeah. Tooth mm -hmm. pain will make you go crazy. Like, it, well, it will. People have killed themselves before because tooth pain is so bad. Like, they. Because it's just. You, you just go bananas. Our, our mouths are kind of shitty. And. It's easy to have fucked up teeth. My slowest to recover from was my ACL. I mean, that took six months before I could play sports again. And it seemed like it was 12 months more than that before it yeah. didn't hurt. And I really, like, didn't think about my knee. But the worst pain I ever had was definitely the testicular torsion. That, that shit. Ah! Off the hook. <laughs> Sweet I, God in heaven. That's what happens when you go to a discount dominatrix. <laughs> yeah. yeah. hundred dollars an hour. You saved a little money on the front end, but those medical bills. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Murphy, I don't want to hear that one again. Uh, dude. Yeah. She just was... kept she just kept winding them up mm -hmm. like a clock. Wind... <laughs> kept going and going. It seemed like a good idea that at the fourth time. Fourth time around, mm -hmm. they, they stopped springing back the other way, and we didn't know what to do. I should have used that safety word when I was told. Did you ever do that as a kid? Like that no. first, you know, for a child. Okay, maybe this is just me. Yeah. When I was a kid, I thought <laughs> I that so like much. I thought that your testicles were just in that bag, just like free floating, like when you're like a little kid, and so you don't know, and so you're just futzing around down there sometimes. And I still remember the time where I'm like, it's just a couple of balls hanging out in there, and I like moved them, swapped places. I'm like, that's fine, and I tried <laughs> to do it again. And I'm like, go. Oh! <laughs> like, oh, like, oh. And then it's back. Like, okay, now I've established a reality. There is something in there keeping it in order. Is so there? I didn't even know that. Okay, oh my god! Like, How do you not know this? Because mine are stuck. torsion. Here's the scoop. See, was, see now your whole theory about your injuries giving you medical insight is blown oh, away. Oh, fair point. Fair <laughs> point. I'll give you that. So here's the deal. When I was 15, I, I'll tell in fact, it's been like 200 episodes. But here's what happened. I'm sitting in biology class. My jeans are probably too tight. Uh, not because I like them that way, because I got, because I'm in a growth spurt. And um, uh, my balls hurt. They hurt a lot. 
And I, like, I don't know what to do. I'm just trying to get more comfortable. But I, I, I think nothing I could do seems to relieve like this tension and this problem that I'm having. I go to the, the teacher and I say, can I go to the nurse? And this teacher was kind of a hard ass about sending you to the nurse. But she sees me. I'm pale as a ghost. Beads of sweat pouring down my face. And she like makes a classroom example. Like, you know what? Look at him. If you look like this, I'll send you to the nurse. So I go down to the nurse and, uh, and I explain to her, like, dude, my testicles in a lot of pain. Like, I don't know what the scoop is with this, but, but that's where I am. And uh, the nurse is a woman and she doesn't want to, like, check it out herself. So she gets a gym teacher. What? He, I'm sorry. I, this story really. That's her job. I, I, you're I all going to go? I'll be right back. Ah, <laughs> pussies. So she gets the gym teacher. The gym teacher kind of cups it. And he's like, I don't know what's going on here, but there's nothing normal about this, you know. So they uh, they call an ambulance, and thankfully, to their credit, these adults were somewhat socially aware. They literally timed the ambulance so it would come between classes. Like it, at this school, the way the classes worked, there were these half periods. There were classes changes every like 18 <laughs> minutes, and they like strategically got the ambulance in and out, such that like the whole world wouldn't see me and have questions. So uh, we get in the ambulance, we zoom to the hospital, and uh, um, I'm on the, I'm in the emergency room, and I'm like, am I like faking? Because I'm really like moaning and and playing up the pain, but I'm in a lot of pain. And uh, my father at one point was like, good, good, you got this, because they're all giving me like first attention. I'm like butting in front of all the other patients, and uh, thankfully they did, because this is time sensitive. You've got something essentially choking, and what it is is your testicle spins in place, which is why I thought that they could do that. And um, I guess whatever held mine in place was longer than traditional. And uh, he said that when he unspun it, they pinkened right up and it's wonderful to be 15. And, uh, um, <laughs> and then they give you a stitch, which you could feel right now if you were so inclined. Oh, so I have oh. an internal stitch holding my testicle in place so that it never happens again. And the other one was like a little turned, but not choked. So he gave me a stitch in that too, just for good measure. So is one of your balls just always attached to, like, the wall of your scrotum? Like, just, like... <laughs> both of them are, but I don't really know any different. Like, I, 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 both of them are held in place. It, yeah. yeah, and it's been like that since I was 15, so I don't really have, like... And, you know, me in puberty, that like, 15 was just the beginning. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, so, like, I don't really have, like, a long, like, pre... Like, like post-puberty... Like, I don't really know what happened now. And then you could feel the difference after for the rest of your life. Like like if it happened to me at 24, I'd be like, oh, this is what normal balls are like. And this is what like, you know, they're not like, but it happened to me at 15 and Wolf probably doesn't know, but I was like no hair on my legs, no armpits, no muscles, no anything. (laughs) At 15, I could pass for 12. So I don't really have a lot of like post puberty testicle experience. I only have my (laughs) bionic balls to go by. Wow. So that's wow. Yeah, that that wins the pain off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a funny little story. There's um What do you got? Something that I, I, I had that hurt a lot, a lot, and I think I didn't hurt me as much because it actually I thought I actually uh broke my penis once. Yeah. And uh I had a young lady who was uh, jumping up and down to me in reverse cow? That's how it happens. That's yeah. exactly so how it happens. So such risky business. And it was. They're so I reckless it up there. Very <laughs> painful, and I heard a crack, and I pushed her off. Like she flew across the room, and I was like, just curse word, curse word, curse word. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> it was just oh, it was the scariest thing of my life, bro. And I was like, okay, you, you know, know what? Cause you did it break hurt, it? Did you just hear a noise? Oh, it hurt bad. It hurt, and I thought something was bad, and I was like, I was like, "You good, man? You good? You okay? We good?" And she thought I was talking to her. I go, "Shut up!" Shut up. Are you okay? <laughs> I was like, oh my, it was the scariest thing, bro. And was, I was it like, totally just a non-event? Like it hurt, but you were fine? Like there was, it, you weren't crooked was, for the next I 18 think, months? I think it was bruised or something. It just mm-hmm. didn't, I bet you broke it, some it, blood vessels. I bet maybe. you broke some stuff in there. Now you you can break that thing and permanently damage yeah, it and your sensations. Um, but yeah, wimp, women need to learn. I'm trying to think of how to say this, but. If you're going to ride a man's penis, you should really learn more about penises and how to ride them. 
Otherwise, you're going to do some up and down bouncy yeah. thing that you yeah. saw in a porno once, and you're literally going to break my cock. Okay. And if you do that, then that whole domestic violence thing, <laughs> oh, oh, it's open season at this point. You break my dick? I mean, that's like declaration of war right there. That's like, well, of course I'd never shoot a person. Well, what if? What if China invaded? <laughs> well, you got to then, right? If the Chinese invade, you're like, would you ever hit a woman? Of course I wouldn't. What if she broke your dick in half? Oh, I'd beat her. So I'd do like, way more than hit. Like a <laughs> rented mule. Like, <laughs> Ladies, if you're watching, here's what we want. Keep it deep. Keep it deep, right? The, the, the only trouble we're running into is because you're getting high, right? This is a gallop, not a trot. Keep it, keep it well, in. The, the going high is okay, but mm. the problem comes when, you know... Instead of keeping some on there, they just go whoop, and then you, yeah. and then you're obviously not in place. You're you're you you're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then they you, maybe you're not the right angle, and they come back down. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And you're this. off. Kill See, yeah, yeah. See, that's why that's I, I've issue. got to keep it deep, right? If they're just working it like this, then you're in good shape. It's not until they start doing this that you've entered the danger zone. That's why you keep gotta, it in. I really wish I had a dildo because you both have like ink pens. I wish I was like, yeah, it's like this and like yeah, a right. fake pussy and right. an actual dildo. So guys, what you want to do? Fucking the black guy breaks out the 12 incher. <laughs> that is all serious though. So that's a real problem that is never talked about because you you know that little feeling of like stress you get when you can yeah. see that there's someone's getting a little bit too gung ho -y, and uh -huh. you're like gung ho -y. and <laughs> they're, uh, it's you've you, got to, you, you've you got to put your hands down. there and and and, the and, and mm -hmm. look I, I learned long ago that the best thing to do if something during sex isn't going your way you'll if you say things the correct way you won't offend anyone but if she's gnawing on your dick You've got to say something. If she's sucking on it like like she's trying to to, to peel a carrot, you gotta be like, whoa, 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 this isn't working. We've got to do something different. And likewise, if she's bouncing up and down your cock, and every time she goes up, you're wondering if the the downstroke is going That's to be sick. the last sexual experience you ever have. <laughs> uh, you know, something's going wrong there too. She doesn't know how to ride your penis and you know should probably talk about that that's not even a great position anyway I, i'm not a big fan of the the reverse cowgirl and the writing and everything uh, yeah. it's, it's no i would much rather be in control because because i all right so what's the determining factor for how long the sexual experience lasts is it how much fun she's having or is it when I'm, when am i going to come it's of course when i'm going to come so i don't want her in control i want to be in control because then i can make this ride last 45 minutes or three hours whatever you want but if you're on top just bouncing up and down and half the time I'm worried you're going to break my dick and the other half I'm worried you're going to make me come too fast, then, like, that's not fun for me. <laughs> I would it's hope it's not three hours. Control, I not play. Play. Even 45 yeah, minutes well, is on the long end. I don't know where well, Kyle well, wants to have sex for three hours. Ah, we, well, well, that's what a you good, need. A good hour can happen if you do nah, it. Nah, right. you, you, you want things to be raw and chapped. You want lots of... <laughs> Yeah, you want that people, to be the only sex you're having for, no, for you weeks. Have trouble <laughs> Taylor knows. Right? Taylor knows. Yeah. Yes. I, I swear, if you have sex for an hour, expect some time off. What we and, do, what, yeah. what I like to do, uh, I guess, is we'll have sex until the point where, like, maybe she'll come or I'll be about to come. And then I'll be like, hey, let's watch some TV for a while. Like, like let's just... We'll have like a 30-minute cool-down period. So when you're doing it that way, then you can have like this fuck session that just keeps getting crazier and crazier, and but lasts stuff. for four hours. Yes. Whereas if you just fucked her four times, like by the fourth time, you're just like, let's knock this out real quick, all right? Cause Not in my world. Rope. In yeah. my <laughs> world, she pretty much determines when we have sex. I determine when it's over. <laughs> that's, that's how it happens. Yeah, that sounds so rapey. I know, right? Like really? Spider-Man. He's, he's like, I got you for three minutes. What does he say? Like three minutes. I got out of you <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't know where you got rapey on that. I was just saying women say no. And... You're like, I decide when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy determines well, when it ends. Get in my van and let me take you home. Oh, <laughs> uh, this walk. <laughs> Had to make it rapey. <laughs> but, uh, now that we got a little rape out of the way, let's let's get uh, let's get an ad. <laughs> Advertisers love it when we 
put it right next to rape. Yeah, but well, speaking of rape, um, do we have Casper mattresses or anything like that? <laughs> I recently heard, and, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but the gentleman that we had on our show, you know, the, the CEO of Dollar Shave Club, I think he sold the company for a substantial amount of monies. Billion dollars. Um, a billion. And then a half something, billion? Okay. Um, that's, that's wonderful for him, but I'm sure the quality will stay the same because, guys, we really appreciate you listening to our show and wanted to do something to thank you. So we contacted our friends over at dollarshaveclub.com, and we arranged for them to give – uh, new members, a month of the Executive Razor for free just by buying a tube of Dr. Carver's Shave Butter. We're super excited they're doing it for you. Now let me remind you why millions of others have joined me as a proud member of the club. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors right to your door for one-third the price of what those greedy razor corporations would charge. That means that when you join the Dollar Shave Club, you can afford to shave with a fresh blade anytime you want, which feels fantastic. I get a first-class shave when I use the Executive Blade, and that's without even hurting my wallet. And, they, uh, and when I use the executive with Dr. Carver's Shave Butter, the blade just gently glides for the smoothest shave ever. Shave Butter isn't your average shave cream. It's a unique conditioning formula with high-quality natural ingredients, leaving your skin unbelievably soft and smooth. Now's a great time to join the Dollar Shave Club. New members who buy a tube of Dr. Carver's Shave Butter get a month with the executive razor for free. So take advantage of this special offer today. It's available by going to <clears throat> dollarshaveclub.com slash pka that's dollarshaveclub.com slash pka check it out and it will be just as good because they left him in charge those are the only razors that i use um for one because i they dollar shave club sends me like a free pack of them every two weeks or something like that or every week maybe um but they're the only razors i use and they're the only razors that like any of the women that i know use because the house is full of them so i can attest both to how uh how good they are when you are shaving yourself they do a great job at that and i can also speak to how good of a job that they do on your your lady maybe her her vagina will be silky smooth just 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 real good just just almost yep. to, almost, to, almost like it was waxed Not almost quite. too smooth almost <laughs> too smooth. a little slippery Real problem. Ship to Canada. Wonderful, wonderful shave. Yep. I don't know. Kyle, you should uh, you should pursue a mustache. Absolutely. It's really it's coming in, and I think you'll you'll have to go through a little awkward stage. But when it starts doing like the hang down, it'll Uh be a a real like gung ho rootin' tootin' kind of look. (laughs) No, those aren't those aren't for single guys. Those. Kyle, yeah, why don't you do it temporarily though? Like, like maybe if you just don't shave until Tuesday, I, right when we do PKN, you can rock a mustache for an hour. Oh, uh, and in like every now, because for one thing, I've got the the John Snow syndrome. I noticed that they fix him up. I pay attention to guys who have like the same uh, affliction as I have with Patchy. my with my. Yeah, what yeah. Do you mean? It, it, so John Snow's mustache is shit. It's terrible. It's mm. completely bald right in the middle. I have a similar <laughs> thing going on. They put fake hair on his. I was like, that's such poor shit. I wish I had a team of people to come in every morning and give me a yeah. better mustache so it would look cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm upset with that. They're, they're giving him a fake mustache. Can you get in but close? No. I want to see that mustache. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, stay, we'll stay right oh, here. Oh, God. You're so scared. <laughs> we'll stay right here. Well, no, he doesn't. It's not his best foot forward. You know, it's a good. Maybe it's because, like, from where you are right now, it looks full and good. Like, so one the distance I had an accident when I was a kid, and I, I slid across asphalt, and it ground off up where the hair comes in in a big spot. So there's just a bald spot right here because mm. no hair can grow there. Um, so I, I look a lot better if I keep it really trimmed or if it's been going for like a day or two days or something. Uh, not going to be growing any beards or doing anything like that. Not in the Wolf, not I, I don't know if I missed it, but are you, you're Canadian? Me, yes. yes are I you am. a hockey fan at all? Uh, not anymore because I live in Toronto. <laughs> oh, you were a Leafs fan, and yeah. you just got too depressed. Yeah, it's it's not nice. It's I I I've lost enough hair. I don't need to lose anymore. <laughs> They'll be better this year. It's funny with regards to the facial hair, though. My my kids call me Wolverine because mine grows like overnight. Like I get if for, I get hair everywhere except for here. Ah. Like the, the the chest. I'm, a, the, I'm gonna be the, in the boat in about like ten years. Like I hope that's not. I hope I keep my hair. Because I will not look good bald. My head is just too fucking big. It's One good big. thing about being a black guy is that we look good. you got to get really bald. jacked. That, that's what you got to do. If, if mm-hmm. you go bald, 
you've got to get jacked to and make it work. Look, look at look at look at Vin Diesel. Like that's an ugly man to begin with. Yeah. But when he gets jacked, he can pull the whole thing off. I, I, I'm looking at you right now, and I feel like if you had some traps, if your shoulders were just and and not it's not like a year's worth of work we're talking. Like if you, if you worked out hard for three months, I feel like you could pull off a, an, an egghead look, especially with the beard. It, 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 it's it's a very interesting look. I, I'm envisioning it right now. Maybe someone could edit us together, a bald Taylor with like m like more muscular. I saw <laughs> Taylor linked me this thing the other day, and, and the quote the quotation was "just us girls," and it's me and Taylor in like <laughs> dresses in like Laura Ingalls Wilder's time or something like no that, way. like in these in these like like flowing flowery dresses, like hanging out th with each other. <laughs> And we, were, you, you were not that, that ugly of a girl. I looked horrible. <laughs> yeah, Just that's a not horrible, the first time. ugly girl. I'm the kind that people, that women would like. They'd be like, I'm all in favor of anybody going to the bathroom next to us, but Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> she, he, she, whatever, didn't even shave. Like <laughs> that is why I vote Republican. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> you see now. And the, the gay guy with her would be like, yeah, yeah, I'm voting Republican next year, too. Yeah. Fuck that shit. He does not belong in there. <laughs> like, or the gay guy would be like, actually, I'd prefer him with you. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> You need to keep him away from me. Yeah, yeah but I mean, my, no, it wouldn't look good. Like, it looks like I just have normal length hair. No, this is an illusion. I have a very, it's a buzz cut, and my head actually just goes right up to the top. Like, this, my, this is all, none of it's hair. It's just skull. It's the whole thing. You know, just a little... Little cropping on top. Anyway, anyway, you, you, my head's too big to go bald. Even, I could get really Stay jacked. And it still you want to be good. George Costanza? No, no, you don't want to be like George. Yeah. Out of George. <laughs> George looked so bad for that entire decade of Seinfeld that it actually gets sad towards the end, where you're like, oh Jesus, George. Like, I, I, maybe you have to be ugly to to have this part, but. God, you're, you're just horrible. He, kept, he looked he better than I thought. On show, though. There was a scene where he like posed in his boxers on a couch. You guys familiar with yeah. this? Yeah. yeah. He looks surprisingly good to me. I expected a he much. Looks, he, goes, he goes, I feel fat. And Kramer goes, you're stout. We <laughs> like that. <laughs> you're powerful. <laughs> you're stout. Powerful. <laughs> and he comes over and does this little Hey, now listen. I'm I'm here to help you here. I don't want you to do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. And and it's totally like just what would happen with like a porn producer going oh, yeah. to some 18 year old girl like, look, this is going to be good for your career. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're uncomfortable with, but look, this is what all the big stars do, and we're going to make it. So get in there. He like does one of the and starts taking all these tasteful like photos. Oh, it's so bad. He's like bent over in his whitey tidies. Ah, oh, man. Well, they were so. I thought George looked better than he looked better than I envisioned him naked. He did because it wasn't a belly. He he was just stout and thick looking. Mm -hmm. It was he was it, it seemed like his fat distribution was perfect. Whereas most guys get love handles and man boobs and a and a beer belly or or something like that. He just got a little bit bigger everywhere. Yeah, he from just like, widened and you know like everything yeah. got a little it bit was like bigger. Like a straight body thing. Yeah, yeah. just a, a rectangle. Like a like a dwarf or something like like he it it it, it worked. He, you were like, okay, he's a short, stocky, bald man. That's that's. He was built like a dwarf from Lord of the Rings. That's a good comparison. I didn't like mine very well. No, not a good miner. Aren't not the dwarves good? The dwarves are very good miners in in Middle Earth. You saying. know, <laughs> some would say they're the gold standard. Of <laughs> oh. But Costanza was a lousy employee, and uh, he wouldn't get, <laughs> he wouldn't do any work for anybody. Mr. Kruger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kruger. <laughs> anyway, we got another AMA. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me see here. I've got yeah, these AMA questions here. I like these. I like them too. These have been improving. There's one for Woody. Kyle and I. It's uh, so the one for me is, hey Woody, since you've accomplished paramotoring, what do you think you'll focus your vlogs around now? Um, in my head, like no, the question is wrong. My vlogs focus around me, and I'm not gonna like. Like, I enjoy paramotoring, so I'll continue to do that. And when I'm not interested in it anymore, I'll do something different. But I don't, like, do things so that I have vlog footage. Like, Just for the sake of vlogging. Yeah, exactly. No, the vlogs follow me around. I don't, like, chase the next interesting thing. And uh, I know some guys do that, and it's, it's kind of cool, and I can see why you like watching it. But I'm not going to alter my life to get vlog footage. 
And then uh, it says, Kyle, have any video plans coming up soon? Are you work on anything, Kyle? I know you got yeah, stuff. Yeah, so I should have my state blasting license back uh, by next Monday, this coming Monday. Um, so then I'm pretty good. I should be good to go with explosives. What? So you had, I know you had your federal for some time now. I didn't realize there was another level. Yeah, no one did. Yeah. It, it's a <laughs> Georgia specific thing. Do most um, states have a thing? I don't know about most, uh -huh. but um, most of the ones that my friends inhabit that are, that are my like experts that I lean on for this sort of advice don't. So I don't think Tennessee or Texas do, and California uh, is a whole different thing. Cali is so weird. Um, but, yeah, it turned out there's a state thing. It's, it's not a big, long waiting period or anything uh -huh. or even um, a great cost. It's, it's more like getting um, a concealed carry permit. It's a – I just uh, – but I'm having my lawyer file it because – Looking through the uh, the application process, I didn't know what some of the options were. So, out of my hands once again. That's floating around. But yeah, uh, we've been building sets. Uh, I've been building a bunker to uh, protect myself from explosives. We poured wow. this big concrete pad um, and then stood it up as a wall so that I've got this thing to stand behind. If I'm throwing grenades, I can stand here, throw a grenade, and then just move eight inches to the left and then stay on camera while you see the grenade go off. So, yeah, we're working on a bunch of stuff. The, um, my network is uh, th there's two TV shows that they're working on right now because um, a TV network came to them and wanted me in a show and then they have their own idea for a TV show with me um, I, I hope I'm not saying anything bad here by saying this but I don't think either one of them was probably gonna come to fruition I, I've, I've been through maybe 18 I've been through this process maybe 18 20 times so whenever they come to me like do you have any ideas possibly for a TV show it's like yeah here are the files here are the TV show files. Here's everything that we can do, will do, and what it costs. Um, but yeah, they're working on a thing right now that that might th they're saying would be on A and E, um, and it would be like uh, Walking Dead related. But again, don't think that's going to happen. And uh, what else are we doing? Uh, doing some body armor testing with dynamite. I think that's going to be uh, coming up soon because the first explosives that I'm ordering are the dynamite because I've gotten in. I've gotten in touch with the uh, producer, the supplier. Uh, he's not very far from me, and so uh, once I get my state license, I'll I'll be good to go. Hopefully I'm next week. Forward to that. Nice. Nice. Never-ending process of bullshit paperwork. Oh, and then there's the 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 not TSA, but uh, DOT. Then I start my DOT paperwork. Uh, that's the next thing, but that's for some other stuff. Is that related to, to explosives? Yeah, yeah. You know, if I'm, if I'm gonna be um, transferring a certain type of explosive. Uh, you know, on the roads, then there's some DOT stuff that I got to get knocked out. Damn. What? God, it sounds like such a pain. In, it's it's a pain in the ass to get your like license plates renewed if you forget a bill at home, <laughs> much less to get a, a a fucking card that says I can blow shit up and sell it legally. Like yeah. I can't imagine the bureaucracy you have to get through. Yeah, because uh. the, because even though all I want to do is like light a stick of dynamite on my YouTube video, I have to get the same licensing as if I wanted to invent a high explosive in my laboratory <laughs> and then transfer it to Alaska on on the state highways. For profit, I have to get the same license as that guy. I have to be a manufacturer of high explosives, and, and it's it's been a bit of a process. That's all. Jeez. Very frustrating, but I, I try not to complain about it at all because nobody wants to hear that. You do a good job of of. Oh, I just life. bottle. See, that's what you got to do. See, that's that's my that's that's my whole lifestyle. You just bottle it up, bottle it up, <laughs> push, it down, push it down, way push down. It just, just imagine. Yeah. Uh, just imagine a, a black sphere of just <laughs> infinite mass, and the mass just becomes so great with hate and anger and fear that eventually it implodes and just starts sucking everything into it, and then you'll just feel fine. I, I wake up every morning, I do that, I, then I go about my day. Nothing unhealthy about that at all. I'm feeling good. <laughs> no. Wish I could stop vomiting blood, though. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and Taylor, how likely is it that you will get that we will get to see a PKA based road trip involving Pokemon Go? I would say that the odds are zero. Um, uh, zero yeah, percent chances the odds of that. Zero happening. as of now, because the game just they haven't added Actually, trading. That's not an odds though. It'd be, you know, ten thousand to one or something would be the odds. Yeah, I'll say ten thousand to one, because um, the game just isn't that fun at this point. Like, there's no trading. There's, if me and Kyle went on a big excursion or something, we couldn't even turn to each other and trade or battle. 
or do anything. So it'd be like both of us playing. The, I may as well head out from St. Louis with him on, you know, FaceTime, and he leaves Georgia on FaceTime. And we just talk about it because that's about the same shit. Like there's, it's, it's just it's not that fun of a game right now. Are you yeah, agreeing really with that? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty much burning out on it. Um, Wolf, did you get into Pokemon? Uh, it's one game, and I'm a gamer per se, but I've, I've never, I guess I missed that bracket of playing games of Pokemon. I just never got into it. No, but I, I mean, I let my, my son play it, and he's going around with my phone and stuff. But And I, I, I'm actually jealous of those who get to play it. Because I see the excitement in it, and it's like it looks really cool, but it's not my thing. Yeah, it's a ton of fun, like as a nostalgia thing. Me and one of my friends, like a month ago now, we went to Forest Park, which is a park, a large park around here in the city, and we just walked around. And he had one of those things on his phone that said how far you actually walk, because that counter on the Pokemon Go app does not work, not even close to working. And we walked ten miles trying to catch Pokemon and shit over the course of hours. And it was just like a fun little like, man, this is neat. This is a neat thing to do. Like it takes me back to like 1997 or whatever when I was playing the first Pokemon game on the Game Boy. Like, this is fun. But it's all just novelty. It's 100% novelty. Once the novelty wears off, it's like, huh, do I want to play this? Or do I want to pick up my Game Boy and play a full game of Pokemon that I remember? It's like, well, obviously I pick up the one with all the battling and the fun and not the one that drains my battery and tries to trick me into buying balls. So did you like take an Uber back or something or like you walked all the way back or what? Well, we went like we walked to from his place to the park, which is in the middle of the downtown area, and we walked around there for I guess like seven and a half miles worth, and okay. then we walked back. So it was about okay. ten miles of walking. Uh, okay. It didn't get any good Pokemon either. I just got a bunch of items, so that was upsetting. Wow. Uh, but, I, I, it always yeah. seems to be the story when you talk about like, yes, I played this and. Like, I don't know, the hatching got you nothing good. You haven't seen a new Pokemon in X amount of days, yeah. stuff like it's that. It's kind of like if you like are if you go to the gym every single day and you work your fucking ass off, and then you go to the locker room and you roll a dice, and you're like, ah, shit, evens. I guess I don't get any credit for working out today. <laughs> and like you just didn't build muscle and didn't do anything after you put all the time in. That's what it feels like. It's like, I just okay. played your fucking game the way you told me to, and I didn't get anything out of it, so... But you I don't know, until they make stuff, that game better, right? I'm done with it. You get, like, Stardust and... You get, like, Stardust and Pokeballs. And... Yeah, but and, uh... those things lose their value once you don't care about the other part. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so really, I'm not playing anymore until they make it better. But I'll, I'll jump back in and play a bit when I'm driving around or something. So it would be it... like playing Call of Duty or Battlefield and, like, you're killing all these people, but you're not going up in rank is what you're saying. Kind of like that, yeah. Like, you're putting all the time in and playing the game you're, the way you're supposed to, but you get no payoff is kind of what it's like but so, yeah that i don't know why someone would even think that kyle and i were planning an excursion across the country to play this because this we game. jokingly mentioned it one time and people take what we say far far too seriously mm -hmm. <laughs> power of the interwebs uh, or maybe I they mean, just thought it was a good idea i yeah. mean it would be a fun idea like i think that like like i like road trips i've been on lots of road trips and really long ones like multi-day road trips cross country and then back again um, and, and I like that as long as you get a nice uh, car. So I would do a road trip style trip, but it's yeah. like I don't want to record it. Like I don't want to be vlogging the whole thing. I would hate that. And like so, like yeah, if I guess we get Patrick from over in the UK, bring his ass over and throw him in the car, and uh, and, and then have him record it, and then you guys could watch it. Um, but I just don't see how that would ever happen. I don't see what would be the genesis of me and Taylor getting into cars and going anywhere to do anything. What you should do is like go to like. Do it like this adventure of like going to every big city and going to like the worst ghetto slum and seeing what kind of Pokemon you can find in each <laughs> worst place that in was, America. Uh, that was the first story of Pokemon Go going wrong is here in downtown St. Louis. Someone got mugged because they were looking in the wrong area for Pokemon and yeah. someone on their stoop or wherever was not happy about some Pokemon oh. hunters in their area. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what people were doing. So there's an, there's a mechanic in the game where there are these pokey stops, and they're oh, based. I think I heard this. Yeah. Yeah, they're based on like you know real historic locations. So the post office might be one. Your church might be one, and you can place a lure in this pokey stop that will make the the Pokemon spawn there more more rapidly, three times more rapidly. And so what people would do is they put a lure in this pokey stop out in the middle of nowhere, and then when some dude comes along looking at his phone, lured in by the pokey lure, they whip his ass and take his phone. <laughs> they whip his ass and take his phone and rob him. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, they're, they're just like, huh, that only costs one lure. <laughs> <laughs> I got like, an iPhone for 60 cents. <laughs> you know, you know, like, exactly. Like, well, how much are you paying for them lures? Well, he's paying a lot. You know, you're, you're buying more lures on his phone. Like, now you're putting his lures in the thing to get more kids to beat up. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's harder but and those harder are in, to steal Those phones. are enterprising young criminals, if you think about it. Like, like everybody was like, oh, I can't believe that's happening. Beware, beware. But <laughs> some kid was out there, and he was like, hmm, Pokemon's cool, but how can I make some money playing it? <laughs> I, He's I got a bright future. <laughs> yeah, is it that <laughs> no, clever, though? Or is it just <laughs> like, I, I mean, you know, robbing people is, isn't necessarily, you know, I, I feel like he robbed people very, uh, very intelligently. He came up with a really good plan there. I feel like you give a criminal a lot of credit. I, I remember when I was a kid, they used to be like, that drug dealer's a really good salesman. Fuck that drug dealer. <laughs> He's selling drugs. They're so easy to sell. Sell a Plymouth, right? Then I'll be impressed. <laughs> Right? You, said, you move fucking Plymouth, you're a salesman. You move, like, pot and heroin? That shit sells itself. Sells itself. <laughs> you think that, like, in Oz, if they had Pokemon Go, people would be, like, getting raped over Snorlaxes and stuff? Trying to... You know, it's my fucking Snorlax! That, that Snorlax belongs to the Sicilians! You know, like, or whatever. Be fighting so hard for that Wi-Fi password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be doing... All of the fucking router, and, and it would be war. Oh my gosh, he would be a king. All right, it's Pizza Pie 101. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza Pie 101. All right, you could always tell when the Aryans took it because it'd be something horrible. <laughs> yes. Yo, homie, you gonna open up that hot spot or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better add me right now. That yeah. would be the worst because it seems like I, I can imagine myself in a scenario where like a guy asks for a favor that doesn't seem too far fetched. Like, hey, let me use your toothpaste, and I'd be like, well, of course. Have a bit of my. I, I I don't know how many uses one one tube has, but it's it's like eighty or a hundred at least. Right, have it seems some. like a lot. But then what if he's like, give me your socks too? And, well, well, these are the this is the only pair of socks I have for today. I believe we all had the one pair like like, <laughs> like, officer, like correctional officer Johnson mentioned earlier. Remember the one pair and you know whites and black socks and keep them separate in the laundry. And the next thing I know, he's just raining blows into my ear and and taking my socks off. I only have one pair of socks. Now you just yeah. kept hitting me. Yeah, I don't know where to draw the line. Yeah, there because was... I feel like in prison you can't give an inch. Or you're a or you're a bitch or, or a pussy. A you can't even yeah. give the time. <laughs> there was a guy in um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the HBO movie where the kid goes to like what happened last night or night of night of the night of right? So he's in there and then another inmate goes like, oh man, I forgot my commissary card. Can I borrow yours? And he's like, like. He knows it's not a good like he's not supposed to say yes, but what's he supposed to? You know, he's like, yeah. I, I guess you could buy mine, you know, borrow mine. And then all of a sudden, he's like, all right, I need like six tubes of toothpaste, 15 packets of ramen. I'm going to need some baby lotion, this, that. And the guy like loads up with all this stuff. And he just got robbed. And no he one. looked like a bitch. And it's like, I could see making that mistake. Somebody asked you for a commissary card. Your best response is to hit him in the nose as hard as you can. <laughs> I don't think so. Like, I don't no! Think no, you can't! <laughs> Nobody so fucks with my car. And they just <laughs> lick in your car. And like, <laughs> like, nobody fucks with you after that. You might nobody be right. gives a shit about your commissary card. They're like, they're, they see a commissary card on the, on the floor, and they're like, don't touch it, man. That's Kyle's. Don't touch that car. <laughs> if it, I was just going to take it back money. to him. Yeah, yeah, just tell him where it is. I feel <laughs> like what would really happen is... Movie was Kevin Hart and, uh, and Will Ferrell... When he's got to teach him to go to prison. <laughs> yeah, all right. Picturing all these scenes, I was like, oh, my God. the innocence is awesome. Yeah. Good gracious. I got a topic. Yeah, what? Well. So YouTube's coming up with a new service called Backstage. And I had to read oh, this article a couple times to understand, like, what it really is. But they're trying to compete with the other social media platforms. And basically, like, YouTube is already a place to post videos. It's going to be a place where you can post text, videos, and polls to your personal page. All right, so your YouTube, I guess, channel page, I made that up, it didn't say that, but your personal page, which to me is your channel, you can also post text, video, and polls. So it's interesting, like, so text is Twitter, right? Like Twitter or Facebook. And 
I wonder if it'll change the game at all. Because the real problem with these things <clears throat> is critical mass, right? I could build a better Twitter, and it wouldn't be interesting because that's not where the people are. But if YouTube suddenly... Yeah, like in- Google+. Plus. I guess. Nobody yeah, ended that, up using it because nobody went over there. Exactly. That, that, to, I, like, I don't know if Google Plus is better than Facebook or not, but yeah. certainly because it was empty, no one get, like, it, was, it, was, it just fell flat. And they tried to force it down our throats. I hate that. You, the, that as soon as you start being like, use this, use this, use this, I'm like, I will never use it. Fuck you. Like, I, I, it's, I, I'll circle back to that. You might be onto something. But um, I wonder, like... I don't know. I just like if YouTube becomes the platform that is all this stuff because people are there anyway. Maybe it'll be an interesting thing. Um, I, as far as forcing people to use it, I like. I think what they were trying to do was make YouTube less toxic, right? So they're like, all right, your Google page has to have your real name, and everyone's gonna like. They're trying to transition people to take away their anonymity so they wouldn't be douchebags. Because on Facebook, like I don't want to say Facebook is this like panacea heaven oasis wonderful place it's echo chambers it, it's millions of private echo chambers that exist uh, amongst themselves because you you push out the people who disagree with you most of the time and and bring in those that do face or youtube on the other yeah. hand it, it, like it can be comment sections are brutal on yeah. youtube brutal yeah. yeah but you can control it at least like somewhat you talking about the censorship stuff well yeah a little bit like it, it, it doesn't work nearly as to what is good, I mean, the, I wish uh, YouTube would work on their friggin' um, copyright stuff instead of this nonsense. Personally, like, like I'll get dinged for stuff that I own outright, and it's like anyone can claim it for no reason, and it's like I have to fight for it. And it's like I made this crap in my basement, you know what I mean? So it's like, why, yeah. why don't they work on that before they try and outreach to that other nonsense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had that stuff. Because- like songs I'm singing. I don't know if you've heard me sing, but it's. It, yeah, I remember that. It's not good. Yeah. No, one, yeah. <laughs> and no, then, no one's confusing him with Robin yeah. or anything. But he's like, ah, that really sounds like him. I don't know. Is, it, <laughs> is that David Bowie? Oh, it's Woody. Woody. Oh. Never yeah. happens. Never happens. And uh, Or I'd have copyright free music that like I needed to have more stuff in the descriptions for. And, yeah. and that was a challenge, too. So... I'm, I'm, go through that, man. I'm glad I've never had any issues whatsoever with that um, that I can remember or think of. And there was a time when I had a track that Sony owns playing in the background of a video with like s- millions of millions of views. Mm-hmm. And, and there's, a, there's a Sony track playing in the gra- back of it, and they never caught it. It, it never came up. Nobody ever cared. Uh, believe it or not, Sony Entertainment or whatever that, that big corporation is called DMG. owns the Russian National Anthem. What? Really? The, the, the song that's like na 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 na. Yeah, the victory music in Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Sony owns that shit. That's insane. This fucking Ruski sold out big time, right? <laughs> like, like, Jesus. Listen, I was playing in a paintball battle, and there was a guy walking with music playing on his speakers on his backpack or something, and I got dinged oh, for the music shit. that he was playing on his speakers. <laughs> He's well, a wall- shooting. copyright strike. Yeah. Fucking asshole. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck? I went to a friend's wedding. And uh, like it was like a full like day. You know, like we went there. They walked down the aisle, whatever. And then like nine minutes into the video, there's 30 seconds of us dancing at the reception. Copyright issues, you know. And uh, I'm like, I'll just take the video down. Like it's not like it's I got a, a like a copyright threat years ago. Or this is so long gone. I, even remember, I never got one. So I assume this is how they do it. Where like. They'll say you have to change something, and if you don't, they go through with it. Or maybe that was like their automated thing. But I got my ads taken off a video where I just uh, – it was right after Hurricane Sandy happened. And I just took footage from um, the day after tomorrow as the <laughs> New York is being bulldozed and destroyed. And then I cut out the audio of, um, of a newscaster having a conversation about Hurricane Sandy, being like, oh, my God, the carnage. Oh, are you okay down there? Are you okay? And it's just footage of the day after tomorrow as the oh, waves are uh, barreling through waves. the city and yeah. killing everyone. Knocking and over oh, man, a lot of people did not care. For, I thought it was really funny. People did not care for that. Because like uh, I, I did it as Hurricane Sandy was happening. So it wasn't very tactical. Uh, the, first, like, wave of, the first wave of the first wave of social justice war like right now everyone you know they're offended about this or that 
You go back like four years, they would just hunt for people who talked about current events, right? If someone, if there was like an earthquake and then you talked about how that earthquake had an impact on you, you're a dick. Oh my God, you monetize well, you those people's it's deaths. Like if, if you make YouTube videos um, that aren't normally news, like, like, like what people hated was when like, Someone who, who's normally making gaming content would stop would make a video titled, um, you know, tsunami or in Tunisia or whatever, and then sort of like all of a sudden become a news channel to end their eyes. But the real issue that I see with that is mind your own fucking business. See, well, what happened to me is so my video I, while yeah. it was gaming in the background pretty consistently, like ninety five percent of the time, the topic I talked about was anything, right? You know, oh my god, some kid scared about an upcoming surgery, Google Fiber rolling in, business, weather, whatever, and I would get like hundreds or thousands of tweets being like, oh my god, what do you talk about this? Talk about this like major event. They wanted to hear my opinion on it, and heaven forbid I gave it because then there's another whole group of people saying like oh my god can you believe what he just talked about this, this well guy. you did have that annotation that said click here and we'll get these people off the roof with that black family on that roof i mean there's a million click, clicks. click yeah. to send aid yeah, yeah. They never favorite, got this, <laughs> favorite this video to teach these guys how to swim yeah, I, think, I think every <laughs> subscriber that Woody gained, he sent a bottle of water to Katrina. I think that's, that's, that's what he back then. A bottle of water. <laughs> Just one bottle. <laughs> that's yeah, a I lot mean, of bottles of water. If you get, you know, you get twenty thousand subs in a week or something, you know, that's, you know, you're coming up with a lot of water, and you know, yeah. the, the poll thing maybe sounds interesting. The rest of the the. The other stuff they were talking about, then I don't see it. I need to see it though, right? Like I need to see what this text feed will look like to me, exactly. the subscriber. So, so I need to go in, get on, log into my YouTube channel, subscribe to eight people I like again, because I just I don't subscribe and utilize a YouTube channel. I just go and watch what I want at this point. And I need to see what happens when Woody's gamer tag makes a text post. What comes to me, the subscriber? What is this going up on a feed somewhere? Is there a paragraph? With Woody's face at the at the top left of it, like he just wrote an uh, an editorial, because yeah. that'd be good. And, nice and you can post the, pictures too. Board. So it's Instagram, it's Twitter, it's Facebook, it's all these things, and you just need a proper feed that's interesting. See, the problem with this is it really, oh man. See, this is good for the company and bad for the the video dev uh, maker though, as far as revenues are go are going to go, because you're not going to get. You think they're gonna pay me pay me for my text posts or my polls or my images? Now, hey, maybe if they maybe they will. Maybe they're gonna put a banner ad next to each image I post. In which case, I'll 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 start taking lots More. of pictures, right? Uh, but I don't think that's the case. I think that all we're doing is clogging up the feed, um, yep. and and distracting mm -hmm. people from the monetized product, which is the video. And now all of a sudden, it, it now all of a sudden Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter just like jumped on inside of YouTube and interspaced itself between the uploads, which were already fucking blown out and hard to find anyway. So. Or maybe what? people spend more time on YouTube and it takes away from Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. What well, YouTube needs is a holy shit moment. Like when the biggest thing that has happened in a long time is when Instagram stole Snapchat's concept with their storyline. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a huge, I love Instagram, I've got a lot of fans on there and stuff, and when they took Snapchat's idea and put it on Instagram, that like blew everyone out of the water. Like the whole world stopped and went, OMG, look at this. Like I don't even use my Snapchat anymore, I just strictly do my Instagram, Instasnap stuff. Like that's what YouTube needs to come up with, something that mind-blowing to just, not a simplistic little I like a few more texts and type like they gotta go. Hey. YouTube, YouTube oh. needs to be, be doing uh, funding contests where amateur video makers uh, compete in film contests for YouTube and then are rewarded with uh, the money or the resources to put their project, take their project ideas to the next level. That's what I want to see. They're, they should be having like the YouTube Film Festival once a year where everyone brings their best product in many different categories forward and they compete and then and, and uh, the audiences get together and figure out or maybe critics too do a reality show if you want to we can all text and vote in if we want but figure out who wins in the special effects department the firearm category if that's even a thing whatever I'm a little you know self-serving the, the gaming and then in the end you're like holy shit 
This guy we never even heard of made the best amateur horror movie. We're going to give him $250,000 and a, a film crew and a set to work on for six months. He's going to make his horror movie. Like, come on. That sounds like a great idea, right? Yeah, yeah. Sounds better I, than text posts and polls. I, I hear yeah. you, and it would make... It would add some content, like it would, you know, a little content would dribble in that's high quality, but not a ton of content. Um, what I would like from YouTube is just better scrolling on the videos. Like when I want to go forward 30 seconds or back, I feel like that process is shit. Really? Loading screen, the loading time, you mean? Yeah, yeah, like it doesn't buffer far enough ahead, right? So if I have a 12 minute video and I want to go to six, it doesn't oh. matter if I let it buffer for a while. It, it doesn't do that. If I want to go well, back three seconds, it seems like I can't. Like I have to go back five or two. Like it, it's you not know, while, while that is a bit annoying, I, I bet that saves them an enormous amount of bandwidth one way or another. I, I bet it's. I, I bet doing it the way that mm -hmm. we would all like it, so that you can insta click anywhere in it, like it's a DVD player, would like double fold their the fucking cost That's of the, way it used the damn to be. site. Because yeah. it's barely breaking even as it is. Kyle's right. I, I bet it would be very expensive in terms of bandwidth and process time and stuff. But of course, it doing would be it a for better one product. video like, is is. I want it to be like VLC. You know when you have a movie locally and you can just like scroll around and how nice it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that experience. I'm surprised YouTube hasn't done something kind of like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon or or started doing like their own original programming or something like that. Because it seems like everybody has YouTube they on do. their. Don't they, do they have, have YouTube like YouTube Red or original? something like that? Yeah, they got YouTube Red, and, and you know, they support people. See, it's the, the, what they'll never do because it's counter. It's counter to what YouTube is. Is be like, welcome to the YouTube show with these writers and actors that we hired from Hollywood. Like that doesn't make any sense at all. What makes sense is to grab people from the community and fund their projects and have them come on board and collaborate because that's what YouTube's about. That's that's their thing. YouTube, and they do that. YouTube yeah, Red that, to me on is YouTube no Red, ads. Do they have is YouTube Red something where like there's actual like a series like The Wire on there that YouTube is funding for. YouTube creators. I thought so. I thought that there was content that's just on YouTube Red that's higher grade content with like act acting and and story story driven plots and stuff. But honestly, I I'm not into that He's stuff. Right. So I so so here I, I just pulled it up. Um, Ad free and offline video. That to me is what I thought YouTube Red was. Um, you, you you know it's like having ad block in that you never get any ads. And also especially cool for like people who watch things like PKA. If you have it on your phone. It doesn't have to be in the foreground. You can like watch yeah, can turn it PKA yeah. and go over to like Reddit or browser or whatever. Like it doesn't have to be in the foreground. So YouTube Red gives you that. It gives you uninterrupted music and it gives you original shows. And that Kyle was talking about, but I didn't know about the original shows. Huh. I've just really seen billboards that. of like, I, when I was in LA, there were like YouTube Red billboards and they had like a cast and crew kind of like up, up there on the billboard. And I didn't recognize any of them. But I was like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. Or I, I, I took that to be the, the, I the case. It might be that they took some of the most popular YouTubers and they have YouTube Red exclusives. But I'm, sure, I could sure. be off yeah, on that. I, I bet that's true. I, I don't care either way, to be honest. It's just, I, I'm not interested in that. It's I, I, not a being a big uh, factor in our lives, personally. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, there's so much Great. stuff on YouTube already to watch. And when you have Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, HBO, whatever, like, Stars, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to get through all that content on its own, much less a whole new service making shit like uh, House of Cards or whatever. I like the offline yeah. thing. Like, I, I, if I were to watch... Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. That would literally be the only reason why I got it. Oh, and, and you know, I downloaded... I downloaded CISO the other day. It's it's not an ad... It's not a sponsor for tonight's show, uh, but uh, they are a sponsor that recurs with us, and uh, I, I downloaded it to watch um, uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail the other night, and I, I really like that service. It's HD, you know, it's good quality. I, I, I've gotten some other services, and it, it was just really shitty quality video. I was like, who would watch this? Uh, but CISO was actually pretty cool. Nice. Huh. Hmm. Let me uh, speaking of ads. Let me uh, get in this Blue Apron ad. It's the last of the night. <clears throat> Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. So they set the, the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal suppliers, family-run farms, fisheries, and ranchers. Whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron is bringing you the best. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. It's easy. Each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients. 
It can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. And it's flexible. You can customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. Choose delivery options to fit your needs. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with, with free shipping as well by going to blueapron.com slash painkiller. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash painkiller. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Very cool. Check out Blue Apron. It'll expand did the I, uh, recipes. Did, did, I, did I tell you, Woody, or maybe on the show, like um, what the awful smell that I, that I spelled in my house was a while back that took me a while to find? Oh, jeez. Where what are we headed it? with this? Dead animal? Um, I thought it was a dead animal, but what it turned out to be was in the kitchen, I've got, there's like a nook, there's like a corner and that like there's like paper towel holders there. And then uh, there's a lot of stuff stacked up there. The mixer's there. And unfortunately a bag of potatoes had been put all the way in the back corner and forgotten about. Now when potatoes sit on your countertop and rot for three months, they then liquefy so oh. I had this rancid, liquid potato stuff, like goo, like all behind the splash guard and all over the countertop. I, I kept smelling it, and I was just, I was like looking everywhere. It sm- I was like, a rat died in the crawl space. A fucking rat has died in the crawl space. Because I recognized that smell from when I was a kid, and like a, a rat died under our house. And, and like for six weeks, it smelled awful. It's a terrible smell. But I was like, I kept thinking, like, it'll go away. It'll go away. Because there's nothing else you can do. What are you going to do? Crawl into a crawl space and look for a carcass of a, of a mouse this big? Like, eventually he just dries up and he's a, he's a crusty and it's over. Those taters were not getting any better. And finally, <laughs> Kitty, Kitty was cleaning the kitchen and she discovered them. And I just hear in the, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I found it. I found the smell. <laughs> she's in there with like rubber gloves, like she's about to stick them up a cow's ass down to her elbow, bleach, fucking all kinds of cleaning supplies. But but so we sterilized that fucking kitchen. But it was the it, it smelled like rotten shrimp, which is disgusting. But oh, that's, that's horrible smell. Yeah, I had, rotten shrimp. I had the opposite experience. So in high school, I don't remember why, but we brought a potato to school. Maybe it was for science or something. And um, I, our locker had like a little shelf for the top foot of it. And I put the potato up there and didn't really think much of it. Time would pass and time would pass. And I don't know, the potato like got in the way. So I tried to move it, but it didn't move. Like it was kind of, I was like, ah, fuck it. Didn't think much of it. A few more weeks later go by. And now the roots are like the potato is, is growing. It's growing in my locker. I'm not watering it or anything. The roots, mm-hmm. there are these like ventilation holes and they're like coming and going and twisting and like all around. It's got a good grip on my locker. It wasn't, it, it kept growing until the school year ended. And we have to like thoroughly clean out our lockers and have them inspected. And uh, then I just ripped it free from the roots and then I could get the roots out. And... You let a potato grow in your locker yeah, all year nasty. after one attempt to move it where you went, Nah. Just that's pretty much how it went down. <laughs> it, it, it's just like, hey, buddy, you want to you, you want to get it moving? No, all right, no, hang out. All right, all right. <laughs> you, you know, you, you want to stay here for nine months? You stay here for nine months. You know? <laughs> that's how it went. Yeah. Well, I, I thought I it was like cool. After that long of a lifespan, at the end of the year, I would have taken him out carefully and like planted him somewhere nice so we could see the sunlight for once. <laughs> Everybody like people were definitely noticing. Give him a Shawshank moment. Yeah, right. People were noticing like Tuber Boy over there. With his potato growing in his locker. They had to notice, because every time you opened it, they had to be like, Woody has had a fucking potato (laughs) growing in his locker since December. You'd have to be, like, like seven foot tall. Like, it's above your head, where these, like, where the shelf is. That's that's dedication, bro. The smell. The rotten, rotten tomato. I guess, I think mine rotted because maybe they were, like, clumped together. I think that creates a whole Tomato or potato? Potato. Oh, yeah, mine too. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, I don't they, think a tomato would start growing shit out. <laughs> if it is, no. that's a fucked up tomato, right? For some reason, the thing that smells really, really bad when I can't find it is broccoli. Like, mm, I don't have enough broccoli in the house to really know. Uh, it's having the, kid, the kids broccoli. lost one behind the, the the stove once, and it's like I found it. It's like it really stank up the place. I had like a bag of it. And like I had this even, plot like, the smell of broccoli last night, Melissa as a snack wanted a bunch of fucking broccoli and so she made a bunch of it and boiled it and like in the middle of boiling broccoli there's just that permeating smell yeah, of like answered, yeah. feet and homelessness 
and <laughs> poverty, and you're just like, this is like, no wonder so many people complain about eating this. It smells rancid. Like if someone from a different culture showed up and we were like, we're having broccoli, they'd be like giving each other eyes, like, are we fucking doing this? Really? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, oh, these fucking Westerners. Like, I don't know. it's like a Klingon meal. Wearing old shoes in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leather is a delicacy to them. Don't say anything. You know? <laughs> it's all they have. It's all they have. It's all they have. <laughs> it's potatoes that have already started. You accept what they give you. You know how they are with guns. <laughs> <laughs> They're very irritable people, you know. Mmm, <laughs> mm, yummy. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah nice. I, I try to stay away from the vegetables. I, uh, I I started my diet two days ago, uh, and so it's mostly consisted of grilled chicken so far. Since since <laughs> since PK diet. since PKN, I've had eleven hundred calories. Yeah. When Those Kyle decides days. to lose weight, he goes hard in the paint. He's like, yeah, we're not going to eat until September. I'm doing the yeah, Auschwitz it, diet. Yeah, I like to get real faint. I, I like to like be working out and getting dizzy. And, 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 and that's how I know things are working. You know you're treating your body right when little bits of strain or standing too quickly is enough to phase you. Yeah, yeah, like, you get those gray outs where like you stand up too quick and the blood, like the blood, uh, you know, leaves your head and you're like, oh shit, I haven't eaten in a couple a couple hours here, a couple days here, and I have to take it easy. Yeah, I, I, I'm, uh, I have some, I have some goals that I'm trying to meet quickly. What uh, vegetables do you like? Vegetarian for like two months. Oh man, you're asking me what vegetables I like. See, I hate when people ask this question. This is one of those questions when, when I feel like it, this is the equivalent of if I so so how was your family growing up? But your family was like all molesters, or they like <laughs> died, or like they died in a car accident when you were seven, and you watched them burn alive. So when you ask me what vegetables I like, I'm corn like corn on the cob. So you really resent vegetables. I like potatoes. Corn on um, the cob. That's potatoes good. are not a vegetable. I, I count them as a vegetable, though. Uh, I, I don't. I don't care. That tuber is a vegetable to me. Um, it's a starch, sure, but uh, it, it, it comes out of the ground. All right, that's all. That yeah. So, so, feel the same way about pasta. That's another vegetable. Uh, <laughs> uh, rice comes from the ground. Uh, rice, totally. That's another one of my my my, my, my uh, favorite vegetables. Come on, uh, corn on the cob, fries. tomatoes. No, no. No, tomatoes are a fruit. No. Like, like, like I, tomato, tomatoes are fruit. I count them as vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, all right. it's a vegetable. <laughs> system. <laughs> see here. Um, I, so salads, which is just you know like romaine lettuce and like a little spinach and stuff like that. Like, sure, all those salads I like. But what am I doing with a salad, right? I'm I'm putting dressing on it, and my favorite dressings are are blue cheese, Caesar, and ranch. Mm -hmm. I can eat vinaigrette, but that's not what I want. I don't want that shit. Mm -hmm. Um. So vegetables. I'm trying to think of one I like. Um, Strawberries. Oh, no. I just had. Um, <laughs> oh <Kitty> no! <laughs> Kitty made shepherd's pie, and I flick all the carrot bits out before I oh eat. Oh my god! Like I, I'm going through it, and she used to put peas in it, and I would stand over the trash can flicking each individual <laughs> pea out of her shepherd's pie, and I'd look at her like, "I told you I'm not gonna fucking eat them." Wait, what do you, think? you thought I was kidding? I don't eat this shit. And, and and so all all I want is the beef, the mashed potatoes, and the cheesy, you know, burnt on crust. That's my shepherd's pie. Uh, I'm really struggling thinking of uh, strawberries, vegetable. kiwis, fruits. Those are, Those are fruits. They're Those are fruits. both vegetables to me. <laughs> okay, well, we're not going to use your system anymore. Well, your system just as fucked as mine, Potato Head. No, mine how, about, uh, how, about how about celery? Is just crunchy water. It's disgusting, and it makes your pee smell bad. I think. No, or that's asparagus. Asparagus. Uh, all, another, another one I don't eat. Vegetables. Um, do onions count? Are onions a vegetable? Onions are. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't I know. Think onions, what is I'm an pretty onion? sure onions are a vegetable. I think and, a vegetable. And, but it's not like I'm <laughs> taking yeah, a hunk out of an onion. You know, I'm putting them on place. burgers. I'm dicing them yeah, up. Yeah, right. Pickles. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Cucumbers. Once you soak them in vinegar for <laughs> for a while, that makes them healthy. <laughs> Salt vinegared cucumbers. Yeah, so I really I'm struggling to think. Uh, sweet potatoes. Uh, that's, that's still not. That's still, still not. not. A, uh, you just it, gave it, me it, shit for strawberries. You just said potatoes. You see, when you're dealing with when you're dealing with me, you've just, I've just got to compile a list of things that I eat that aren't animals. So and, and we just got to work from that list. You know, forget about from legumes and fucking. No, no. Let's just break it down to things that I eat that weren't alive at one time or weren't walking around and didn't have a face. There aren't many. It, it's upsetting and unhealthy. 
Yeah, you. I, I cannot believe that you don't. That you flick peas and carrots out of things. That's, yeah. Those are the two easiest. Like when you have like fried rice. Like if you make fried rice at home, do you put carrots and peas and like water chestnuts and stuff in there? Or are you just no. when I eat Chinese like fr- chicken fried rice and there's peas, flicking them out. That is crazy. Seriously. Oh, you eat. like a baby corn? That's really good in fried I rice. I hate baby corn. I <laughs> fuck baby corn. Absolutely, like, 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 absolutely not. Like, now you mentioned corn on the cob earlier, and sometimes I will eat that if, it, if, if there's like barbecue to go along with it. But here's the caveat, of course, and maybe this is the same thing as lobster. It's soaked in butter. Oh yeah, it's and salt. In butter. And salt. You butter cover and salt. it with like, butter so the salt sticks to it. And it's keep really. Keep in mind, it's boiled corn, so how much nutrition was I getting anyway? Yeah, it, it, in the same way that French fries are just ketchup shovels, uh, corn on the cob is really just like a, a butter and salt container of some sort. Yeah. It's like. Um, I, I don't know. I, corn on the cob, if you get it like fresh out of like a garden, like my grandparents have a garden with a lot of corn in it, and it's, it's real good corn. You don't really need that much butter on it. Like. Like, I don't. You don't need to douse it in butter and salt to It'd make be it better, good. Though, right? Uh, if I've got a cob this big, like you know the ones that have been cut to like manageable sizes, tablespoon of butter at least. At least right. we're, we're cutting off a whole tablespoon of butter at least. Yeah, I'll drench it in butter too. Um, mm. yeah, that's how about green peppers? That's a just regular pepper. Ah, yeah, now now you're on to something because I like peppers. There you uh, go. We found one. Is yeah, that a, that's so, a vegetable, right? I think so. I think yes, it's a real life so. actual vegetable. I can't take any like more. bell peppers. I, I really like. I do. I make a lot of different dishes with bell peppers. I do stuffed uh, stuffed peppers. I'll take uh, you know I'll, I'll gut the, the the pepper and save the top, and I'll stuff it with chicken and uh, and cheese and so, ice and st- and seems beans like you and could stuff. Put peppers and onions on about, all kinds of things. What about mushrooms? Oh, I'm uh, a big I, mushroom fan. I used to hate mushrooms, but now I kind of like them. If it's like, I you know I like them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're a vegetable, okay, there though. Although no, they're, they're, all, uh, so they're a fungus. Fungi, they're a, yeah, that's fungi. Yeah, that's fungi. You're true. Yeah. Yeah, mushrooms are really good. I didn't think that you would like those, Kyle. I didn't used to, and I still, sometimes the texture throws me off, but like... Uh, pork I really like them with steak. And gravy with a steak yeah, or something. Yeah, with steak. What you should try, Kyle, is get, like, just in a regular pan, buy some of those, like, baby bella mushrooms or whatever, slice yeah. them up. Put a bunch of butter in the pan, and then some crushed up minced garlic, and then some uh, throw the mushrooms in, and then add a little bit of like cheap red wine or cooking wine, and then you put that on top of steak, and it's magnifique. It's yeah, great. I uh, it was, I okay. dated a vegan once. That was horrid. Ah, Ugh, yeah. that but was I bet horrid. she was thin. She's I dated hot. someone. What was your worst vegan diet. experience? With her? My worst vegan experience is going to a barbecue. A vegan and... barbecue. Yeah, it was oh. just sad. What was it like? It, it was like I said, uh, I got to go to the bathroom, and I went to the McDonald's three blocks down. <laughs> I came back, and I was like, I'm good to go. But it was a very a whole bunch of very weak, pale people. <laughs> and just, just, ugh. It was like it was like just talking about being vegans half the time. It was like <laughs> Heaven and here I am, this fun loving, paintballing, freaking. <laughs> Man, man, who like who's cut up a deer before? You know what I mean? It's like I'm like the opposite. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a good thing this chick's a model because, yeah, it was just it wasn't gonna last long. Really struggling with the vegetables. It, it's kind of embarrassing that we all struggled with our list of vegetables, right? Like it's been a while. <laughs> like, it was like, really like, only you and Woody. <laughs> no, I knew my I list like had fruits on it. Stuff. I was just stretching the definition. <laughs> yeah, I like strawberries, tomatoes. You know. <laughs> I knew what they were. No, yeah. The best was when Kyle had toma- uh, uh, tomatoes. What about sweet? What, uh, no, potatoes and sweet potatoes. Yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah. Was, <laughs> that was an yeah. awesome transition. Yeah, maybe we could, uh, maybe the sweet potato sweet, right? That's got to be a... Somewhere along the line, they became vegetized. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's a potato <laughs> that fucked a strawberry, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> how you get those? Now, that I'm really interested in is genetically modified. I, I hate that everybody acts like GMOs are the devil because I'm interested in some GMO uh, foods. Like uh, m- a lot of the food we eat are anyway seeds. now, but but I want the freaky ones. Yeah, I want like an ear of corn, but it's sprouting raspberries, and you're just, <laughs> you know, something like that. And that could be done. That, that could be done. Good. Imagine yeah. a coconut, but on the inside, it's like delicious apple juice or berry juice on the inside instead of that stupid coconut water that only assholes drink. I, I guess not. I guess lots of people drink coconut water. It just doesn't taste good. I bet it's it gives me diarrhea. Good. Combining a banana with a kiwi. 
Mm. They did that and they, they undid the banana peel and it was like kiwi inside. It was like really weird. And something. That's interesting. That would be really... Kiwis are a criminally underrated fruit. Very, very good, but nobody really gets them ever. I just wanted a couple slices in like my mixed drink. I, I, I don't want to be like... I don't even... I don't, I don't want to eat one or anything. I don't want to chew on a kiwi. I, I, <laughs> kiwis are really good. They're kind of like strawberries. And I only eat them if I'm like on a cruise ship or someplace. Put it someplace. in my mouth or... I don't yeah, when you're on vacation. On it or or eat, eat it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I just go to the grocery to store and pick them up. It's like vacation only. Man, I'm really struggling with these veggies. Uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I'm literally having to think of like my my recent like shopping trips and like uh, re- uh, things I've eaten at restaurants to try to think of like the vegetables that I eat. Um, damn. Yeah. So like none basically. None. Okay. Really, I I mean, it, for all intents and purposes, I I mean, I eat more fucking veal than I do vegetables. And I eat veal like once a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> so very rarely are vegetables there. And if they put them in a dish, you stand there and stare at people and spitefully pick them out. I'll pick them right the fuck out. Don't act like I won't. Like, like absolutely. Like, uh, she, was, she was like, oh, you're flicking the peas out. I'm like, of course I am. You put them in my food. <laughs> <laughs> what else how am else, I going to do with them? How else will I continue? Every There's couple of years. Green I, uh... landmines of disgustingness. <laughs> every, every couple of years, I go vegetarian for like two months. That's oh, impressive. Just, just to clean out the system. Does it make you feel better, or do you feel weaker at all, or anything? Or um, a little weaker for like the first week or so. No, pun intended with words, but it it actually makes you feel real good. Like if I feel real, like it literally cleans out the system, and you know you do feel. Healthier, I guess as you could imagine compare it to like a smoker is stopping smoking. You ever got a colonic? Nah. I want to do that because I keep seeing like they keep talking about how much like old rot comes out of you is like in you, and and when you really start thinking about that for a while, it, it, if there's like seven pounds of like gross poop inside of me that that could be gone, like. I'd like it to be gone. Imagine seven pounds of shit on this table right here in front of you, yeah, and don't. now say, now imagine <laughs> it's in your body and you can't get it out. You'd freak the fuck out if I showed you a pile a pile of seven pounds of shit, knocked you over the head, you woke up and I was like, now it's inside of you. <laughs> You'd be doing anything you could to get that seven pounds of shit out. So like if, I'm thinking, you want to do something that instead of that? When it, instead of doing that, um, there's this cleansing stuff you can take when you have to go and get. Oh, what yeah, do you do? It, the, um, the colonoscopy. Yeah. You ever tried that, that cleansing stuff you have to take? I have before? not, no. Oh, my gosh. Do one of those, and then you'll be, you won't need a... It'll be spick and span, yeah. You'll be clean as, oh, my goodness. Yeah, gosh. I took my, 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 first, my first healthy poop of my diet today. It was just night and day between the, the day oh. before. It's like the day before, the entire bowl is just full of liquid diarrhea, with, and it's like above the water. Like the poop is above the water. It's so uh, oily, it sits on top. It like, literally is. It's an oil. You can see that there's a bit of a shimmer on it, like in it, like like when there's like oil or. I did not lot, examine it that. Kind of, it's Docs kind of are shaking their wings free of it. You know, <laughs> it's kind of iridescent. Oh yeah, like, like like you'll start. I'll start smelling it, and I'll have, I'll look down and like, like blow air like past my cock into the bowl, so that so that the exhaust will like come out around my ass crack in the back. <laughs> back there that, that was terrible i've but, done that exact same thing and that's one of those yeah. things that i like if i've done it i'm like no one's ever done this before and then <laughs> everybody's done that come on you, you know you blow it and you can you can feel like the whole bowl pressurizes and all that smelly air comes out your ass crack in the back and and up into the ventilation hopefully um, but the, the day's poop was like was was you know it was solid and together and looked healthy just night and day. Uh, There's a changing of the guard inside you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh. That's a beautiful thing right there. Jesus. Mercy. So Amazon's selling cars. Uh, it's only a matter of time, so they're selling everything. Not literally selling them. They're, they're like, they built a car hub. Here, I'll give you a link. Um, I thought it was kind of, like, what was interesting to me is not so much that there's this new like car link thing that they've got. It's that I, like my first reaction was, oh my gosh, this is so great. Amazon selling cars. Now I can get away from everyone else. I intrinsically trust Amazon with everything they sell. My customer experience with them is always so good that like, I don't know. I'm just like, damn, 
I can buy so my are these next... all new vehicles. So they're not for sale. It's like they just took the Amazon infrastructure, and now you can read reviews and see what people are saying about it. And it has their like configuration management system where you can choose like what you want in your car. Why don't you just use CarMax then? I don't know. It's Amazon. I trust Amazon. Soon they'll have like Realty <laughs> on there. CarMax is the place that sells used cars, right? Like they get them from uh, rental car dealers mostly, and. Then they just resell you those like abused, beaten. Cars. Um, I don't know anything about that. I'm I'm sure they sell some <clears throat> rental cars. I didn't think that made up the majority of their fleet, though. I could be wrong. That's what I always thought. <clears throat> that like, you know, typically they're fed cars from the rental agencies, and that's what you're seeing at CarMax. I wouldn't mind that. I I am hard on a rental <clears throat> car though. Like, like that that one I had the yeah, other day. Everybody's was... hard on rental cars, man. They're I mean, hard they, on rent... nobody drives those well. And rental car agencies, like I don't think they're like really maintaining them so that they last for fifteen years. I think they know it when they get two years old, they're dumping them. So, well, they don't need them. They, they want to. They want the newer. Right. Uh, year. Well, I, I uh, guess what I'm saying is, so you're getting a car that's been abused and maintained to the minimum. And you know, I rode that Corolla hard and put it away wet. I'll mm. tell you that. I was, <laughs> Speeding through fucking West Texas, going about 85 the whole time, and I didn't slow down for much. And when it, when it was time to like go into my hotel, there was a real dip that you and I was just like, fuck it, hit it. I hit it, you know, full speed. Oh, yeah, the front end, you hear like that, that, that like under spoiler thing it's got that just hits the asphalt, <laughs> bam, and you can just hear it drag. <laughs> I don't even flinch. I'm just like, okay, <laughs> we're here. All right, let's just <laughs> into this spot. Bam! Like, like, you know, we hit it hard. Just, just fuck it. And you, know? you were it's... driving like a, a, like the base model Corolla or whatever mm -hmm. it was they gave you. So guaranteed, while you're going like 85, it doesn't sound like you're going 85 in a nice car where it's just kind uh -huh. of you're floating along. It's you're feeling every mile per hour of that yeah. 85. You're just, <laughs> yeah. like, it feels like you're going so fast in those little shit boxes because you can hear all the noise from outside. It's not like a cabin. It's just kind of like a little tiny partition between you and reality in your little yeah. box as you're soaring down the highway i was going to get an explorer but there were two issues with that one it was very expensive and i wasn't going to be doing much driving and and it was just my, myself and the, and then i saw this option to, to do this thing where you don't really know what kind of car you're going to get it might it, it's going to be this or better and it could be that <laughs> yeah. and it's That's all like, yeah. for the like 120 dollars a day or whatever like a low price and i was like huh well, that sounds fun. So you're telling me that worst case scenario, I'm in a car that I'm okay with, and best case scenario, I get a really nice car for cheap. And so I just pulled the trigger on that, and it turned out it was a black Corolla, but mm. I didn't mind it. I, you know, it was fine. Last time I rented a car, uh, nobody wanted the Expedition, and there was a long line. They're like, anyone willing to take the Expedition? And um, it's not what I wanted. It was just Hope and I, but I was like, all right, I'll take it. It was pretty cool, and that six cylinder moved. But it's I, not I, an Expedition. Yeah, you're Shit. thinking of Explorer. It wasn't an Explorer. Oh, if it was an Expedition, that's an eight-cylinder, right? Because those are the giant ones. Uh, yeah, I it, might they, be wrong then. Yeah, the, Expe the Expedition is very big. That's their biggest one. And then there's the Explorer down from that, and then the Escape down from that. Uh, and then, of course, there was the Excursion, but it's been discontinued. Yeah, I'm actually shopping for a car right now. Shit, I'm really curious. What are you looking for? Um, well, I'm getting out of my Land Rover, and I'm, I want to get a large SUV. So it's like... Right now, I'm looking at a Denali. Hmm. Right those are now. nice. Those are nice. Yeah. To uh, get the third row seating and that trunk space is insane. Wolf making so, money, yeah. stacks on stacks. Looking at Denali's. <laughs> no, well, it's like between the traveling for paintball and, and the kids and niece and nephew and, uh, like, my my car is my office, like, I get it. The, I get the inside redone. I get a TV screen on the front dashboard. I do everything to it. So it's like, it's got to, you know, it's got to be somewhat comfortable, especially when I'm on the road trips or. What are you replacing? A Land Rover LR4. Oh, why are you replacing that? Uh, it's my third Land Rover, and I'm getting sick of them now. So it's like I used to get I, my first one. I had a Discovery, and I, it, I. I had it for off-roading. Like I put mud tires on it. I had the the bars on it. I had a wench on it. It was like beautiful. And then now they're becoming so non-off-roady. It's just getting mm -hmm. uh, like they're between all the SUVs. The only ones that were tra trail rated were Land Rovers and Jeeps. 
and now it's like you know every time i go to my dealership my it's covered in mud i'm like literally the only guy who does that the rest of them is freaking housewives at whole foods what year is it mine the 2010 okay. so yeah so now i'm looking at it I, i've been like escalades i no good off i need to be able to go to off-road because of all my paintball adventures and stuff so and too much uh, plastic on the escalade yeah and and all the snow especially here but uh mm. the it's been looking good so far. <clears throat> Porsche, the Cayenne, or whatever called, that's just a car, bigger car. So I need something a little more that's got some height to it, and I can beat it. But I want the chicks to like it too. Of course, yeah. yeah. It, it, that, that's that, always that's, a priority. That's always a priority. No joke. That's the thing. So it's like, and it's funny. Is it my the paintball demographic is all guys with pickup trucks and you know, kind of blue collar and kind of like. They think I'm a little, you know, showy fancy, but it's like, dude, I, I have season tickets to the opera and the ballet. It's kind of hard to pick, pull up and do the ballet at the ballet with the pickup truck, and you know what I mean? Like, damn. Do you go to season tickets at a ballet the way like got, people get exported, excited about like sporting events where you're like, oh, fuck, it's the fiddler <laughs> on the roof, fiddler on the roof, back in town. Are you going? Woo, Fiddler! Fiddler! <laughs> like your shirt lifted up, your face is painted. Like, how, how, what is that like? I've never been to a play. My fill on the roof is the opera. What I still see what you're saying. No, what? Um, <laughs> I love it's, that. I, 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 I don't get that excited about it. It's, it's, you know, it's very cool and stuff. But uh, I don't, I'm not a huge sports watcher because it stresses me out too much. <laughs> like, you know, I'll do that and it's very, you know, I, 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 I can go from camouflage into my own tuxedo very nice, calmly. I like, I work in fashion. I work, another one of my, my jobs is I do music videos and promotions. So mm -hmm. it, because the director named Director X, and we do like all of Drake's videos and Usher's videos and Diddy's videos. And so I have to transform from Wolf to Dre and just be a whole different person. But now Wolf is becoming both sides so now i'm going to these different different places and i'm like telling people about paintball and telling all these really artsy people about coming out and shooting ar-15s with me and stuff and everything and it's like it's crazy man so it's like now it's you know it's a nice transition but yeah shopping for a car is not easy it's such pain in the butt it, well, it's and such a big decision and there's so much information out there and not not to mention, there's so many damn options, and there's a lot of options that cross over. Uh, you know what you want, like ah, oh, well, this one's a midsize, but man, it does all this stuff, and it's like three thousand dollars cheaper, fully loaded. Ah, but this is the full size. Uh, it, it it can it can be uh, it can be a long process making the right decision. And it's it's the vehicles are so damn expensive. Like Jesus, Murphy. It used to it used to be. BMW, Benz, and and Land Rovers that used to go up. Now it's like everyone's got their own high end version of a vehicle out there. It's like I didn't think you'd have to spend that much on the friggin' Chevy because it has the name Denali and it's XL now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's the same price as every other high end vehicle now. And it's crazy like, how much vehicles cost. I mean, if, it, if, oh. you're, if you're getting into a high end brand new big SUV, you're probably getting into the 60s and maybe even the 70s. It can be, it can get nuts, and if you want to get if you want to start accessorizing, like there's a place near me that does these. Uh, they take a brand new Chevrolet truck, and then they like throw twelve grand worth of stuff on it, and then they sell that. And yeah. it's like, oh man, like the truck was already fifty grand, dude, and then you added twelve more, and then you priced it up another three. Like this is a sixty-five thousand dollar pickup truck. Yeah, I saw one eighty-seven grand at, at my local dealership. Easily. That's, dude, it was a Ford F one fifty. Fancy. Fancy. Yeah, wow. yeah it, it was fancy. Is that one of those Harley ones? It may have you know, been. You know, the Harley-Davidson It would have been things. black. Yeah, it, it, the, I think it might have been black. But it, I think they did take it like a Harley one, put it somewhere, bring it back, and make it even more expensive. It, I sat in it. We turned it on. It seemed nice. But, God. There's three things you need in life. A good lawyer, a good accountant, and a good mechanic. Hmm. Who can... And that's the three. That's it. That's when you have everything perfect. Where some you can people would put a wife on that everything. list. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different show, brother. Uh, You're a very lucky man. Let me put it that way. There's right? another saying: if it fucks, floats, or flies, it's best rented. I like that. 
You're welcome. That's a very good one. Yeah, never buy a boat. Never a buy. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that. I saw someone just said that on that TV show Ballers the other night. The Rocks show. It's really cool. That's, it's a, that's a serious thing. I but yeah, that's the, okay, a... what's that? Yeah, your she wife is a unicorn, brother. Oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Such disappointment. Your wife is a unicorn, brother. Hold on to that, because uh, you know, life is crazy. I hear that. Yeah, I've been saying. thinking about a new truck for like four years. At this point, I guess I'm just all talk. I, well, the, uh, the fun thing about it is every year you wait, a newer truck comes out. I know, out. right? Or the one I liked last year is now being sold at used prices. Yeah, you could look at it that way. Or I, what you're inevitably going to do is be like, oh, well, you know, in 2018, Dodge has the, the, the mega cock truck coming out. <laughs> and it, it literally has an extendable eight-foot cock in case you get stuck in traffic and you ram other cars. Milo got, got one already. Yeah. Ram. Give it, give it the full cock. Or it's a big yeah. airbag that comes out front. Yeah. The one thing I want to test drive is the new Tesla thing. SUV. That thing looks crazy. Is it for sale? I don't oh, know. Yeah. I don't really know. Dude, the, the Tesla okay. Model S with the, the 50 kilowatt uh, hour battery or whatever it is, they, like yeah. the new upgraded one, is the fastest production car in the world. Yeah. Zero to 60 in 2.5. Those things are insane now, man. It'll burn the tires off a Vette, a Porsche, a, anything. Anything. A Lambo. It's the fastest production car in the world. That I mean, is... fastest to that speed if you go yeah, more sure. than like... Well, Five yeah, seconds. It's relative, blown right? out. Well, zero to six. It's not like I said zero to to like forty seven and like made up a, a silly like, uh, well, comparison think, we never used. It's zero to six. I think Taylor's yeah. saying it's not the top speed fastest, which of course not. No, right. it's fast acceleration. I zero follow. to sixty. Yeah, yeah. I, For a battery vehicle, like that's insane. I doubt it's pretty rare that one vehicle owns both those titles. Part of it's due to the fact that it's way lighter, isn't it? Because it does it's it's because it's electric. It's it, it's torquey, because of the right? development. Yeah. Yeah. Electric motors and, have a ton of power available right away. That's exactly. Enough to build up. That makes and sense. whatever that whatever madness is going on with that Tesla, like I don't know much about the Tesla specifically, but you know it it's got a button that's called ins and it says insanity mode on the button. And <laughs> you activate insanity. It's right there on the dash. It's a round yeah. button. It says insanity mode and and boop. You'll activate it, and then when he drops the hammer on that thing, it's <laughs> like stuck to the seat. Like I wonder, it looks like fun. So in the old days, like '80s and '90s, it took some talent to really achieve the zero to sixty speed you'd see in a magazine. Ah, uh, no like, longer. Yeah, right. I was just gonna wonder about that because like it'd be like, oh, this there's zero to sixty in eight point seven seconds, right? With a professional driver that knows just how to rev it up and drop it, and wh how much wheel spin is okay, and how much is just wait. It, now I feel like you just press the go fast button and the computer yeah, is better right. than a human. It is. Yep. And it's like it's like back in the day, it used to take talent to be able to drive off road. And now it's like in the Land Rovers, you've got a mouse in the, the screen in the middle of the dashboard and you set it to deep sand, you set it to snow, you set hmm. it to rocks, and it adjusts all the the uh, the weight, it adjusts the um, it, 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 it can even set tire pressure, it adjusts Changes the height, suspension. Yeah, the all suspension, that stuff. Uh, and it just, it just does everything for you. Like in my old Discovery, you had to be able to lock your own differentials, you had to be able to do everything on your own. Now it's just a tweak of the mouse and it's like the vehicle raises up, does everything itself. It's pretty much boring at this point. I want to go wheeling with you, see who can keep up with who. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be right. interesting. Yeah, you might have your hands full. I... This and the thing is that I, I've I've gone through like through woods in my truck and stuff, and like it's got this. I think it's called the DLC where uh, going down a steep hill, you just press a button mm -hmm. and it works the brakes on its own and everything like that. And it downshifts for you. Yeah, yeah it does it uses everything. The it pulls loud, to slow you down. low gear by itself and everything. It's the scariest feeling just to I... let go. Does Ford own Land Rover? Is that the deal? Not anymore. They sold okay. it. I, I was just going to mention that because the, the Explorer that I, I – I rented Explorer for two different trips. One of them was in the desert in, in Texas, and we were off-roading with it. And then the other was uh, in the mountains of Colorado during a blizzard. So I got to drive it on slippery ice and, uh, and snowy roads and – uh, and up this like uh, in in Texas there was this really steep hill with with uh, loose rocks all the way up 
And I didn't think we'd make it, but it had a loose rock mode, like you said. It had a desert mode. It had a winter uh, weather condition road mode, and it had a de- um, a, a, a what, what would it be uh, descending. It had a, a, a descension mode. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all of them were excellent. I I I was just blown away by that explorer. I always sing yeah. his praises. Whole different word, brother. You want to call the show there? All right. PKA yep. episode two ninety seven. Thank you for coming on, Wolf. We always enjoy having you. My pleasure. Even though I heard you don't like having guests on that much sometimes. Uh, we like having good guests on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate that. Man. It's, always, it's a pl- always a pleasure to hang out with you guys, man. We got to do it in person again, too, someday. Absolutely. Yeah, and where can everybody find you real quick? Um, go on uh, that thing called YouTube. Type in the Wolf Den. You see the big, loud black guy playing the paintball game of gamey. And, uh, you know, all the social media stuff, just wolf paint by one word. Oh, and I'm giving this away, like I said, to one of the PKA fans. All you do is go on my channel, subscribe, and type in on the comments, I saw you on PKA, and your name will go on the draw to win a free paintball gun, shooty, shooty, bang, bang. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice. Very good. PKA, 297. Bye. See ya. Bye.